，妈，妈 ，If you can hear me, say spooky. ちょっと待って、えっと、はまままま、はまままま、喂、give me one second, give me one second, give me one second, wait, 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 wait. I'm back. Okay, I have my little blanket with me. Spooky! Yay! Okay. I talk. Let's see who's here. <laughs> Hello, Asu. Welcome everybody to my channel. My name is Aozara Kurumi, and I'm from Project Hawaii. You can call me Kurumi. Hmm. I'm the Greek god Hermes' apprentice. If you don't know who Hermes is, feel free to Google. Let me turn the game sound lower. I'm going deaf. Eto, <laughs> okay. How 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 are you guys doing? Mm. Let me move my microphone a bit lower. Hi, we have so many new people. Hello, where did you guys come from? Hi, Ka. Gua, bar, gua subscriber baru Ka. Hello. Selamat malam. Kurumi is no longer alone now. Tonight, we are going to be playing Tiny Bunny. We play the prologue, which is the story before this, the short version, and you guys got to choose what I have to do, and it was really scary. It's a visual novel game. Hello, welcome. Everybody's like visual novel, scary. Psh, you weak? No, you just wait. The jump scares are so scary. Okay, so you just wait. Hmm. Hmm. Are we starting from the very start? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Let's get to the bad end. Hmm. I mean, if it's easy to try different paths, we. I guess we can try all the endings. We're gonna play the whole game today, and you. We'll get to choose in chat. Okay, you get to vote. What we do, I will give you about like one or two minutes each for you guys to vote. So you have to vote fast. Hmm. Ko ato kawo. Okay. No wonder my room is so hot. I forgot to turn on my AC. Okay. Eight hour stream tonight's stream is gonna be long, so go get your drinks, go get your tea. We're gonna have a very long night. <laughs> okay. Without further ado, we can get started. Tell me if the game volume is too loud or too soft. Salam kenal ya, salam kenal. Hello. Sun is about to come up on my end. Of Honey, did you sleep? Did you sleep, darling? Did you sleep? Please tell me you slept. <laughs> okay. If I'm blocking the screen, I will be. Boop. But since I'm not, I will be up. Like a little bunny. I'm holding a little bunny. Okay. Today's gonna be a scary stream. <laughs> I remember the jump scare. I'm scared. All right. <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> I'm actually really scared. <laughs> Are we starting from the very start? The wind clawed at my window all night long. You guys can see it, right? Okay. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. 
Oh wait, did we do we do this? An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. I think we start from the beginning. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. While casting long shadows that will occasionally creep close to my bed. Oh, I think we start from the beginning. <laughs> Started from the start. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry if this is your first time watching this, but we will speed through the start. I have already done this in my other tiny bunny stream. Let me show you real quick. I'll give you the link. Eto. We did it on Easter, which is even more twisted. Is this is the full version? Yes. Okay, so if you want to watch the old one, the first part, uh, watch this. But we were going, we're gonna. Сколько раз говорила не читай за столом, вредно. Сидишь, сутулился весь. Mama? Wait, what? Mama didn't speak before. <laughs> Wait, what? Mama used to not speak, but now she's speaking in Russian. Okay, anyway, we will speed through the first part. Uh, how do I skip? Anya sounds cute. Mm. Yo, she talks now? I know, right? Okay, we... Grandma, okay, grandma, okay, grandma, okay, grandma. Да не на улице, смотри. Ну да, да, живо. А я говорю, не по прикр. I will give you a recap after this. Basically, не было там. Can I choose the chapters? No, I don't. Просто. Ням. Мама, идет. Я мера. Oh, bro. Okay, we'll skip, we'll skip, we'll skip, we'll skip, we'll skip. Ooh, I hate this part. Come on. Okay. Oh my god, I hate this part. <laughs> oh, bro. Okay. Oh! Oh! Wait, 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 wait. Now you show his face. The sound scratched at my eardrums. Okay, we are replaying this, this bit. In reality, something or someone were scratching at the front door, hurriedly crawling at the wood, demanding to be let in, bro. Why didn't you save the game? This is the full version. That was the prologue. Ca keep up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Funny Kurumi, thank you. Welcome back, AD. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Mjortwe, mjortwe. Mm -hmm. I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. <laughs> and then... <laughs> the doorknob twitched slightly. And then it turned halfway, once, twice, as if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The door tilted once more, and then... <laughs> started clicking violently, bro! My jaw cramped from fear, my wet fingers clutched a blanket. The door creaked and opened. The, wild, the wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now, now you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness rithed inside the carnivorous mouth of a doorway. You little... It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. Welcome, Pate! Thank you for being a jazzer and flying with me! Welcome! Stop it, Anya! Is that her name? Anya? What's her name again? Olaf. <laughs> Tosha, you asleep? Was our name Tosha all along? I don't remember. My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Oh, 
Onya, 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 Olia. Okay, sorry. I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Olia frowned and stuck her, out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. <laughs> Do you think she sounds like a kid? Do you t do you think she sounds like a five year old? <laughs> Anya is from Spy X family. I'm sorry. Okay, the the cute. <laughs> Shoo her away, Tosha, please. I'm so scared. Wow, the voice acting is really good. The fear that was tormenting me was just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I need to calm Olia down. This is my first time to be a member. Oh, welcome! Wow, I'm honored. Thank you. <laughs> Get with ass, Alia. You're going to jail. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Olia sobbed. She's trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch a video of Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like the cartoon, don't you? Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? Because you're underage! If there's any prince for you, he's going to jail. <laughs> Bro. Hello, Tiny Bunny Pog. Yeah, this is the full version. I'm so excited. We will zoom to in a bit, though. Let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tosha, you Tosha, are you coming? Yes, yes, just a moment. <laughs> Mama, not again! <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Okay, you know what? We skip, we skip, we skip, we skip, we skip. Okay, basically, if you want to know the story, the parents are getting a divorce, and this boy has a younger sister, and his name is Tosha, her name is Olia, and his parents are always fighting, and he hopes that they don't have a divorce. And he hoped that they would go back to being lovey-dovey. And then these cops came and they were looking for a boy. Vova. That's what he looks like. He went missing. And so they were trying to question Tosha and see if have you seen this boy? Ooh. And he said, no, I haven't seen anything. But then because he's such a curious boy. He tried to go and look for this boy, and then you'll see what happens. So, yeah. TLDR. And they live next to a bunch of woods, like jungles. Hey, 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 Zaka, hey, 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 listen. I bet you got scared too. But this is taking place in Russia, that's why the dubbing is in Russian, and a lot of the references are Russian. And we will skip. Basically, we got to choose whether to go out or not. Mama's very, very angry. Ooh, ooh. The ASMR this time is very clear. Okay, so last time... We got to choose, so this time I'm just gonna noom past this. Blah, 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 blah. To the kitchen. And well, these are basically quite unimportant. And. Blah, 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 blah. How do I get it? Okay. There's a telephone here. And then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we have to do again, guys? 
lied to mom. TV is not working, so the mom went to check and we went outside. Lottie! Okay, so we are now outside, even though mama said no. Mama's still looking hot gear with ass. You still play Mobile Legends? Yes, I do. I always play Mobile Legends. <laughs> yes. So this is the woods behind their house. And they just moved here recently. So silent, it felt like the world was totally empty. He thinks he's trying to play detective and look for this missing Vova boy. Even though mama said no. Okay. He looks like Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy's love child. Okay, there's a glove hanging and this is also in the last episode. Should we go and get it or not? And you guys chose yes for some reason. <laughs> uh, a shadow ran away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Bunny. Hello. Welcome. Okay. So. <laughs> Take. I'm gonna choose what we chose last time. A vova. Oh, oh. So basically, oh, Yamera. I have my volume up all the way. Okay, go, 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 get it. Okay, this part is very scary for you experience in the, in the last one if you watch. But he grabbed the, the glove and it was very squishy. He looked at his hands and they were blood, clearly. Red. And then the sound of crackling branches invaded the silence behind him. So, he started running. Started running, he thinks they'll get him. And then... Don't look back, keep running, boy! You got this! He ran inside, slammed the door. Was this too loud for you guys? It's not too loud, right? Is this okay? I mean, I don't care if it's loud for me, but it shouldn't be loud for you guys. Run, yes. So, sounds okay. Okay. And then, lock the door. Yeah. And Mama's like, I told you no! And... Am I not doing for you too? You know, the mother is a bit, you know... <laughs> Mama has a little bit of issues. I like her voice. Why am I such a simp? Okay. Look, and um, when... When you look out, because the sister has been seeing this owl figure that is staring at her from outside the window, s just stalking her. And she's scared, she can't sleep. And this boy at night, he saw dancing figures in the snow. And he thought they were gonna kill him. Turns out it was just a bunch of hungry dogs. Yeah. Mmm. Божечки, ты их испугался? Mama thought, Mama thought stray dogs won't hurt you, but they will. She's like, I think they'd rather be scared of you, Antoine. They're chasing me like a bunny. <gasps> they were dogs. They were wild dogs. Wild dogs. Okay, anyways. We've done this part. She's like, I found this mitten and it's bleeding. And look, I'm going to give it to the police. Blah blah blah. Drenched in blood. I found it hanging on a tree. I can show where. Yeah, he wants to call the police. Mom, Mom's like, Ugh. it's like she's trying to remember something distant. She's like, stop it right now. Olya will go insane if she hears you. Olya the younger sister. She already has trouble sleeping and whines all the time. And you joke around like this. 
And then he looked down and he realized the mitten was actually wet from the snow. It wasn't it wasn't blood. Yeah. And he his, his mom made him take pills, medicines. So in this moment we kind of have an indication that this boy might have schizophrenia or he's he has paranoia or hallucinations. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't Vova Smitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. So this boy unfortunately has some mental issues and he needs to be medicated for it. Cause he clearly saw blood, but there wasn't blood. Yeah. Just like the forest monsters and Olia's owl. Am I going crazy? Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate effect or my overexerted brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Must be on some funny sounding meds for sure. Serenity washed over me. Okay, he felt sleepy, so he went up to his room. His mom told him to go to sleep. I'm assuming this kind of medication is it includes like some sleeping meds stuff, which makes you want to go to sleep. So then he went upstairs to his bedroom. Jafar and Yago or Lago, I'm assuming, are the characters from the Russian Aladdin. <laughs> so he hid the mitten inside the drawer. Sat on the bed. And then he noticed there was someone behind the curtains. His tired hand dropped to the sheets. It was either due to the medication I took or the stress I underwent. The room began to contort as if the wind was blowing the walls out like a pair of sails. Eminem USA Candy. Hello, welcome. So basically, we get to find out that this was his a little bratty sister <laughs> who likes to scare him all the time. <laughs> And she was upset because he wouldn't want to spend time with her. Oh my god. And she's like, you need to show me what you found. Because I saw you hide something in the, the drawers. And he showed her this. Blah blah blah. They went to watch something in her room. See, she keeps wanting to hang out, but he keeps saying no. Okay, they're gonna go watch Peter Pan. So this is his sister's cute room. What is that sound? Okay. Turn on the TV. Almost reached out to turn on the VCR and then the noise calmed down with a blurry image appear for a moment. Oh, it was the dark taiga forest, which is the forest behind the house. <laughs> Something creepy resembling human speech was coming out of the speaker. Oh yeah, it was like... Okay, this is all her sister's CDs. <clears throat> he took what he needed. Put it in. She brought snacks. Um, condensed milk with toast and they started watching the film uh, peter pan hashtag russian <laughs> she said she's so scared please go go close the curtains quickly try my best not to look outside when he closed it the owl exists she keeps swearing on it that she sees an owl outside of her window and it seems like her parents still do not believe her. What's the Peter Pan. Peter Pants. Peter Pan. 
Okay, have we played this part? I don't remember. We follow Peter Pan's adventures as if nothing happened, as if the force didn't kidnap kids, as if our parents weren't tearing each other apart bit by bit. Captain Hook was running away from a crocodile as Captain Pan was headed to London on a gilded sailboat. By some miracle, it lasted longer than my little sister. Oh yeah, we did. So the sister fell asleep. Ooh, mama. Enough playing around. It's your first day at school tomorrow. Go to bed, you should sleep properly. You don't want to be teased for being sleepy, right? Mommy is so wangy wangy. Hi, Burvy! Owl, yeah, bro. Adults think everything is so simple. So yes, he's trying to go to sleep. It has come after all, the day I feared the most, the first day of a new school term. Okay, 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 okay. This is where we start. This is where we start. From here on, we don't know what happens. <laughs> I'm glad you guys skipped to this part if you watched the VOD. <laughs> Episode 2, time to play with you. New school, new teachers, and most importantly, new classmates, who I always have trouble connecting with. Like most other kids with glasses, probably. Hey, 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 I'm wearing glasses. I force myself to get out of my warm bed. <laughs> that would usually drive me to my old school, but this morning, the bedroom of my parents was silent. Did they sleep in? <gasps> Maybe it was a good thing. I didn't want to get the daddy's boy reputation from day one. My parents were probably still tucked in dreaming about the good old days when everything was so simple and easy. Sweet dreams, even if far removed from reality. I silently sneak out to the first floor so I wouldn't wake up anybody, especially the peacefully sleeping Olia. <gasps> Ooh, your house is dark. I did my best to step on the middle of every floorboard. I used to play like this even in our old apartment. If my soul touched the space between floorboards, it counted as stepping into lava. Wait, 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 Oh, the squeaking is from the game. It wasn't from me. Okay, I was just like, what the heck is in my room squeaking? <laughs> okay. The clock was spurring me on with its hands. I need to hurry, faster, faster. I was too fast, so I needed to circle the hallway once again. Boiling lava was bursting out of the cracks between floorboards. I needed to watch my step to survive at any cost. Hippity hop, like a frog jumping on molehills, like a fearful bunny in a grove full of wolves. Oh. I made a sandwich in the kitchen, Ooh. shoved it down my throat, and drank it down with cold tea. My appetite was as good as of someone being led up the scaffold towards a guillotine. Guillotine. How do you pronounce this word? Basically, this is the 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 medieval execution thing where you put your head in a hole and then you drop the knife, and it goes tonk, like chop your head clean off. That's a guillotine. Gu guillotine. <laughs> I lowered my gaze and saw that one of my feet was standing on two floorboards at the same time. <gasps> Burned to a crisp, huh? I moved my foot. Disgusting little snakes writhed writh in my belly, the fear of getting hit and being called nasty names. The clock clicked. I need to go. It was dark outside, fitting for an early winter morning. Bro. You just got here, Ahmad. You just got here uh, at episode 2, which is where we stopped in our last episode. But wow, okay. Gelatin, jelly bread. <laughs> the darkness never fully left the, house around, how, left the houses around here. I took my time tying my shoes, buttoning up the pu puffy down jacket, trying to delay my unpleasant exit into the semi dark, into the unnerving unknown. I rubbed my glasses for good luck. Though I can't I couldn't remember a single time the, the, these thick pieces of glass brought me any good fortune. Guys, we're going out, guys. <gasps> the sky was akin to a giant bruise. On the east side of it, a black cloud was swelling up, 
It licked up stars from the sky and extinguished the rising sun. Darkness was plastered all over the treetops. The cautious cries of birds got tangled up in a thicket. I locked the front door with a long key that I wore around my neck. My parents made me wear this noose, afraid that I, being a total klutz that I am, could lose the key otherwise. The wind whizzed on the other side of the gate. It invited me into my new life towards dubious adventures. Oh! <gasps> and tagged along like an old buddy, pushing me in the back. White shadows that pines threw out covered a third of the clearing. Ooh. Upon reaching the edge of the forest, I hid my nose in the coat's collar. I was squeezing through the thin fire break. My hair ruffled up and my back hunched over. Tall trees stood on both sides of the tiny trail. The snowy blanket rustled under my feet, and a canopy of intertwined branches above my head cut me off from the already sparse starlight. The night had no plans of moving away from the forest. <sighs> In this darkness, trees reminded me of shaggy old women that smelled of buried, wait, burial earth. Their trunks turned into cracked, wrinkled faces with holes in the middle as their mouths. If I lose focus even for a moment, mold-covered witches would drag me into the forest's death. Then my parents would be walking around these parts screaming my name. But the dead can't answer the living. Oh, grandma! Or can they? Yeah, <laughs> I'm so spooked out. A sense of panic was growing in my chest. I was fine with dad carrying me into the school in his hands by now if it saved me from watching the darkness rise up in the ravines like black dough. <sighs> it felt like someone jumped into the bushes behind me, so I turned around. As soon as I started walking faster, I heard the snow squeak behind me. The forest took a deep breath with its giant lungs. The windfall cracked. The wind and the birds were left behind in the field. Now I could only hear the forest creak. I walked, listening closely, and the unseen presence grew stronger, as if someone was following me, trying to match the pace of my footsteps. I turned my head so fast it made my neck crunch. A tiny trail behind me disappeared into the darkness. The trees' branches overlapped, forming a natural tunnel. Who's there? The question escaped my lips and dissolved into the unending creaking sound of the wooden idols, the pines around me. Why did I think of going through the forest alone was a good idea? I'm either going mad or, had, or someone had intentionally lured me away from home. Distant lights grant me a smidgen of hope. A country road! I ran there as fast as I could, as if afraid that the trail would shrink. Clawed hands would grip me by the shoulders, turn me around and make me look at the faces of hungry forest denizens. In the end, nobody stopped me. I almost flew to the decrypt wooden bridge, disbelieving my luck. The bridge's support bathed in the spring, terry, and ice cold. I put my hands on my knees and looked up at the forest then snorted, trying to calm my breathing. The thicket was pretending to be asleep. It looked peaceful, lifeless. The remaining part of my commute lied through a snow-laden road illuminated by sparse lamplights. I chased away bad thoughts and ran as fast as I could, from one circle of light to another, seeking protection from electric lamps. Just like in that game, where you need to be the first to proclaim, I'm protected. Tag, oh, the tag game. A kid's game where one player needs to tag other players by touching them with their hand, making them it. In certain zones, normally called the ghoul, players can play safe, can stay safe from tagging, I see. If the game is wooden, in the game is wooden idol, in the stream is say so idol, true? 
It's just in the case that protection was flimsy at best, with darkness writhing outside its bounds. <laughs> then I noticed something remarkably eerie. In a place where the light from an inclined lamp couldn't reach, a hairy, crooked shadow came alive with a glu glutural roar. It almost felt like its features deterred light. It's unnatural pose instilled fear. Bro, what? My eyes almost popped out of their sockets as I stood there, blinking, trying to chase away that illusion. <laughs> but the shadow didn't disappear and got even closer. Guys, we're dying here. My insights were gripped by horror. I stepped back and almost fell into a snow pile. The black silhouette, on the other hand, straightened up and addressed me in a sweet voice. Sneaking around, huh? Trying to steal my soul? Words got stuck in my throat. Who could be talking in such a silky voice here between the forest and the dormant village? Would you say something, dummy? A cat got your tongue? All right, I'll bite off your nose then. They'll teach you not to poke it in places it doesn't belong. A girl stood before me, judging from the voice and the silhouette. I was stunned. Hey. From the cavity of her hood, a frighteningly real fox face was staring straight at me. It's just her jaws weren't moving and her eyes weren't blinking. A mask! Speaking high pitched voice, hi Reiji! It's just a girl with a fox mask on. First of all, what's she chewing at the corner? It sounded so squishy. You know what I mean? Second of all, what you doing out here, girl? <laughs> at least I wanted to think that. After a surprise like that, a nervous smile involuntarily crept onto my face. I was just going to school and then you... What about me? Never seen a fox feed a dog? What dog? Oh my god. And indeed, there was a small dog circling the girl's legs. One of the strays that were chasing me yesterday, probably. So cute. Извини, я не хотел. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Well, first of all, her legs really... Her legs do be very hairy, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, after hearing my voice, the dog whimpered, lowered its ears, sniffed me out, and then started wagging its tail. I guess I still smelled of bologna that I ate for breakfast. I was shifting my gaze back and forth from the dog to the girl. She didn't seem scary anymore, just weird. So you didn't mean to, huh? What's your name? I'm Anton. And you? And I'm not. Okay, her eyes showed up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, my dad. <laughs> Oh my lord, she's she's role playing to the T. Okay, she a furry. We'll say that. She's role playing to the T. Even from her laugh, she sounded like a fox. She's weird. Definitely has a couple of loose screws. But she has a nice voice. Simp! My astonishment has turned into a mix of happiness and relief. This girl I didn't know was definitely human, if a bit eccentric. Brr. I was also a bit angry at myself. This foxy girl was walking through the darkness without a problem and I shuddered from every little sound. I could just walk away, but this girl had piqued my interest. Simp! Next time a police officer asks me about my friends at the new place, I'll tell him that I befriended a talking fox. Do you live around here? In the village? <laughs> she giggled and purred. Hello? <laughs> okay. 
Okay, girl. Okay, girl. <laughs> she spun around so hard the hem of her coat lifted up. No, dummy. Foxes don't live in villages. So you live in a forest then? Have you been living under a rock? It's obvious that foxes can't survive anywhere near humans. As long as they're foxes. Her jokes were all so weird. Just like her carnival mask. Papier mush mache with fur glued onto it. The dog, a dog reminded of us, reminded us of its existence with a loud bark. Welcome back, my dog. Welcome back. I unfastened my backpack. Dad would sometimes throw food in there without my knowledge. Cookies, apples, or even my favorite crab sticks. Ooh, I love crab sticks. And he called it a gift from the bunny. Treat from the bunny, an uneaten part of a business lunch or a treat especially spe specifically bought for children. Parents would tell the children that a bunny asked them to deliver said treat, but it could be any other animal, a squirrel, a bear, for example. Okay. The stray strolled towards me with mincing footsteps, with a pleading look in his eyes. Ooh, da, da, da. The fox did definitely treat it to something, but it was probably still hungry. Why are you dressed like this so early in the morning? Going to a costume party? <laughs> the girl shrugged, throwing silvery snowflakes off her nose. And her human form along with them. Turning into a genuine beast. What? A real fox. Agile, cunning, dangerous. <laughs> a moment of hesitation and you'll be ripped to shreds. She'll tear you up and gulp you down without breaking a sweat. I couldn't help but just stand there as a stump. <laughs> Until I heard her calm, melodic, mel melodic laughter hidden underneath the beastly mask. First of all, you a simp. Second of all, that's creepy. <laughs> Thank you, Reiji. Come on down. <laughs> I wish you could have seen your own mask, sweetie. Sweet, did she say sweetie? <sighs> this boy, I got embarrassed, went red right up to my hair roots. We seen a fox in a zoo once, when we went there with a, with dad, but it had patchy fur, it was gray and skinny, Oh, But this girl was a fear, fiery color and furry, indeed she is, just like in fairy tales. <laughs> I was still rummaging through my backpack. My fingers that were searching for the dog's treat stumbled upon some soft crumpled object. You'll see. The real beasts will wake up soon. You should ask them where they got their human faces, bro. What? The girl's shadow was dancing in the lamp's light. The dog yapped in agreement. I freaked out and dropped my my finding in the snow without getting a proper chance to examine it. Cold wind instantly covered the hole it created with snow. The dog rushed to dig it out, wanting to get its treat. And the fox just snored it. Now I was so embarrassed I wanted to sink through the snow. It was still dark outside of the electric circle. On the contrary, the darkness seemed even more thick. All neighboring houses were sleeping deeply in its inkiness. I did my best to continue the conversation with a weird girl I didn't know. So are you going to school? Oh my, you are a real dummy. Don't you get it? Welp, I was trying to be friendly, but she can't stop mocking me. <laughs> now he's finally pissed. She just called you sweetie a moment ago. You changed your mind? You change your mind, boy? <laughs> I get what ass. Hello, Izu. Calling me a dummy and all. I should have just moved along without paying any attention to this weirdo and her stupid dog, bro. Why are you so mean? 
Don't answer if you don't want to. Никто не требует. It's not like I care. Bush, eh? Still, something froze me in place, tugged me towards the dark figure. A mysterious appearance. Her voice that was velvety and just languid enough. I was intrigued and excited. I watched her as people watch fires burn. Simp. Oh, don't do it. Oh, stop, pow stop pouting. Look here. Julka took a liking to you. I'm gonna forget this name. Just got back from Kampong Road Jam. Oh no, rest up. Make sure you drink lots of water. The dog was digging through snow with sharp movements, snoring loudly. The fox turned around and looked at the windows of a nearby house. At its timber front through the white mist. The tip of her fake nose was shining under the lamp's light. And maybe someone else too. I went red again, like a boiled crayfish this time. Is she talking about herself or someone else? I hope that the semi-dark semi -dark will be able to hide my embarrassment from the girl. <clears throat> I cleared my throat before asking. <clears throat> and who's that person? <laughs> I waited, counting my heartbeat. The fox didn't reply. Her sly stare was scanning the, for the frosty patterns of someone's windows. She was reading them like a glass book. I wonder, what can she see in those winter paintings? The stray stopped rummaging through the snow. It ran to me, holding my object in her jaws. A mitten. Could it be the one I found in the forest? What is it doing here? When I looked closer, I realized it was just my mitten. Maybe mom stuffed it in there when I was asleep. A certain missing boy immediately came to mind, bro. Hey, hey, do you know anything about Vova? I imagined a scene, silhouettes, dancing in the clearing. Ooh. The dance on the night when Vova had disappeared. A boy who, when found, can provide a big reward and maybe save my family. I remember my birthday when our parents promised to take me and Olia to Disneyland in Paris. I want to go! But instead of a long-anticipated gift, they gave me a single, sing, simple brick game console, visibly embarrassed. I was crying my eyes out back then, demanding to take me to the promised amusement park. That was the first time when mom and dad had a big fight. My greediness shattered their relationship. If only I could fix everything, gather everybody I love and take them to Disneyland. On the night Vova had disappeared, I think I saw someone looking like you dancing under my window. Oh, <gasps> she has pretty eyes. It couldn't be true, but I felt like her mask became even more sly. The fox was sniffing me out. Wangy wangy. Oh, that got you worried? For yourself or for someone else? Olia, as soon as I thought about my sister, my chest tightened. A cold sweat streamed down my spine. Well then, listen closely, a boy named Anton. This is a big and scary forest. The fox girl stepped forward menacingly. And I'm not its only tenant. The other beasts already know about you. Beware, we'll come again tonight. I shouldn't have talked to this evil, evil in child form, I thought, panicking. When you and your parents will be fast asleep, we'll sneak really close and dance. Macarena! Macarena! Huh? Hey, Macarena! Hey! Dun 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 macarena. Dun 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 macarena. Dun 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 macarena. Eh, macarena. Woo! His face. Ha ha ha! Look at that. 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 Ha ha ha!
look at you. Your mouth is agape, Antosha. He saw me near his window at night. <laughs> yeah, right. Are you by any chance a dimwit? Nobody would let me go outside that late. Children go missing here, you know. I touched the plastic frame of my glasses, puzzled by her silly joke. She got me scared to death. Hey, why don't you stop fondling your glasses? Hi, Sushiya! I was also nearsighted once. Oh, she got LASIK? Listen to me and maybe you'll become smarter. Shush! Remember, what do they call foxes? K cunning? My words seem to hurt her. Hey, what? What did you? Uh, sorry. Her laughter was akin to the jingle of a pair of silver bells. Just pulling your leg. Of course we're cunning. If you're agile and brave enough to befriend a cunning fox, I'll help look for your vova. There's a reason why you're doing it, right? Balls oh yeah I shrugged and replied her insight was alarming. I know why children have been swarming our forests recently. Sometimes you can find a lot of interesting stuff there. One day, I saw a huge pile of candy once, and I swam in it until my jaws cramped. A pile of candy? <laughs> Don't listen, she's trying to lure you into it. I couldn't deduce whether she believed in what she was saying from the tone of her voice. I showed her another smile, a fake one this time. Boo, so wary. Well, what will you say to this then? Ooh, she held out her hand in a furry mitten. There was an assorted of sweets in her palm. In the city where I used to live in, live sweets like these were sold at markets or kiosks. Let me see what cute cute. A small container type shop selling a wide assortment of products from bubblegum to vodka. What? Clothing or even home appliances. These types of shops were popular in the 90s Russia and more often than not tied to criminal organizations. Oh my lord. I saw my favorite bubblegum in a vivid wrapper amongst the tasty treasure. Turbo, eh? Do you guys remember bubblegum shaped like this? Ooh. A familiar, a familiar name was on it, Turbo. A triangular fox face poked her nose toward me. Take some. My pockets are full of these. Okay. Your turn. Choose. Refuse or take. There's only two choices, right? Alright, I'll give you two minutes. See, boy's gonna be late for school. He's out here simping for a long time. Welcome back, Adam Bandak. Take. Okay, okay, okay. Daga kotowaru. It's free stuff. Love free stuff. Free bubble gum. Of course, take it. I'm simp to the fox girl and I get my ass. Guama gula gula. Tasukaru, hi, Daranim. See, okay. They say it's good to accept people's offers, so take it. Mm. What do you think? Mom said no to strangers, but heck, how to refuse a fox lady and get my ass. <laughs> ah, bro. Okay. 
Wow, 76% of you guys wanted to. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I I uh, vote up. Vote up. Okay, 5 4 3 2 1 <clears throat> If he a big simp, he'll take. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. You guys want to take? Okay. Oh, we took it. I accepted the treat and catching a whiff of the girl's smell. <gasps> Get what ass. Fur, fireworks, and citrus. The smell of holidays. He even sniffed her. On the way, on the way to take the candy, he sniffed her. Wangi wangi get what ass. Hobi Sunim. My mom taught me to take strangers' candy. If you follow him, you will get more candy from that stranger. Else, <laughs> Apollo's mom, we were good. we should have a conversation. <laughs> okay, we took it. My fingers tingled while I was carefully unwrapping the gum. Peachy aroma entered my nostrils, and something else, something unfamiliar, but pleasant. The fruity cube ended up in my mouth. I started moving my molars, chewing the gum. I couldn't believe my luck after opening the insert. We want a Mercedes? Hashtag not sponsored? Bubblegum insert games. A type of game where players put bubblegum inserts onto their palm and try to flip it by throwing it in the air. The player who happens to flip one or more inserts claimed that claim them as their, pri their price those inserts were often considered as collectibles ah oh, it was a, it's just a collectible Shush! i looked at mercedes bats an extremely rare and hence desirable collector's item from any boy from my previous neighborhood my heart skipped a bit beat i was barely able to tear my eyes off the insert still stunned <laughs> this this is... Now do you see what can be found in the forest? <laughs> Still, I wouldn't go there alone if I were you. You get so flustered over simple bubblegum after all. Bro, she's calling you out. You gonna let her talk to you like that? Sushia, bro. Imagine what would happen if you find a travel case worth of these. It'll surely blow your mind. Okay, she's luring him for sure. Unusual treats. Just like everything else about her, get what s. I carefully hid the insert in my bag as if I was putting a rare butterfly in a can. The fox giggled. Brr. It's your chance, Antoine. Ask her out to a romantic forest date, bro. It's too cold. This is not how things are supposed to go on a Monday morning. Who are you? I refrained from asking that question. She wouldn't answer anyway or she'll just lie. I really want to see what's behind her mask. I was becoming more and more sure that underneath it, was just, it wasn't just a simple young girl. Maybe she ain't young. You know what I mean? Maybe she ain't young. You know, maybe she elderly because they, 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 they the ones giving out candies. You know? What if Vova also found a snow pile with sweets and is now rolling in it? <gasps> Actually, what if he decides to stay in the forest? Bruh. <laughs> How does she know? He must be so cold without his second mitten then. <laughs> Maybe she like Kurunene. No, nah, no, 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 no. I offer myself to follow her. Oh my gosh. Sound kind of like Perfy's lab, bruh. 
How did you how didn't how didn't you know that he lost a second min? The wind caught her words like smoke from a fire and carried them deep into darkness, into the th creepy thicket. The trees behind me creaked with their bony branches. Или с ним что-то случилось в пути. Or what if something happened to him along the way? Что-то страшное. Something terrible. The force reached to her words became alive. It sniffed me out, perking up its ears just like a curious beast. The fox girl pierced me with her eyes again. Дикие звери? Wild beasts? Это по-твоему страшно? You find that scary? Ну, не знаю. Well, I don't know. Не знает. He doesn't know. Уж не с двоечником ли я подружилась? Oh my, have I befriended a dunce? Dunes? I didn't like being called a dunce, yet being friends with her sounded nice. You just a simp. My grades are good. <laughs> really now? Will you come with me, good grades Anton? We'll find your vulva and you'll be able to ask him what he found deep in the forest, bro. As long as you're with me, no one can hurt you. Nothing can hurt you in the forest. You'll see. Worms of worry writhed in my belly. Better run, whispered my mind. I don't believe you. Do you take me for a liar? Whatever, you're just like everyone else. The girl sounded hurt, although I didn't know if she was genuine about it. She turned around as if she had immediately lost all interest in me. <gasps> you hurt, you broke her kokoro! Follow the fox girl. The gum felt bitter now. I remember my dad's favorite saying, Where are your manners, son? Indeed, this fox was kind to me. Не обижайся, пожалуйста. Please don't get mad. Лисы бывают и добрыми. Foxes can also be nice. Ну, как в сказках. Like in fairy tales. Мне бы только понять, что ты за лиса. I just need to know what kind of fox you are. <laughs> the girl giggled, hiding the nose of her mask in her hands. Then follow me into the forest and you'll get to know me, brr. But not right now. When it gets bright. I mean, your whole body is shaking, you poor thing. She sounds so condescending and too old for a quote-unquote young girl. <laughs> I don't want you to get a stroke. Shush! Hey, let me accompany you to school. After hearing this, the dog barked in agreement and stopped messing with the mitten. I leaned in trying to grab the piece of handwear that almost ran away from me. No, if you go on the well, if we're going in the same direction. We went towards the school and the lost dawn. Here and there, the lights came on in the windows of houses we passed, as if their inhabitants were sending us warning signs. Silhouettes lurked behind curtains. Dogs let out occasional barks. Spiral of gray smoke rose from the chimney. TVs bustled and dishes clanged in the kitchens. We watched the village slowly rise from its slumber while carefully treating the snowy wheel trails. She was so creepy. I walked in the left one and she took the right one. The dog was following right behind us. I expected the fox to bring out something weird again, but she stayed silent all the way to the school as if playing with some game only she was privy to. She would only giggle from time to time when a dog sneezed from the snowflakes that fell on its nose. Oh, oh, bless you. Tasukaru Dogo, I was the first one to break the silence. So, what's your name? Here it comes. Names, names, names. You people always need to put labels on everything. What would you give 
What name would you give to a fox like me? Foxy Roxy. I will call you Roxy. How about that? <laughs> Dogs think so cute. Yeah. I don't know. But I read about Alisa the fox. You know what? I don't mind. I'll be Alisa. I couldn't understand if she was joking or not. I turned around as if looking for an answer from the dog, from this dark sky devoid of dawn. My silent questions were left unanswered. The school's outline was already in our sight. A giant box, brick box, stuck in the endless night. Lights in his windows didn't bode well for me. The warden trees were guarding the schoolyard. <laughs> Screams, childish laughter, and someone's whistling tore up the silence. What the heck is this? Is that snow? Kind of looks like a like a furry fox sleeping up here. Jeb, you want to call her Jeb? I went there with mom when we just moved around and the place looked cozy at the time. Empty corridors that smelled of polished puffy snow outside. How many good is these? <coughs> uh, excuse me. Double kill. <laughs> oh no, it has started. <laughs> the second time I came alone to get the books. And just kept on imagining my peers rolling down the railings, great schoolers running to the library, and teachers marching down the corridor with the air of self-importance around them. Thank you, guys. Thank you. High schoolers were smoking at the entrance. What? In track pants and wool caps perched on their foreheads, bro. Their appearances destroy the last hopes, the last of hopes for a cozy school. I thought that was a guard. But that was a high school kid? He looking like he's stuck in high school for 20 years. 30 maybe. <laughs> Their stingy eyes and the teeth yellow from nicotine. Their smirks, all of it, had the same gloomy effect as the cloudy winter morning. Ew. Absorbed by my thoughts, I completely forgot about my companion. Kuru toxic? No. I'll wait for you at the backyard after school. Near the hangman. What? Near the what? Near the what? Near the what? I thought he's a guard. Right? Right? I mean, children these days, they grow up quickly. I don't know what y'all been eating these days. What milk you've been drinking. But kids these days look jail bait. <laughs> <laughs> they look older than their actual age. So, you know what? Maybe this guy is too. What do I know? Near what? Exactly. She just ignored my question. What? Don't be late. I hesitated. Blowing hot and cold again. Mom always said that when I would have trouble choosing between two options. <clears throat> Thinking about mom helped me reply. I'm going straight home after school. Well, Antosha, I'm gonna let you off the hook. But the others will creep up to you with their smiles and sink their teeth into you. Won't be able to shake them off as easily. Remember my words. <sighs> The fox opened her mouth with a white yawn. First of all, I thought that was a mask. Was that not a mask? She just yawned with her mouth open as a fox. Nani, what kind of trick is this? <laughs> Someone running in the distance called out my name. I instinctively turned around. Uh, eh, ah, a huge snowball whizzed past my shoulder and hit the dog. No, go, 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 go. It whimpered and ran towards the spring. Oh, no, how could you? You freaking go to hell, bitch. Darkness devoured it. Oh, 
The fox girl was fox girl was also nowhere to be seen. She dissolved into frosty air. How could you do this? Curse you! Curse you! That's cute small thing. It whimpered. Oh, do do do. Wait, it's not a mask? I know, it just yawned. Or was she hiding in my shadow? I gulped. And swallowed the gum. Well, that's gonna take about two weeks to get out, so good luck. <laughs> Unlucky, bruh. After taking a deep breath, I went towards the school, toward the cutlets and dough, toward the light raining down on the snow. Okay, there's only one way, which is enter. But we can look at things. <coughs> yeah, we can look at things. That's a nest? Whose nest is this, I wonder? A thieving magpie? Then it probably has all sorts of shiny things in it. Pieces of colorful glass, bottle caps, polished coins, or child braces. <coughs> A tall man was standing near the gate, puffing out clouds of smoke into the wind. He didn't look like a teacher. Was he a PE guy, maybe? He's the high school kid, maybe. I carefully studied his face that looked like it was cut from a piece of granite. And his hair lip that was holding down a cigarette. He was playing around with car keys and staring back at us. The light from the cigarette was reflecting in his eyes that were sitting deep in his eye socket. I froze in place. The hulking man lazily tore off his eyes from us and walked toward the road. He walked away. The car. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. There was a fresh looking Volga parked nearby. <clears throat> With one of his fronts wheeled perched. Oh, I'm blocking it. Perched up on the icy curb. Black like sooth. As if it was straight out of a horror story dad loved to tell me when we hid in the attic during a thunderstorm. I remember him always wearing a sad smile while mentioning the black car that snatched children. He would say, it looks like a funeral car on the inside, white curtains and all. It has DSC in its license plate. Do you know what that means? Death to Soviet children. Funny, I was born in the USSR too. Here, here's what the car looks like. I was blocking it. Okay, one last thing. <laughs> That's a handsome laugh if you ask me. <laughs> simp. Okay, sorry. Why am I simp? I'm sorry. While I'm e this Aulia's nest, a buzzing crowd of upperclassmen with their winter hats tipped to the side. I better not draw their attention. Okay, we're entering. Luna! I could hear muffled voices behind the door, saw blinking lamps. Darkness creeped along the windows and it felt like the school was drifting, drifting in open space like a lonely, lost spaceship. I want to pee, but I don't know what's a good time to go pee. <laughs> Luna! Why feet? Luna wangi wangi, let's drink some water. What was our, what was the game we played again? Super Bunny Man? If you guys remember my Super Bunny Man stream with Luna, she wore these exact black bunny ears. I'm just wearing the white ones today, yes. Go pee, wait, 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 after this scene, after this scene. After going up to the second floor, I noticed a crowd around the notice board. Everyone was taking part in a lively discussion. I moved closer and took a look at something everyone was interested in through the wall of backpacks. There was a piece of paper with something printed, printed on it, glued to the left side of the noteboard. Oh no, this is the only thing we could look at. Attention, child missing, Volva Matukin, 10 years old. Volva Matukin, 10 years old, grade 4, B class. He left his home on January the 5th. Ah, uh, yes. Ah. Uh. Oh, excuse me. Huh? Wait, is there one more? Nope, just two. Double kill. He left his home on January the 5th, around 4 p.m. I <laughs> these times. I have to think and count. And never returned. Was last seen at the bridge over 
the Smoradina River. He was wearing an orange coat with a hood, a black wool cap, a scarf, and mittens with green stripes. Might have had a plastic toy gun on him. I wonder if this is a real place. Thank you. I wonder if this is a real place. Features 142 centimeters. Skinny, brown hair, and green eyes. Wow. Please call these numbers if you have any information on Vova's whereabouts. Vova Matukin. That was his name. Fourth grader. On the grape, grainy print, Vova looked dead. Oh my god. With black mouth and dark, empty eye sockets. Don't, 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 don't say that. <laughs> oh, bruh. Could it be that darkness dwelling in deep forest invaded his pores and mutilated his face? Bruh, what? A plastic toy gun couldn't protect him from the whispering branches and howling wind. Mm. Empty eyes of the lost boy pierced through my soul as if pleading. Unable to meet his stare, I turned around and rushed to the window. Took a seat on the windowsill. The corridor was slowly filling up with children in groups of few. Nobody paid me any mind. In the darkness of school toilets, child voices were hammering a nursery rhyme. For the fox and for the bear, bunny tasty meals prepare. I turned my head towards them, trying to get a better look at their features, but then my attention was stolen by a loud clicking sound. A female teacher marched down the corridor with her chin raised high. Her, her heels were hitting the floor like miniature hooves. Oh, 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 I think we found the diva of the school. A girl was trailing her with every stab. She was looking pompous, a lot pompous, pomp, pompous, pompous, English, pinkish, stopping along the way and whispering some secret in her friend's ear. She was probably a class rep since she was wearing an attendance register. She was carrying an attendance register. Ekaterina, take me, please. Ekaterina. Ekaterina. Take this place, bro. What's his name? Kurumi, are you a furry? Do I look like a furry? The teacher opened the classroom door and the crowd of children swarmed in, screaming and pushing. Out of all of them, a tall, red-haired, fat boy caught my attention. Why would you? <laughs> His face was full of blisters. He looked like the insides of a pomegranate. Oh my god. This boy is toxic. Pompu. Pompous. Pompous. A oh, pompous. Pompous. Hey man, when you're growing, you get some acne, you get some pimples. That's fine. Oh god. A bad feeling risen up the hair on the back of my head. I've seen boys like him before. Unsettling eyes, cackling laughter. The girl who was a smaller copy of the teacher warned the boy with a wave of her hand and entered the room through the, through the clearing in the crowd. Some other guy stood in the way of the crowd and the redhead immediately shoved him. Okay, the ugly one is the bully. Move your legs, moron! The boy flew head first, <gasps> flailing his hands, trying to keep his balance. Oh my god. Oh my god, even his teeth. The fatso bur burst out laughing and a couple of kids joined his nasty cackling. <sighs> you know, we are savage ourselves, you know what I mean? We just called this guy a fatso, then again he deserved it because he's a bully. <laughs> Their laughter sounded like someone was snipping with a huge garden scissors. I will call it right now. This boy is food for the forest. He has so much meat, he's gonna die first. <laughs> or he's gonna die somewhere. Classroom sucked all of the kids in. The corridor stood empty. I wanted to grow roots and sta stay on the windowsill. Just a handful of lampposts outside were battling in the darkness, writhing like fluorescent fish in the black ocean. Maybe I can still run away? Go outside, dissolve in the dark. I imagine myself running through the snow, how it squeaks under my boots, and how I'm becoming lighter and lighter with every step.
the ring is true, blew that illu- illusion away. I tore myself from the window with great effort. Then took a couple of deep breaths, <sighs> trying to at least calm down my mad pulse, and entered the classroom. Come on, Dad! The prim teacher looked at me over the frame of her glasses, clearly annoyed. I'm the transfer student. I was told to come here. The snowy forest trail was winding in front of my eyes. The pine rustled. The pines rustled, but it didn't sound predatory anymore. Hmm. Hmm. She buried herself in the register and flickered through, uh, flicked through the pages. A family, так как. Your last name. Petrov. Petrov. Громче говори. Huh? What are you mumbling there? Чего мямлишь? Say it clearly. Petrov. Petrov. Hmm. Нет такого. Yeah, you're not on the list. Are you sure, old lady? You sure you looked hard enough? Maybe you slipping. You know what I mean. You're like, hey, give me, give me, let me have a look. <laughs> she measured me with long and heavy stare, as if trying to see if I was lying. I wanted to sink through the floor. <sniffs> Hazy faces observed all of that from the left. The classroom breathed and snorted in unison, like a living organism, like a dangerous beast. Ты не ошибся? Are you sure? Нет такого в списке. I have you in my register. My knees chose the worst time to start shaking, and I felt dizzy. <sniffs> Why do I feel like she's the? Did you guys watch Monster Inc? Did you watch Monster Inc? Do you remember that there was this old slug-looking lady with glasses? I keep getting vibes of that that slug from this lady. <laughs> the slug lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. The slug lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro. Poor boy, I clutched, I clutched my fists so hard my knuckles became white. Oh no! You said it. Twenty fourth cabinet, Lilia Pavlovna, sixth V. They told me to come to the classroom two o four to ask for Lilia Pavlova, Pol- Pavlovna, class six C. <laughs> Apparently, everyone in the classroom took my words for some sort of joke because they were all laughing. Что за бардак? What's wrong with this girl? The classroom fell silent. The kids hid their smirk for a better occasion. Понаберут студентов. Why do we hire so many interns? Только знают, что губяки свои маливать. А я разгребай, значит. They all know how to put lipsticks all over their bulging lips, but when it comes to real problems, I have to solve everything. А бумаги-то кто заполнять будет? Не первый раз ведь уже. How did they send you here without any proper paperwork? Ugh. We've had the same thing happen so many times already. Подожди здесь. Wait here, I'll be right back. Сейчас я ему строю. After I have a little chat with him. You just trying to slack, old lady. Okay, first of all, you just trying to not teach. The teacher flew past me, mumbling something to herself in righteous anger, as if I was and I was left standing at the center of a classroom. You, you, you can teach. You know what, Harry Potter, you teach. Like a convict in front of a firing squad, I lowered my gaze, feeling the mocking stares from all over the classroom directed at me. They pricked, they prickled my skin, danced on it like laser lights. I wish the voiceover also the same, like the slug lady. I don't remember her voice. I know she she spoke very slowly, like this or something that I don't remember. Oh, oh. Once again, I imagine running away from this place, fighting the craw- clawing, clawing wind, soaring high above the pines in one long jump, with the wind in my back as my only companion. The eyes of my future classmates were asking, "This new boy is he one of us or an outsider?" <laughs> Somebody whispered something, and stifled laughter rolled through the classroom. Wipe the board. It was easy to guess who was the main prankster here. Hey, Ochkarik. Hey, four eyes. Ты чё, не только слепой, но ещё и глухой? Are you not only blind but also deaf? Доску вытри говорю. I said, wipe the board. Listen here, why don't you wipe the board? Then maybe you lose some pounds. Okay, just for your health. 
Okay, just for your health, cause I'm concerned. That's all. That's all, honey. My my knees weren't the only shaking part of my body anymore. I was trembling from head to toe, and I prayed for the teacher to come back sooner. Ah, Baba, how on? Wipe the board with your face. Yeah, maybe you should do it with your face. My prayers were answered by the powers that be. Teacher back. Ну что мне с тобой делать-то? And what should I do with you now? Куда сажать, а? Where will you sit? Давай косять, наверное, с Семеном. Oh no, he, there's an empty seat here, bruh. Oh well, you can sit with Semyon, I guess. Он все равно один. He's alone anyway. Еще чего? No way. Oh, bro. <laughs> the fatso put his backpack on a seat beside him in defiance, scratched his belly and smirked. This boy. This boy. Are you back to your old tricks? Or should I call your grandma here again? The classroom went silent. Shh, teacher, show it. And what's she gonna do? I'll be the one to do something if she doesn't. <clears throat> Put away your backpack now. Semyon didn't move a muscle. He started studying the portraits of writers on a wall looking bored. I need to do something to resolve this somehow, to save myself. Yeah. I <clears throat> I cleared my throat and continued with a stifled voice that sounds nothing like me. I can sit in the last row. I think there's a free seat. The teacher snorted loudly. She looked at me, then at Semyon, then back at me. Ладно. Садись пока туда. Fine, go there for now. А с тобой, бабурин, мы еще поговорим. And you, Baburin, I'll have a talk with you later. His name is Baburin. Babu, Babu, Babu. Babu means baby. <laughs> Чтобы подошел после уроков. Come to me after classes. Будешь по классу дежурить, ясно? You'll be on cleaning duty, got it? Samin forced out a twisted smile. Juicy pimples were grow were growing on the tip of his nose, right for the taking. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of your skin, guys. I know when you're growing, you will have acne and pimples, but you still need to take care of it. I walk carefully, afraid to stumble and fall, causing another outburst of laughter from everyone. I took my seat at the back, at the last table, where I was met with a pile of old posters. The outcasts took their seats, and the class was ready to start. Вот и хорошо. Начнем урок. Now this is settled. Let's start the class. Тема. Традиции русской и мировой литературы в рассказе Зощенко «Не надо врать». Today's theme is traditions of Russian and international literature in Doshenko's Don't Lie. The fatso turned back to me. He stared and informed me of the coming days, weeks, and months of bullying. I've got my eyes on you, said his watery look. Ew! Ew! After just a couple of periods, I had already noticed a yellow spit stain in my notebook. Ew. It's bubbly! Ew. Ew. She is speaking Russian. Then at the cafeteria, the Semyon accidentally spilled a glass of compote, compote on me. Compote, a dessert drink brewed from a mix of dry fruit and berries. And then he flailed his hands around after as exiting the toilet so some of the liquid in his hands would get on me. Just before the final period for today, Simon pushed me into a busy, buzzing crowd of girls from our class. <gasps> oh! Hello, police. <laughs> they made way cursing, but I couldn't hold my balance and ended up ramming my face into the girl I took for the class rep before, right in her chest. Oi! Ow! I immediately stepped back, dying from embarrassment. I'm sorry, are you alright? Yeah. I... Then she suddenly put her hands on her hips. She is so cute! Will you look at him? Groping me in front of everyone! I'm gonna go tell my mom. They'll expel you, pervert. 
There was some sort of sadistic pleasure in her eyes, as if she was a child who was about to lit up a match in a chaffer to the chaffer beetle. Chaffer beetle? I didn't mean to, he pushed me. We all saw that, you know, no blind among us. I'm a goose? She stared at my glasses while showing me a creepy face. First of all, girl, you ain't got nothing. Okay. Second of all, you cute or whatever, but you, you, you're you not that hot, you know what I mean? You're not, you're not up there. You just, eh. So, get off your high horse. <laughs> you just, eh. You're like a five, you know what I mean? You're still growing. <laughs> I started to fume on the inside, but Samian's laughter cooled my head. I pushed you, you're sure? He swaggered up to me. What? That's a word? Enveloping me in the smell of sunflower seeds and rotting teeth. Eh! And then pushed me to the ground. Oh. Oh. It's not bad, just not by you. Because you're not attractive. Like this, huh? What you gonna do now? The bully towered over me as if saying, Come on, hit me. Let me see you try. Alright guys, what do we do? Choose. Fight back or endure. I do not... Okay, I personally would not want to touch... I would not want to touch that face. I'm just saying. You know, if I smack his face... Maybe... If I smack his face, maybe something's gonna fly out of those pimples. I don't know. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, you, you guys decide. I'm gonna go take a quick three to five minute toilet break and we'll come back and see what you guys choose. Not the face. I don't want to touch his face. It's so nasty. All right, we'll be right back. Three to five minutes.
We back. We back. Let me move my mic stand real quick. Okay. Did you guys get your drink and your food and everything? Usagi Rumi is back. Okay. I will say I have been bullied in school. I was bullied for quite a huge portion for a kid. And I always snitched. <laughs> ran straight to the teachers, ran straight to the headmistress and was like, Teacher, this person said this to me and they did this to me. And yeah, <laughs> they got what they deserve. Okay, don't be, be afraid to speak out. And yeah, if they don't do nothing, then sometimes you gotta take business in your own hands. I'm just saying. But not necessarily always fight back. I don't know. For me, it wasn't really physical. It's more like verbal and just really mean girls. <clears throat> yeah. But anyways, let's see what you guys got. Okay, y'all still voting, but holy shit! Okay, 81% says to fight back. <clears throat> bruh, 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 bruh. Dang, son. That's smart, actually. It's like this. Sometimes you get bullied harder when you tell the teachers. But it's sometimes worse because some teachers don't do anything. But I went straight to the headmaster. I went to the straight to the headmistress. And Kurumama is really scary. She's gone to school to yell at teachers before. <laughs> She's gone to school and smacked their tables and go, my kid, blah 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 blah. Why did you do anything? And so you know they know not to mess around with. <laughs> you know, so when we do tell them something, they actually listen. Thankfully. <clears throat> So yeah, <laughs> Kurumama very scary, bruh. Mm, yeah. Okay, so you guys actually want to fight back, bruh. I do not want to touch that face. <laughs> yes. Mm, they look crusty. He better not pick them. You're not supposed to pick at pimples. Kurumama savage. Kurumama can destroy my death. Get with ass. Get with ass. Kurumama adopt us, please. She has more than enough kids. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's fight back. Since you guys want to fight back. Listen, you. My throat went dry. My lips were moving on their own, and my voice was akin to a stifled squeal, a stifled squeal. Can Kurumama yell at me? Get my ass. Ew, ew, ew. Brush your teeth, children. Brush it. If you can't do it twice a day, at least do it once a day. Come on. <laughs> he ain't brushing his teeth for like, since birth. <laughs> Ever since he came out of his mother's womb, he ain't never brushed his teeth. Oh. Simeon wore a mocking smabber. Okay, I'm gonna use... I used a valley girl voice on the girl. What about him? Like a... Go on four hours. <clears throat> okay, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Why did you stop? We're all waiters. If you ever touch me again, Semyon slowly stuck out a finger and poked my forehead. Ew, don't touch me. I don't, so what? If you ever do it again, here, once more. And again, why do I sound like Pigeon Toady from the movie Storks? <laughs> And again! And again! He was poking me with his fingers so hard that my head tilted backwards. I must not cry, you must not cry, boy, you hang in there. Or I'll be done for. What will a wimp like you do to me? My vision went blurry. My soles tore off from the floor. Oh no. I rushed forward and threw a random punch without looking. Oh! 
What I saw when I opened my eyes was a beautiful was beautiful and horrifying at the same time. We did not touch his face. I'm in. <laughs> Can I get an amen up in here? We did not touch his face. Thank God. Simi was holding his ear and blinking in amazement. Thank Lord he hit his ear. <laughs> was I the first person to re rebel against his absolute rule? Bro. Violin is not the only option. Kurumes, that's true, that's true. Oh my gosh. I need to run, but I was already surrounded by his cronies. Petrov just hit Baburin. Samuel's cheeks grew even redder and his pimples even wider, like the heads of a larva. <laughs> But a smile flashed on his face that was only noticed among his comrades. He only got he got really close to me. Ugh, the smell of rotten teeth washed over me. Yeah. Pizdiets. Our fucking dog. His voice was evil and dangerous, like someone tore off the lid from a kettle with boiling fat. Ugh. I was waiting to get hit. Counting the thumbs of my heart and guessing where his fist would go. The solar plexus, the jaw, the nose, but he just turned around and walked off. A thought, cold and somber and extremely rational, popped up in my head. I'm gonna get killed today. I was late to leave the school after classes on purpose. Semyon didn't attend the last period, so I was hopeful. What if he decided to dodge the cleaning duty and ran home, forgetting all about me? I heaved a sigh of relief, like someone on death row whose execution was delayed by a day. Brr. But I didn't let myself forget his tone, his vengeful gaze, and his scary, electrified smirk. <clears throat> and his stank. While the other students were leaving the school, loudly, laughing loudly, I was pretending to skim through my books near a window. I was staring outside, nervous. Samuel was nowhere to be found in the front yard or near the school gate. I didn't really believe that I was this lucky, so I decided to be extra cautious and stay for some more time in the corridor that was gradually getting less crowded. All of the bustle moved to the first floor. Oh. There was a skeleton peeking out of a biology classroom. Some jokester put a cap on it with an American condor on his head. The sound of running water were coming from the bathroom. I was the only person left in the whole school. I'm not alone, a sudden thought came to mind. I remember the missing boy. His portrait was on a notice board near the schedule. I remember his smile, him looking at me, and the fact that he's most likely already dead. Привет. Hello? I shuddered and turned around. Oh, 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 oh! <clears throat> at first, my eyes stumbled upon the black violin case. Then I noticed a girl from my class was holding it. Oh! She can girl. You're gonna grow up a model or some shash future K pop idol. Hello, she saw she sat in the first row of the second column. I swear I caught her looking at me a couple of times. Oh, shash, and I was sneaking glances at her myself. She's so cute. Sometimes it just feels good. It just feels nice to look at something pretty. The spring, the sky, or a girl that's not in the crowd that laughs at Samyon's jokes. And she wasn't whispering the dirty laundry of other people to Katya. She spent all the breaks just like me, staying in the classroom or looking in the window or drawing something in her green notebook. Здравствуй. Hello. I turned red and pretended I was studying the pattern on the wooden floor. Круто ты ему врезал. It was cool the way you hit him. Это вышло случайно. It was just an accident. Almost. I started shoving books into my backpack. To at least put something in my head. Sammy wasn't like that before. He also just transferred here just recently. Ah. His grandma told me that it almost felt like he went mad. Even the upperclassmen fear Semyon, did you know? Well, I would fear his stank. If he came near me, I'd be like, oh, stay right there. Okay, 
social distance. <laughs> but you're different. She's so cute. She's so cute. You're brave. Mm -hmm. I mumbled in reply. Yeah, right. Me, brave. A hero that's been standing around in the hallway to avoid a beating, bro. The girl looked at me with her clear, attentive eyes. Ooh. Do you live over the river? In that wooden house? Yeah. Must be scary living there. And you also have to cross the forest. I wouldn't be able to do that. I shivered at the mention of the forest. I thought of intertwining branches of a snake-like trail of endless darkness that spread like mold among the crooked trees. So I straight up lied. It's not that scary. What's so scary about it for you? She smiled after a brief pose. As if rushing off a daydream. Well, actually, never mind. My name is Polina, by the way. And I'm Anton. I already know that. <laughs> hey, Anton. She stumbled as if trying to decide whether she should continue. Ask me out on a date, girl. Time waits for nobody, girl. In maybe a day, some other girl gonna come up to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Take your chance right now, today! Yes! <laughs> Guys, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. What are you doing after school? Oh! Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just spend time with you. Ooh. My chest felt prickly after her innocent question, yet somehow it felt pleasant. <clears throat> what if Paulina's a fox girl? It's fine. If she looked this cute, that's fine. Nothing much. Oh, it's getting dark. Oh. I stumbled and didn't finish my sentence. Alisa's predatory smile flashed in front of my eyes. Her playful eyes and the slits of the mask were probably just a product of my ma ma of my imagination, though. What if that fox girl is waiting for me after the school? Or was it another one of your weird jokes? I wonder if she's hiding a bit re big red tail under her coat. I suddenly got covered with beads of sweat, like after a PE class. I wanted to take a shower, as if just thinking of the foxy girl made me dirty. Oh. Soiled my clothes, lure me into the forest's embrace. I have a violin lesson and then I'll be free. My grandpa hired me a private tutor. Our music teacher is a violinist. And he doesn't have anyone here to teach her except me. She waved her hand in the her free hand in the air, imitating the movement of a bow on a, on a violin string. I could almost hear the music. It chased Alyssa out of my head. Shay, your sip. I looked at Polina's lips, catching her every word, and was frozen from the unusual sensation. <sighs> Children, man. Puberty be hidden. They were warm. Soothing. Go home! And tingly. Just go home! <laughs> Imagine your mom at home worried about your kid. You're just like, what if he's lost? Where did my kid go? Why is he not home yet? Like, food is getting cold. Where's my child? And he's here simping. <laughs> Felt like I was very small and the feelings were immense and they couldn't fit inside me. They say there's a serial killer on the loose in the village. Normally, Grandpa would escort me from home from school, but he's been sick lately. She's like a little princess, huh? I snuck a glance at Vova's photo. His eyes wells. His eye wells were studying me. His lips wearing black lipstick, just like the portrait on a gravestone. 
Ты не подумай, я не трусишка, просто... I mean, I'm not a coward, it's just... Просто мне кажется, что с тобой будет безопаснее. I think I'll be safer together with you. Антон, ты сможешь проводить меня до дома? Will you go home with me, Anton? There was. Finally, everything I read about in adventure books, everything I dreamt about was seeping into my life. A mysterious crime, a beautiful stranger, and a heroic duel. A duel. Thinking of Samuel instantly sobered me up, returned me back to Earth, and it started shaking under my feet like a deck of ship. If only I could rise to the occasion in front of Paulina. Because no matter how brave I was trying to act, it was obvious for both of us that I wouldn't be able to stand a chance against a big guy like that. And him knocking me out wouldn't even be the worst of it. And the worst part is Polina will see all of that. You know, first of all, maybe Polina can whoop his ass. You ever thought of that? She's got a violin. She has a weapon already. Expensive one at that. But you know. Maybe she could stand up for herself. <clears throat> winning, son. He's winning. And she'll laugh at me like everybody else. No, I don't need anybody to see me in such a shameful state. No, he's gonna reject. I doubt I'll be able to today. She's gonna die after today. You know, Semyon is waiting for me outside. I need to deal with him one-on-one -on -one like a man. Oh, my lord. You're one chance and you're blowing it, child. Nonsense. Polina brushed off some hair off her forehead and I sensed the weak aroma of blackberry. Polina was like water when you were thirsty. You gulp it down and still wanted more gewa ass. Speaking of which, let's drink some water. This boy's thirst is real. He's gonna quench his thirst. Okay. <clears throat> I remember the summer evenings at the country house, the fires pungent smoke, the berries hanging over our fence from the neighbors, a soft cover of pine, pine needles under my soles. <laughs> Those few peaceful days when I felt completely safe. My mom resting in a hammock, my dad putting meat on a skewer. Could I have foreseen the upcoming catastrophe in the crackles of the coals, in our parents' laughs? In the smell of the fleeting July, could I have could I have seen how fragile the world was? Do you think? Do you really think that Savage will give you a fair fight? He'll just swarm you with his friends without giving you a chance to catch a breath. Suddenly, Polina suddenly flashed a devious smile. Down back for Polina, bitten down by Pimple Face, a poem by me. <laughs> a poem by all of us. But if we go together, they will be put off. Listen, it's like this. If you go, if you walk into school alone and you walk out of school with a girl, isn't that like, shush, this boy got some game. We can't just mess with him, right? 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 If you, if you walk out with a girl, people are going to be like, oh, he's, he's, you know, he, you can't underestimate him. You know, he's one to be reckoned with. Yeah. Right? Can confirm, right? Right? They'll be like, oh, shish. Okay. You know what? Maybe I take a step back. Yeah. But they can gang up on both of them, though. I don't think they will beat a girl, right? 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 <coughs> right? I'm not only the first violin of this village, I'm also a girl. I heard from a delinquent, I know, that he'll never attack someone when there's a girl around. Let's go! Right? Because they also don't want to look bad in front of a girl, right? They also want to look cool. So they probably be like, so you know, like tilt their chin like so and then just like chill. <laughs> Can you imagine? They have this weird code of honor. A delinquent, you know, I were I thought worried. Is he better than me? Taller, more handsome? 
I'll have to go to music class. She made a couple of steps and stopped. Amazing, Polina didn't look like those beauties from the magazine posters or the actress from the movies. But the flickering light of the ceiling lamp, she looked much more alluring. Can you play anything? Her parents bought me a guitar a couple of years ago. I immediately remembered my meager attempts at making music. Uh, um, change. We're all waiting for a change. Soy songs echoed my thoughts and my desire to change something. Victor Soy, a, a singer and a frontman of popular Soviet rocker band Kino that played a mixture of new wave and post-punk. Their hit song, Perryman, Changes, is one of the most popular rock tracks of the new Russian era. Died in a car accident. Ooh, F. The guitar got lost somewhere, as if refusing to move to the old house near the forest. I think my parents gave it away to someone that needed it more. I think you can sell. You can probably sell it. I don't, sadly. A pity. Oh well, I'll be going. Did she just call me a baka? I'll take it. Baka! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Indeed I am. Indeed I am. She called me out. Her shout was captured by the loud echo. Bruh. Her, her shoes also echoed through the school hallways. Bruh. Baka. Baka. Hey, she gone. She gone. You should have said it when she was here. I wasn't sure if Polina heard me. I looked out the window again. The schoolyard was empty. Just a couple of great schoolers throwing snowballs at each other. Nobody who looked like the hulking Semyon with his cronies. This was giving me hope. What should I do? Polina could become my friend. The first one in his new place. And besides, she may be in real danger of meeting a killer and I'll be her defender. <clears throat> her knight. And even though my inner voice was hesitant and whispering about running away from the killers, lurking in the woods at night, Polina was worth the risk. Yes, you simp. But the red cunning fox was also intriguing. She promised to help me look for Vova, and this will bring me a reward. More money will almost guarantee peace in my family. Gifts for Olia. I imagine my sister happy like those girls who went, who get prizes from Suponev in the finest hour. Sergei Suponev, a Soviet and Russian TV host, the most prolific showman, prolific showman of the Russian kids' TV and in, in the 90s. He hosted teen quizzes as well as computer entertainment shows. Supanov died on December 8th, 2001 when he crashed his snowmobile into a river pier. They never die normally, huh? Should be dancing with a famous singer, maybe new popular boy band like Ivanushki International. Ivanushki International, a Russian boy band that was popular in the 90s and early 2000s and consisted of three singers. Its songwriter and vocalist Igor Sorin died to a fall from the six-story balcony. Oh my lord. The police officer police report came it to be suicide. Oh no. Oleg Yakovlev substitute him in a band and later died from cirrhosis. Oh my lord. That's a lot of dead people and not in natural ways. Mom and dad hugging in the Ostankino pavilion. And then all of us going to Disneyland. Do we have to choose? Oh! Okay, 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 you guys decide. Paulina? Or Alyssa? I don't know. Would you trust Paulina or would you trust Alyssa? Touch grass more like touch snow, I know, right? Alyssa sounds like an adventure, but Paulina sounds very tete, you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. what would you, what do you guys say? Choose, choose wisely. You guys have two minutes. I'll let you guys choose. Paulina has Yandere vibes, sus. Oh, Paulina Lisa. I don't think I can choose both. But in the meantime, I can look at things. <coughs> Excuse me. An abandoned zinc bucket with a rag at the bottom of it, filled to the brim with murky tap water. Ew. 
It reeked of salty chemicals and the stench was so intense that I felt sick. I staggered away from it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Praying that I don't meet the same fate as this person on cleaning duty. Turn me around and I'll tell you who's stupid. I bet something offensive is written on the other side. I wonder how long would Samyang keep turning it around if it fell into his hand. Somebody left their school shoes on a window still. Judging from their size, they belong to a boy my age. Okay. <clears throat> Can we combine both of them and choose Polisa? Hello, Polisa? Maybe later you can go back to this arc. We'll see. But first, we have to choose the first one. It's the crazy ones that are more trustful. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Alyssa is promising us adventure and candies and maybe Vova in the forest and also protection. Paulina, she's uwu. She wants us to escort her home. She's a potential future girlfriend or just a friend. And if we're seen with her, then maybe the Samyon would not bully us no more. And also she's the only violinist in here. So she can't die. We can't let her die. <laughs> Chad Fox girlfriend. Warehouse rat. Warehouse rat is biased. He he's leaning towards Alyssa. What about you guys? Alia, I mean Alyssa. We will follow Alia all the way. <laughs> I don't know who to choose. I see the poll going more to Paulina. <coughs> you guys are trying to... <laughs> it's like you guys... <laughs> you guys are like wingmen. <laughs> trying to hook a boy up. Making sure that this is his first love. You know? Alright. Time's up. Okay. Paulina it is. Paulina it is. We will go with Paulina. Majority majority wins. <laughs> Thank you, Urkos, for six wing super chat. Matri ye pada kalian viewers dan jazz setters. Okay, gotta go. Thank you. Ma what's mat what's mat matri? Mar oh like Slam Hari Raya? M the short form is Matriya. Matriya. Salamat Hari Raya. You go down in history to have the first ever fox girlfriend. But we have to choose. Paulina. Alright. Snow dance in the air outside the window, following the rhythm of the music that was flowing from around the corner. Imagine Elisa finding out that you're leaving to go home with another girl. She gonna feel betrayed, man. She was her first friend. <laughs> I jumped off the windowsill and started walking along the hallway, curiously, curiosity eating away at me. The half an hour I'd spend here cr waiting crawled at snail's pace. I wanted to see Paulina again, you simp. The music became louder. It streamed out of the half open door at the far end of the corridor. My music taste was limited to Letov, Sh Chef's Chuk, the timeless classics, and pop songs I saw on TV. Igor Letov, a singer and a frontman of the band Graz, oh my god, Grazdanskaya Oborana, Oborona, Civil Defense, that played a mix of garage punk and psychedelic rock. Letov is posthumously considered the godfather and a patriarch of Russian punk rock and the most influential members of the punk rock of punk movement in Russia. Died peacefully in a sleep. Finally, somebody died peacefully. <laughs> Along with his music videos that would sometimes be put on tapes as teasers before a movie. Ooh. Ooh. But, in, but this violin melody captured me, captivated me. It felt like a master woodcutter working with a delicate wood. A fragile crystal toy. A gust of warm wind. Oh, she gone! I pressed my cheek against the doorway. Polina was hiding from me in the far end of the classroom, but a shadow that fell on the wall definitely belonged to a girl with a violin. 
The movements of her bow were so graceful that I felt like I was getting carried away on the waves of music. My heart broke the barrier of my rib cage and started hopping around. Faster and faster, it jumped on snow piles, gliding between the pines towards the fiery sun above the windfall. Yes, simp. Is this good, Chell? She's out. Got tired of waiting? I was so deep in thought that I didn't hear the approaching footsteps. After bathing in music, Polina felt even more magical! Oh no, not really. I, I just was simping. I was just thinking, thinking about my comic. For some unknown reason, I lied. You draw comics? Yeah, well, I mean... I want to draw one. Oh! What will it be about? About the most charming and kind girl that plays a violin who somehow happened to be in this house of horror. About a fox. Oh, I mean, about talking animals who help children who get lost to return home from the woods. And then they... They dance in the night. Wow! Sounds interesting. Did you did you come up with it yourself? First of all, I just re recalled. Alyssa mentioned that the people in this city are wearing human masks. Guys, guys, guys! I lowered my gaze. I got inspiration from looking out the window. Achievement unlocked. Nightly vows. Oh. We ascended we descended to the first floor. I opened the door in front of Polina. Dad told me how it, essential it is to be a gentleman. Oh So you're an artist, huh? I had a hunch you were different. Special. Oh lord. Twenty bucks? Okay. Are you joking me? I'm absolutely average. Это Семён обыкновенный. Семён is the average one. В смысле обычный придурок. An average idiot. А в тебе живет нечто доброе и пушистое. And you carry something kind and fluffy inside. Something barked near my leg when we were crossing the school guard, interrupting Polina. Ай! Ик! Не бойся, это Жуль. Don't worry, it's just Zulka. I stood on one knee and rubbed rubbed the barking dog behind the ear. He was frantically wagging his tail like it was some sort of propeller. I looked around the yard trying to find Elisa. But the fox girl was nowhere to be found neither in the yard nor on the road. Leave it be. It's a stray, you know? What if it has pests? No, this one has an owner, I think. Polina looked at the playful dog with disgust, covering her mouth with a handkerchief. Do you have any food on you? I think I have something left. We'll feed it and go, alright? She took out a sandwich out of her bag and threw it to Joka. The dog rushed to her, to her banquet, swept away the bread with her nose and started eating the bologna. What a picky eater. Come on, eat everything. <gasps> Polina tugged my sleeve, egging me on. Hey, what's wrong? <laughs> she replied with laughter. I kneeled down and grabbed the diamond ring for Polina. I want this to be a real dialogue too soon. I'm calling it. Y'all sussing her out? The violin girl had literally dragged me out of the school gates. That stifling laughs into a fist. I turned around. Zolka followed us with sad eyes as we were leaving. The dog looks especially lonely with the school as the backdrop. And then Polina just stopped laughing. She walked alongside me with a blank stare, completely silent. Don't spread pests. Her remark turned out pretty harsh. 
What if it was really the stray's fault that she had to live in the streets? They always attack people later. <gasps> oh no! Oh no, one pack of these almost killed my grandpa last winter. Oh no. That's horrible. Oh no. He's paralyzed now. Oh, bro. Rabies or something. I don't know. And I wonder if they have dog shelters or animal shelters. Promote Polina demoted no longer the best girl. Oh, damn. He will never be able to walk again. I remember the scary packs of dogs that was chasing me just a while ago. I'm sorry. It's okay. Polina showed me another enchanting smile, her eyes half closed. What matters is that we understand each other now. I forgot all about Zoka after she said that. You simp! Some third graders were throwing snowballs at each other singing. <laughs> Three, four, five, the owl will, uh, will arrive. The owl. Olia. An image of my sister, sitting near the window, bored, looking for me in the twilight, flashed before my eyes. I promised myself that I, was, I would go home as soon as I escort Polina. What is this song the kids are singing? It's the second time I, f I hear it today. We were walking down the main street. Somewhere near, a tractor was grumbling, clearing snowdrifts. Ravens flew across the ashen sky. A flock of black birds circled above us, like scary crosses that ran away from graves. The owl one? It's just a local nursery rhyme. Grandpa used to sing it to me when I was little. He's very knowledgeable about local history and folklore. I miss Olea, she arrived. I think she's home. And what does that rhythm sound like? Listen! She started walking backwards, facing me, and smiling. One, two, time to play with you. Время поиграть. Three, four, five, the owl will arrive. Hoko! My bunny wifey, hello! My owl wifey. Hello, hello. Mwah, mwah, mwah. We were just talking about an owl and you and you showed up. <laughs> hello, Hoku wifey. We're we're in the nursery rhyme about an owl. It worked. It summoned Hoku. <laughs> Six on end, the wolf's gray fur will stand. It? Seven, eight, stomp your hooves and wait. For the fox and for the bear? Bunny, tasty meals prepare. I thought I already met a fox this morning. Thankfully, I haven't met any wolves or bear. What a time, you should play this game in case you haven't. Hoku, I think you love it. But you need to translate it a lot. There's, It's a visual novel. Brr. Yeah, it's fun. It's scary. Super scary. Knock, knock. And I was looking at the girl by my side. I became strangely brave. So I said something next. Something unexpected. You have a beautiful voice. Sip! Polina adjusted her hair, slightly embarrassed. Спасибо. Спасибо. Thanks. Oh. And is that the end of the rhyme? Did the bunny prepare those meals? Who knows? Nobody will be able to tell you now. It's really old. Oh my. I'll ask the team if I can play it too. Yes! Uh... The place is set in Russian, but then they have English, Chinese, and Russian uh, text. <laughs> yeah, but the dubbing is Russian. Mmm. Yes, it's super fun. <laughs> I'd even say ancient, she said. <laughs> There's a legend related to it, though. <laughs> Want me to tell you? <laughs> of course. <laughs> All sorts of tribe had lived in a taiga back in the day. Uh, my grandpa told me they had this insta initi well some sort of rite 
when a boy was ready to become a man. An initiation? 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 I listened closely. I mean, I was also really close to that age myself. You still a child. They would lead him into the woods where he needed to spend three days hunting. There's a legend about a young man who went into the taiga and never returned. What is that sound in the back? And it suddenly came back when they already stopped looking for him. He was covered in scratches, dirty, cold. I imagine sleeping among the pines and bear lairs. His family rushed to help him, but he just fell unconscious. They brought a shaman. He looked at the young man and his face became grim. He told them that he was in a bad shape. The young man convulsed until the morning, repeating that rhyme over and over. Over and over. Ooh. One, two, time to play with you. As if Taiga itself was whispering it to him. <gasps> and when the sun came out, he died. Oh nah. But the shaman said that he was already dead when he returned. He came out the came out of the woods as a living corpse and whispered that rhyme with his dead lips. What? I froze in fear. Are you sure it's not some horror movie? Folklores can be way scarier than movies, believe me. Grandpa said this tribe just uprooted in a hurry and left to the south. They must have been brave if they lived here. Polina kicked one of the snow piles with her small boot. Brave but stupid. Did they need a corpse to appear from the forest for them to understand? Understand what? That they needed to get out of here. There's the big world. And then there's our village. The world. She spread her arms wide. The village. She showed a distance that was almost invisible between her two fingers. I often imagine big cities. I can look at the globe for hours. Or at Around the World magazines from the library. They have such pretty names, just listen. Reykjavik. Tel Aviv. Music to my ears. She started circling, her eyes shut dreamingly. The forest towered before us, touching the low clouds. Oh, they're in the forest now. The road fell into the semi-dark between the trees. I've conquered the stage. Oh, I could have conquered the stage performing in front of thousands. And I have stage right. Oh, you get famous another way, by drawing. We both have a future, but what about, say, Samyon? He may just get fatter. And he'll be selling Pirozki. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my lord, yeah, made from dogs. <laughs> We burst out laughing, ex exorcising worry from our minds with the light-hearted fun. If somebody will even trust him with selling them. Oh, you're right. He can probably eat a whole lot of them in one go, bro, they're bullies. Like I thought, the forest is less scarier when you're not alone. I looked around. The snow was sparkling, reflecting the last rays of the sun. 
of the setting sun. My paws fastened from the thought that we were alone. Yes, you were right. Oh, they walk in. Okay. Oh, there's somebody in the back. Okay. Do I click him? Do I click him? I don't know. I clicked him. Suddenly I hear ner nearby bush rustle. Sp spilling snow in the, in the ravine. A giant man walked from them. Fastening a zipper on his pants. Oh, he was peeing. I recognize him. He was in a schoolyard this morning. Ew, you don't wash your hands and you touch your cigarette while you put it in your mouth? Ew. He gave us an indifferent look and just walked away. What a shady guy. It's so good that you're here with me, Anton. Who knows what this thug would have done if you weren't by my side. She gave me a look full of admiration. And when the big man had almost disappeared behind a tree, she stuck out a tongue at him and laughed. Such a little rascal. Polina rushed through the fire break. Don't fall behind. I never fall behind. You know the way you speak? Just like a hero from adventure books. Girl, you never talk to people, huh? Was she complimenting or mocking me? I didn't want to look for the hidden meaning, not when we had on a, such a wonderful walk. Hello, welcome. No, da, I, love I mean, I like books. Oh, oh a well-read man. Intriguing. She is real thirsty, okay. A man, really? <laughs> I get embarrassed and my cheeks turn beet red, but I still thank fate for being able to wander around the forest with Polina like this. The girl suddenly stopped and stare, started silently into the thickening, the darkening thicket, as if waiting for something. I felt uneasy all of a sudden, and then she asked me in a cold voice, Have you been there? Where? Deep in the woods? <laughs> Polina burst out laughing again, shattering my anxious thoughts. No, silly. In the big world. In cities with musical names. Does Moscow sound musical to you? To me, it sounds like the croaking of a frog. To me, it sounds like the croaking of a frog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been to Moscow? Yeah. When I was little, Polina's eyes started sparkling. What's it like? Well, it's beautiful. Шумная. Noisy. Neonовая. Neon lights everywhere. Neonовая. Neon lights. I felt like she was savoring those words. А на был? Have you been to the Red Square? Конечно. Of course. Она такая выпуклая. It's so bumpy. И в Цуме был, и на ВДНХ. I've been to Tsum and VD and KH2. Okay, let's see what that is. V Sum Central University Department Store, one of the biggest department stores in Europe. Oh, situation situated in downtown Moscow, was found in 19, oh wait, 1885 as Mir and Mireles Co. After the Soviet Revolution, the store was nationalized and given its contemporary name in 1933. Von K Exhibition of Achievements of National Economy, the second biggest exhibition complex in Moscow. It's presented in the top 50 biggest European exhibition centers list. 49 architecture pieces on the complex's territory are considered cultural heritage monuments. Uh. I love the metro the most. It smelled like homeless people. She ran up to me, grabbed me by the sleeve, and stared in, in my eyes with clear interest. Shash! I can't describe it. And can you draw it? Что, запах? What, a smell? Great musicians can play smells. Не может быть. You're lying. Я дам тебе кассеты. I'll give you the cassettes later, bro. What? She started twirling in the falling snow again. Я обязательно побываю в Москве. I'll definitely go to Moscow, bro. А главное, в Вене. But first to Vienna. Вена моя мечта. It's my dream. Это же столица. The capital of music. I feel like she's gonna die. Mozart, Beethoven, Strauss. 
This is like a red alert. Usually when they say this, they never live. <laughs> <laughs> Mozart, B Beth Beethoven, uh, Strauss, okay. Philharmonic Orchestra, okay. National Opera, okay, okay. I'll be performing and you drawing and I'll be married to you and we have babies. Her enthusiasm spread to me. I wanted to do something right this moment. And where do you want to go? I sigh and confess Disneyland. to Disneyland. I remember the finest hour show again. Only I preferred Call of the Jungle, but I always spend my Mondays in front of my TV. Colorful tables with the numbers on signs and a charming Mr. Supoven Suponev at the wheel. And the prizes! Chocolate eggs, video equipment, and the most exciting one. A most exciting one trip one a trip to Disneyland for the winter. My parents promised to take me there, the land of the mouse, and I believed it at first. Well, maybe they also believed it back then. Now they just reply with a silence every time I ask about it, and it saddens me to know. And I'm gonna go to Disneyland. Let's see how long she lives. Yeah. I just have three words on my mind in these moments. But you promised! Polina has seemingly read my mind. Getting there is easier than we think. Everybody has the power to mold their fate. She picked up two handfuls of snow. And then, as if she forgot about everything, showed me a sly smile. Want me to make a snowman? Давай. Sure. When I get back home, I'll make a snowman for Olia too. She'll be so happy. But for now, let's see if you make it home. Oh! Oh! Find yourself a woman the way she looks at him. Find yourself a woman. The way she looks at him. We were almost done with the first ball, roll, rolling it shoulder to shoulder. She, the mom must be so worried. Like, what the hell, my kids? <laughs> Polina was laughing. Locks of her hair fell on her lively face. She was so cute when she blew them away. Ha 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 ha. Why is your ball so small, Anton? Yeah, why is your ball so small? It'll only work as a head. Make it bigger. Don't be lazy. I couldn't remember the last time I had so much fun. Polina swept her now crimson lips. Did you ever wish to go to another planet? Oh no, she's about to murder him. Something flashed in her eyes when she said that. I couldn't really put my finger on what it was. To another universe, even. <clears throat> Polina sighed in what felt like relief. Then you should understand me. Our palms glided across the ball of snow, straightening up any bumps it had. An almost ideal white ball rose up in the middle of the clearing. And another one popped up. We lifted it up from two sides and placed it on the one that served as a foundation. Finally, Polina helped the third ball to get on top of the other two. Getting the head to the right places is what I do best. I bet I... <laughs> do you by any chance have a carrot? Alas! There was no fear, no worry at this clearing. I became more daring, ran towards the thicket to crack a couple of branches. I pulled at the intertwining windfall, but Pauline's voice suddenly awakened me from my delusion. Anton! Someone is standing there! I turned around puzzled. Pauline was looking at me, no, at something behind my back. I stared at her. I st Wait, what? She stared at it, her brows furrowed. Not a single trace was left of the cheerful atmosphere we had moments ago, bro. Pauline. Polina? She slowly raised her hand and pointed at the darkness that was approaching the trees in the distance. Someone is standing there. A crooked silhouette, see? Rubbing the pine with her huge hands. I turned around, directing my gaze where she was pointing to. The area around the dry raspberry bushes were empty. There's nothing there. It hid behind the tree. Which we're surrounded by a tree. Which one? The color of the color of my coat felt suffocating. I pulled on it instinctively. I felt a spasm in my stomach. 
I smiled weakly and asked, hoping for a good answer. Is this a prank? Polina seemingly lost all her words. She just continued, stared deeply into the endless forest. Bravery check, I thought, so I stepped toward the glossy black trunk. Polina's gaze pushing me in the back. Guys? I was trying to muster all of my courage, but my inner voice was telling me to stop. To curl into a ball, to play dead even. Anything but go there, into the writhing darkness. The twilight was sucking me in, limiting my vision. The clearing was a deep well, its walls prohibiting the sunlight from reaching its bottom. I hid the air ring. I heard the air ring. Or was it ringing in my ears? Yamira, idiot! One step. Two steps. Eh, hey, Macarena. I bit my lip to stop myself from screaming if anything happened. There was nobody behind the pine. I sighed. I turned back to Polina. Polina, Polina, there's nobody. She gone. Ah. Yo, Antoshka. From the behind, from the darkness behind the pines, just like cavemen from their cave, appearing, smirking Samyon with a bunch of his cronies. And who do we have here? <laughs> <laughs> Check out this for eyes free. <laughs> Polina let out a shriek when the bastard shoved her away from me. They surrounded me like carnivorous pride, making me step back. What? Oh! Salmon's heavy leg blasted through the snowman's belly. The balls we rolled crumbled became a mushy mess with a single broken branch pro poking out. Oh no! Polina gasps angrily. I also felt the touch of scalding hatred. The smell of sweat and tobacco ew, attacked my nostrils. The inside of my mouth felt salty as if I'd licked a battery. Ew. Polina, don't be scared. I shuddered after hearing my own voice. It sounded unnatural, rough, and scary. Why would she be scared? <laughs> Worried about yourself. The fat so spit through the gap, gap in, the, in his teeth and pushed me so hard that I hit my back against the tree. No cock. Well, oh, pissed your pants, sucker. I heard Polina's angry voice from behind. Stay away from him. It would have been better if Polina wasn't around. I wish you wouldn't see me in such a shameful position. Look at this, guys. A girl is defending him. Uh huh, what a fucking wimp. Oh, shush! You fucked with the wrong guy, transfers to the shush! Samuel is moving towards me, readying his fist. In that moment, the other delinquent in track pants made a loud whistle and the hulking boy lowered his hand. It was unexpected, it seems like Baburin wasn't the leader of this gang. In reality, they were all listening to the boy who was looking like a small carnivore with very strong and sharp teeth. They decided against hitting me. They probably wanted to humiliate me in front of the girl first. Damn it! Hey, F-word junior. And who's that? Another one of your girlfriends? Listen, if he was an F-word, he wouldn't have a girlfriend, okay? If, if that's what you're trying to indicate, okay? You dumbass. You don't even know what that word means, you fucking idiot. Okay, anyways. He has a freaking harem, eh? Yeah, he's getting some, unlike you. Okay, why am I getting triggered? <laughs> why am I getting triggered? Only then I noticed Zulka behind my legs, trembling from the cold, snow plastered all over its fur. <laughs> Probably ran all the way from the schoolyard, searching for our smell. Oh, it's a dodo! The delinquent squatted in front of the dog and beckoned it with his hand. <gasps> no! 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 He's gonna punch the dog! Oh my! <gasps> Come here, fly ridden bitch! <laughs> the others let out nasty laughs. The dog's ears perked up and she started carefully moving closer. No! No! Yeah, come here. I've got something for you. No! 
The dog didn't even have a chance to sniff him when this animal abuser caught it by the ear and kicked it right under its tail so hard it flew into the newer snow pile, squealing. <laughs> The whole gang burst out laughing and my heart got entrust, en encrusted in ice, bro. Alyssa, even the birds that were perched up against the trees let out a frightening claw, frightening cause. <gasps> Let's go. Oh, oh, eh? Then I know this something strange, eh? Paulina could hardly keep herself from smiling. Does she really hate dogs so much that what this skinny guy did amused her? <gasps> After locking eyes with me, she changed her jubilant sm smirk to a thoughtful grimace. <gasps> Why isn't she running away? I thought in horror. At the edge of my vision, I saw something flash in the illusory twilight of the sleeping forest. Or were that just the bushes moving their icy branches in the wind? <laughs> Romka, he won't be able to shit after this. <gasps> Let me kick the, the fucking thing one more time. Two negatives will make a positive. How about I do that to your fucking face? But the strays were already nowhere to be seen. Oh no. What? Are you an idiot, bruh? Go and show the four eyes his place. In a way he'll understand. Yeah, he fucking owes you. You know this kid at the back got his face kicked in because he lost all his front tooth. <laughs> the wind whacked you in front of the whole class. Yeah, I'll do it again. Sure thing. Clap him. Clap him. Simeon bought a sizable signet ring with some geometric shape carved in it up to my face. In a moment, I'll hit your F face so hard it'll leave a mark for the rest of your life. Where did all of my inner strength and bravery go? Stop! Stop! A whizzy whisper left my lips and tilted my head forward, hitting Semyon's fist. Sparks flew from my eyes. They're gonna gang up on me and beat me up. Oh! Roma! Roma, tell them to stop! Sorry, but the boys need to sort this out, men to men. And you just stand aside and watch. What? Biasha, give me a hand. Semin gave me a rough push towards the bastard with the slanting eyes and he tripped me. I felt, I fell in a sharp crust of ice and a fatso step on my hand, preventing me from getting up. A painful groan escaped my throat. Did you hear him whimper? Is he actually an F word or something? I started to lose breath from anger and resentment. The pain was growing. My ears hot and pulsating pain was shooting through it, like it was cut off and a ball of nettle was sewn in its place. Why so silent, Antoshka? Come on, tell us, are you an F word? At this moment, I felt pure and brutal rage. The amalgamation of my anger like the sprouts ink it rose up from the depths of my mind filling up all my thoughts Bloody morons did you know that my dad is also an f word what <laughs> Samuel burst out laughing this became the last straw fear and anger were grappling inside me like mad dogs he knows aikido got it and he's a vet He'll kill the likes of you with his eyes closed. One word of one word from me and he'll Romka lifted up his arm, stopping my torrent of lies, and made up made a couple of steps forward. Why don't you kick them? <sighs> Simon slowly backed off, giving me an opportunity to stand up. Pines were swaying back and forth like solemn guardians. Did he, did he believe me? Or was he confused by my face twisted with rage? <laughs> A vet, you say? My dad also fought in the war. In Afghan. And yours? Mine too. Oh really, and what force did he serve in? I stumbled, fear trumped with my rage throat, uh, my rage's throat and made it bleed. He's full of shit, Romka. Sure as fuck, eh? Did you think I'm easy to trick, bro? I want to skip through all their bullshit. I can see through your lies, little bitch. There's a nasty smile on his face. I'm just kick him in. Ah! 
This didn't bode well for me. Well, you've asked for this. A teacher saved you at school, but here. <laughs> You're fucked. That's right. Pretty they find your dead body come spring, eh? Oh my god. If you had only stayed silent, wouldn't have lost the hair. Listen here, you fuckboy. Hitting fatso is one thing. Give him a good pounding, Shoma. Did they just swap places like K-pop like K idols when they're dancing? <laughs> Did he like back up and then to the side? The delinquent closed his eyes, closed in on me again and I ended up in front of Semyon. Blood was pumping in my temples. Roma, please stop that we shut the... You've proved your point. Let us go. You can go anytime. And we'll take out the trash in the meantime. What bugged me at the moment wasn't even the humiliating attitude from Ronka, but, but rather how sweet Polina had addressed him. The yeah, yeah, it's so sus. The delinquents were pushing the girl towards the pines. Branches were swinging back and forth as if whispering something, giving me hope. I gritted my teeth, fighting the thought that I looked silly, and took a boxing stance I often saw in the movies. What are you, fucking Mike Tyson? It was my first ever fight. I remember for the rest of my life, if I don't kick the bucket, of course. At the edge of my vision, I noticed the darkness writhe again, as if someone was walking back and forth there. I sensed Roma's claws grab my backpack. <clears throat> Give me your shit, Antoshka. It'll get in the way. I was about to refuse, unwilling to cooperate with the bastard, but then he fished a butterfly knife out of his pocket with one smooth motion, spun it as if showing off, then put the blade to my neck. Really? Meanwhile, the police are like, did you find this missing kid? Did they wander into the woods? Like, bitch. Do your damn job. There's a vet's kid out here with a freaking butterfly knife. Hello? I let out a cloud of steam instead of words. Huh? Romka pulled with all his might and my backpack ended in his hands. Ah! Polina shrieked. Roma winked at her as if saying, don't worry, I've got this. Calm and relaxed. <laughs> An insidious smile on his face. He looked into my backpack. <laughs> are you hiding something from us? Some rat stole my school shoes. Опачки. And what's this? Romka gave me a dubious smile. Так, так. So what а do we have это? here? My tax and no notebooks fell in the snow. He was holding my backpack in one hand and something weird in the other. It looked like... Ah, a mask. Roma lifted it high as if showing it to someone else. To someone in the treetops, in the twilight among the trees. An old bunny mask. Long worn out ears, barely visible nose and whiskers, mangy fur on both sides. Where did it come from? Who put it there? <laughs> Samuel laughed. <laughs> it's way past New Year's, moron. <laughs> or are you really a loony? Eh? <laughs> it's not mine, eh? <laughs> How come it's not? It was in your backpack. Roma was watching the scene unfold with an evil smile on his face. Savages, is this the first time you see a mask? Girl, how long are you gonna put up with this acting? Ain't nobody else here but you, me, and these guys. As shitty as this? Yeah. You know what? Put it on. Why? Because I'm telling you to. You hop like a bunny for us. Yeah, come on. Or we'll leave you pantsless, eh? Not when Polina is here still. Stop it! To hell with this girl! I won't. Sioma, put it on him. B Biasha rushed to his friend's side and took the worn-out mask from him with a buff buffoonish bow. Is this like a like an Ultraman thing? Like, like it, is this like the mask? You know, if we put on the mask, do we change forms or like what? Then he passes to Samuel, who is already rubbing his hands in anticipation. I looked around the pine woods. 
as if waiting for help, as if the shadows that writhed around us would take pity on me and take my side. <laughs> Bro, yeah, is he gonna be like Jim Carrey with a green mask? Branches look like arms, twisting in unusual angles. Black and bark was their charred skin, and the darkness was the smoke they produced. I can't run. Won't get away, they'll catch me. And then, no, I won't run. Won't abandon Polina. To hell with him. Let me warn you, Shoma. If he won't hop, you'll take his place, got it? <gasps> this piece of shit won't. Just look at him, he's a total loony. This loony had already smacked you in the face. Hell yeah. Rob cuts me right. Come on, Fatso, assert your fucking dominance. He, he lets his friend call him Fatso. That's interesting. Listen, if you clap him once, you can clap him again. <gasps> oh, we'll make you hop so hard your pig's tits will fall off. Really? You want to hang out with these people? He must indeed be scared of Romka. Simeon swore silently and glared first at me, then at Polina. Here. It'll fit better this way. <laughs> he heard a huge ball of spit on the inside of the plastic bunny face and put it close to my... His spit looked like a squash spider. Ronka's face twisted. He spasmed like a beast. Like he wanted to tell Samin something, but then he suddenly stopped. Polina covered her face with her hands in terror. Samuel was still close by with a disgusting smirk on his face and a terrible smell coming from his mouth. Ugh. Put it on fast! Or you're dead. I'd rather die, bitch. The mask almost looked like even more disgusting now yet, despite everything. It felt like a chance for salvation. It could become my second skin. If only I was to put it on. If only my face was to touch this bumpy surface. I'm sure the fur will glitter. The ears will tremble like they're alive. I just need to put it on and Samuel and his friends will be gone forever. Oh no, please don't. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you guys are you guys really gonna put on or tell to f off? You guys want to put it on? Ew. We don't know if we're going to transform. We don't know. Look, there's a there's I'm covering it, but look, it's still there. Look, 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 look. Ew. It's right there. It's right there. The spit. Ugh. Just know that you have to put it on. Okay, that's nasty. Bro, I would rather die. <laughs> Bro, I would rather die. Common rider, bro. I'll let you vote. I'm gonna go take a quick toilet break. But first, we drink water. <laughs> Spit first to neutralize it and then wear the mask. 50 50? You guys are gross. 50% says to put it on. Alright, we'll take a quick toilet break. Just a quick one. I might just go grab a snack. Be right back. Keep voting.
<clears throat> We're back. What's everyone's favorite ice cream? Just wondering. Mint chocolate chip ice cream. And coconut ice cream. And strawberry ice cream. And vanilla ice cream. And green tea ice cream. And pistachio. And almond. <laughs> A lot of ice cream that is not overly sweet. Okay, guys. I'm back. I have gummy, sour gummy. Well, it's not that sour. It's more like a gummy... Worm, gummy worm, candy coated with sugar, question mark. And I have some toasted bread crackers with, with sugar. But I may not eat it because I have to read the dialogues. Okay, let's see what's the voting. Tell, tell him to F off, 57%. Strawberry ice cream is good. Matcha is good. And just a minute. Okay. Ayo ayo ayo. Jom gado. I'd rather die maidenless than live with spit. Me too. Me too. I don't know. This ew COVID. You know what I mean? Like eh. So I would tell him the F off too. Alright, 57%. It's actually a pretty close call. But yes, let's tell him the F off. Alright, guys. For some reason, Romka's disappointment with Semyon made me feel brave. <gasps> Something was wrong with their crew. Some old disagreement. <gasps> they have beef. Okay, they already have beef. That is not involving me. I should cut this old wound open. You know what, Samyon? My own voice, smooth and determined, was a, was a huge surprise. I stepped forward and calmly proclaimed, Fuck off. I felt like the whole world was paused for a second and then unpaused right away. Samyon's pupil widened. His pupils widened. The mask fell out of his meaty hands. It took a while to process my words, looking stunned, as if he was trying to solve a difficult math problem. But the answer he got made him mad, judging by the bulging veins on his forehead. Ew. The du -du -du ew, 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 don't show your teeth. The others just observed the scene silently, waiting for the inevitable payback. I noticed Polina's face stretch in horror. You, <laughs> ew, ew, he about to explode. You're dead! <gasps> Can he even reach me? Samuel launched at me like a hawk and clawed at my face with his twisted fingers with not fingernails. Ew. <laughs> I threw a kick towards the layer of fat under the coat. Duh, oh, oh, her lips twitched for a second. Yes, get him! At the same time, the world became fuzzy. The black trees and the faces of my classmates all blurred. My glasses. What, you can't see anything without them, sucker? He threw up his hand that was holding my glasses towards the sky so I couldn't get top him. Give it back, give it back right! Oh! I was interrupted by a leaden f fist with a sharp signal that hit me in the brow, producing a cracking sound, throwing me to the frozen earth. Oh boy. A circle of blurry faces dying from disgusting laughter was mocking me, making me want to puke. But as long as I was almost able to catch my breath, a blurry figure rushed towards me. Instead of a new hit, I was offered an outreach hand. I immediately grabbed it, hoping it was Polina, but then I realized soon how wrong I was. After I felt the sting of dry blisters on the palm. Ew! <laughs> it was Romka. He helped me stand up. Can't see anything, for reals? 
His voice sounded compassionate, which surprised me. I squinted, trying to find Polina in the fog before my eyes. She was gathering my things and putting them into my school bag. And what about your hearing? Huh? He leaned in close and asked with a voice that was way less friendly. Can you hear me fine, Antoshka? Yeah, I blinked in bewilderment. Well, then listen closely. He brushed off my coat and then hit me in the jaw with all his might. Oh! Wow, my jaw clicked. If my tongue was between my teeth at the time, I would not only be blind, but I would also talk worse than Biasha. I staggered. The world around me spun like a peg top again. Ramka held me by the elbow, preventing me from falling over. Yusha locked her in his arms, preventing her from running to my side. Consider this a warning. If I ever see you anywhere near Perlina, not even, wait, even a meter close, I won't let it slide. Got it? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Polina. Oh my gosh, his fist landed on my temple. Polina, you did not say you have a boyfriend. The world t turned upside down. Shh. It felt like I was falling into the sky, the color of decaying meat. I grabbed the roots to stop myself from tumbling more. My consciousness was drifting up top of the abyss, gliding to its depths like a deflated balloon. I tried to get up. A blurry, blurry silhouette that probably belonged to Polina was fighting back, but the two others held her by the hands, dragged her away. They could be related. We'll take you home, don't be scared, eh? Yeah, who knows what kind of psychos roam this forest. And Tosha here should rest for a bit. Polina! Ramka's boot met with, with my face. Oh! If my kid was beaten up like this, I will kill the other kids. I would be like, bro. First off, I would clap their parents. And I'll be like, the fuck? First of all, your grandparents never educate you. Is that why you don't know how to educate your children? Also, then I clap her children. And I'll be like, this is how you teach your kids. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hashtag extreme. <laughs> no, I'm just in the moment. Okay. Damn. My hands got twisted and the back of my head hit the ice. <gasps> my eyes obediently rolled over. Brr. Darkness jumped out, took a stance. Brr. Just nuke their place? You mean like, <coughs> allegedly, <coughs> sorry, just to devour me. Allegedly, allegedly. <sighs> Semyon slowly backed off, giving me an opportunity to stand up. I turned around, dug my nose into the bedsheets, forced my eyes open with great difficulty. Paintings on the walls, books, a pile of magazines, comic magazines. I felt on my chin, afraid that it would respond with sharp pain. My fingers slid across my face, across my face to my temples. No bumps, no pain. <gasps> He's a miracle child. I sat up, blinking in surprise, fixed my glasses. Studied my hands, clean, without any mud under the nails. He dreamt of it? My school bag was reclined against the table. I heard bits and pieces of the conversation through the door. Eh? Eh? I was at home, in my bedroom. Did I get here myself? What about the glasses? Did Semyon return him? Polina? Maybe? Or an unknown friend? Did it never happen? I decided to leave that question for later and looked out the window. The forest had many secrets and it wasn't in a hurry to reveal them to me. Eh? The clock on a nightstand showed me 10 a.m. The sun was already above the field, but it didn't bring any warmth. A thicket moaned from its cracking bones. Okay, what else can we do? We can only open the door. What? Did the time travel? Question mark? <laughs> What? I went out into the hallway and the conversation became clearer. Laughter. I haven't heard mom laugh in so long. Is this a dream? In a silent house among the sneaking shadows. <laughs> Such an ordinary but dear laughter. I sneak through the ladder to the lower floor as if afraid to spoil that moment. <laughs> Hi, Panda Hello. 
And then I asked him, "Do you have any comics? I want to buy some for my bunny." And then he goes, "Your rabbit reads comics." Mom burst out laughing. Olya followed suit, sweet suit. <laughs> well, yeah, I tell him my bunny is well trained. Gosh, you're the best. Hello, welcome. Thank you, Itokun, for six ringgit super chat. Do it, Raya. Ha ha ha. Thank God. Thank you very much. Thank you for the super chat. Mom said, "Gosh, you're the best." Sip. <laughs> Did you doubt me? Not even for a second. Mom, mom, and dad sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. Bro, when I entered the kitchen, mom was kissing dad on the forehead, and he was gently stroking her shoulder. <gasps> Olya sat between our parents, armed with a fork. A polka dotted cooking pot emanated a pleasant aroma, even the lid, even the lid was. Ah, вот и он. Here he is. Привет, Соня. Весь в отца. Wait, what? Is this the pot of food cooked by the rabbit? Hey there, sleepyhead. Took after your father and dad. The white canvas of a frosted window behind mom's back made it look like she was on someone's painting. Садись, садись. В ногах правды нет. Come on, sit down. Take a load off your feet. А завтрак самое важное для здорового человека. Breakfast is the most important thing for any healthy person. I sat down, a charming smile on my lips. Oh, Olya winked at me, and the lamp on the table flickered in unison with her. Заспанный какой? He looks so sleepy. Какой есть наш родной? Did he just call me? He just called me какой какой есть. The most kakoi, kakoi. Thank you. That is me. He's gonna wake up any moment now. Yeah, I feel like this is this is probably a dream or something. Well, what can you do? He's our child. It's already too late to hand him over to an orphanage, bro. <laughs> Dad laughed out a dry laugh to show that he was joking. Mom slapped him on the shoulder. I'm so hungry. Do you think they're the only person who's dripping saliva over here? Братик, ты так кушать будешь? Big bro, will you eat like this? Как? How? I caught the sparkling gazes of my parents on myself. If I had a camera at that moment, I would have taken a snap so I could always look at those smiles on the photograph. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted this beautiful moment to last forever. Ah, oh, the light bulb went out and then came back. The window glass shredded slightly. Снимi маска, сынок. Есть же неудобно. Take the mask off, son. It'll get in the way of eating. Какую маску? What mask? A silly smile got stuck on my face. That showed me his sturdy white teeth that looked like piano keys. Снимай, снимай, заяц. Come on, take it off, bunny. <laughs> I slid my hand across my cheek. Let out a laugh. What do you mean? <laughs> the whole family was was laughing now, pointing their fingers at me and slapping their knees at the table and the tablecloth. Dad wiped his wet eyes with his knuckles. Oh, he's missing the nas. No, молодец. Well, good job making us laugh, son. <laughs> А теперь маску сними, будь добр. Now take off your mask, please. I tur I touched my face again. My skin went numb. Но на мне нет маски. But I'm not wearing a mask. Mom fidgeted on her chair. She tilted her head and squinted. The canvas behind her back turned gray and kept getting darker with every passing moment. Но я не могу уже терпеть. I can't wait anymore. Сними маску, не валяй, дурака. Take off the mask. Stop fooling around. His voice was kind but firm. Mom, Tosha is scaring me. Chair legs scraped against the floorboards. Olya moved away from me. She wasn't smiling anymore. Actually, there wasn't a single smile left in the room, if you don't count the, the cracks in the walls. Что ты наделал? Твоя сестра плачет. What have you done? You made your sister cry. No. But Olya sobbed, her eyes downcast, sneaking fearful glances at me. Mom slammed her fist on the table and almost fell to the floor along with the chair. 
сын называется. О! Мы веселились. А тут ты пришел. Испортил все. She looks like it. The clown from it. What disgrace of a son. We were all having fun and then you came around and ruined everything. Splashes of saliva flew at me. Oh, Taskaru, mama. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. He derped. I turned to dad, begging him to explain what was going on. Eh? Sticky syrup tricked down dad's beard. Falling on his shirt. His eyes were looking in different directions. <gasps> Guys, these might not be our family. Oh my god! There was a loud sound in the attic. Water pipes grumbled. The house was alive. Every room had someone rustling, moving around, breathing in it. The light bulb started flickering. Like a stroboscope. <laughs> the faces of my parents disappeared into the darkness, only to appear again moments later. Outside, a tall shadow walked past the window. I was able to jump up and run away, but my bo body wasn't listening to my commands. My hands just obediently stayed on the table. I was just an onlooker. The lights went out. I spent three heartbeats in complete darkness. Guys? Oh. Then the bulb flashed with blinding light. The three masks were looking at me with their gaping eyes. A fox woman, where my mom was just a moment ago. A wolf man at the head of the table. A bunny girl, my Olia. I couldn't even ask why they put on these strange and scary animal faces. And why the fur on them was moving as if there's something writhing inside the masks, making the papier, papier mache bulge. My tongue didn't listen to the commands my brand sent to it. I could only shift my gaze between the masks, watching the long twisted shadows behind the backs of their, my family. She tore the lid she tore off the lid from the pot. A cut off head was lying on a bloody gravy. A pair of glazed eyes was drilling me from inside the pot. Its mouth was open from a silent scream. <gasps> The head at the bottom of the pot belonged to me. Blood ran down the ag agonizing face of the cutoff head. At the same time, something hot started streaming from my nostrils. Scarlet drops falling on the tablecloth. Yes. Eat up! I screamed. Are we dead? I jumped up. My jaw was burning, as were my temples. The kitchen, the beasts in animal masks, and the dead head, everything had disappeared. Everything but the goddamn mask was haunting me. One of the delinquents put it on me for the laughs. Ew! I tore off the bunny face that has already stuck to my face, threw it into the darkness and realized I woke up near the crumbled snowman in the forest. Covered in snow and conf coniferous needles, without my glasses and with a smashed face. So I blacked out. Horrible. Oh man, pulsating pain seems like a gift compared to the horrors I just witnessed. I stood up, spitting out blood. The forest seemed like a prison that was keeping me in its wooden bars. I didn't know how long I was out. My limbs were numb from the cold, my, parent, my pants were soaking wet. I stood alone in a ring of towering trunks, trunks not being able to see anything. Everything around me moved, trembled, my ears went numb from all the rustling. The treetops melted into the darkness of the cosmos. The bushes became empty cells whose occupants were suddenly set free. It felt like a clawed fang could fly out in the darkness at my stunned face at any moment. I heard, I heard a scream somewhere far away. Anton! Anton! Someone was looking for me, just like that boy who went missing. Tears stung my eyes, a big drop fell from my lashes. Anton! Anton, the screen was closer now, and for a moment I believed that I was about to be saved. I'm here! 
the light hit my face and I covered it with my hand. Flashlight's ray slid down. Anton, what are you doing? Anton, there you are. Are you out of your mind? What's this all about? My dad walked out from the shadows. I went towards him, hoping that he won't melt. That he's not another trick that my insane mind played on me. He turned out to be real, warm, and alive. Cat got your tongue? I met a girl from your class. She said... Branches cracked in the distance. I pressed myself into my father's chest, engulfed by fear, and he started looking around, alerted. Spoke in a tone that was much more nervous. Okay, let's get out of here. If your mother learns of this, she'll be so mad at us and will never forget this day. First of all, what do you mean, is he out of his mind? Just look at his face. Your kid just got bullied. Do not blame your kid. I reached out for my father, still feeling the chilling embrace of fear. I grabbed his firm hand, felt his quick pulse with my fingertips. Then stood up, wobbled along behind my father, following his barely discernible footprints. Back to civilization, back to light, back to the road where my father parked his car. And not a word about this at home, got it? Ah, oh, that's poor parenting. Don't even hint at where I found you. Alright dad, oh come on. He was holding my hand as if it was the most precious thing in the world and kept telling me how afraid he is to lose me or Olia. I nodded and moved my legs. Only when we got to the car, Dad noticed my scratches. Somebody hurt you? I felt out my cheek. I got into a fight. Over what? A girl. Bro, what? His father nodded. Dad replied with a thoughtful nod. Dad was like, mm-hmm, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> he said over what? A girl? Mm-hmm, that's my boy. <laughs> Bro. Really, Dad? Really? <laughs> I heard the low hum of the engine, bro. He's proud? Oh my gosh. He knows he's a winning son. That wore a fearful expression. It wasn't that sticky fear that paralyzed me in the nightmare, though. His fear was noble, like crystal clear diamond. He opened a glove box and got some napkins out of there. <laughs> Fighting for the girl you like is right, bruh. <laughs> yes, normally you try to resolve things with words, it's just sometimes words don't work. That flashed an encouraging smile at me, bro. Oh, right as he was about to close the glove box, I noticed the handle peeking from the from under of a rug. From the under of a rug, what? He was carrying a gun around. My dad, a true intellectual, had a pistol with him, like an action movie hero. Oh, child, don't even. Or like an ordinary thug. Some voice whispered to me. Pines were flying by in the window. Car, the car's light was struggle against the darkness. It really is simp to simp communication. Literally, this just a simp conversation in a car. The car carried my back home. Dad was cautiously studying me in the back mirror. I was thinking about the gun, about my dreams, about people in masks that pretended to meet my parents. Uh, bro. Bro, 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 bro. I love the animation. It's so simple but so nice. And the white snowflakes just kept dancing in the starry, starry sky. Oh lord. Look what the cat dragged in. Mom was going down the stairs, piercing dad with her trademark lair. Her face showed something between wraith, wrath and condensation. <clears throat> Con con condescen condescension? <laughs> Suddenly her gaze shifted to me and stayed for a dangerously long time. You lost your glasses. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's this? Where are your glasses, Anton? Did you lose them? This dummy probably just forgot them at school. A venomous pause followed. He's your son, alright, bruh. 
Dad glared at mom and then mischievously winked at me, reminding me of our deal. Ну ничего, есть же запасные. Проживем как-нибудь. Where we have spare glasses, so we'll manage somehow. See, Dad, you, you can't hide things from your wife. This is why y'all have problems. You know what I mean? But Dad stood in silence a bit longer. Then both of them went to mind their own business. Really? The boy must have had bruises, swollen cheek, forehead. I don't know. He was punched with a ring. Alia threw herself into my arms before I could even take off my coat. I saw a fox! Surprise akin to a shotgun blast. I could only flap my lips in reply. A cup shattered into many little pieces with a loud thang. My mom let it fall my mom let it fall from her hands. Her face was pale and her eyes were glued to the ground. This pause, just a split second, felt like an eternity. Then my mom spoke with disappointment. First it was an owl. Now it's a fox. Will you ever get tired of this? But it's, but it's true. She was so fluffy. She stood on her back legs, near the edge, just like a, just like a person. The fox called my name, but then mom came and she fled. There was no fox. Stop making things up. Don't go near her. If it was necessary, I was ready to shake my sister as if she was a doll made of cloth. What's wrong, Tosha? Don't go, you hear me? Mom entered the hallway and gave me a surprised look. I hesitated. Well, a, well, a fox will bite you. I remember fairy tales where foxes used to kidnap children. I imagined Elisa, liberated carnivorous, running through the for night forest with a dangling sack in her hands. It wasn't a real fox. Tell him, Olya. She stood on two legs and she wore a dress. Yes, I dropped my cup because my daughter thinks she saw a fox. I know, right? Mom is so dramatic. Like, Mom, we are broke. How many cups can we sacrifice? We probably only have that last cup in the house. And she was real. See? Mom showed us a tired smile as if it was the only explanation needed. I also forced myself to smile. My smile was like a thin piece of soap right before it dissolved completely on your palm. But when I realized I was left alone with my sister, I whispered, If you see her again, run. Are we going to be blind for the whole game? Memories about my family in disgusting masks attacked, bombarded me like the underhanded blows of my classmates. The furry faces of my family stood before my eyes, their toothy mouths, full of thick saliva. What's happening to me? What kind of tricks is my mind playing on me? The bunny mask was real. It just appeared in my school bag out of nowhere, as if I never threw it away in the forest. I shut my eyes and threw the vitamins in my mouth, washed them down with water. Please, stop driving me mad. Please. I barely managed to force myself to do homework, but those math problems just refused, just refused to be solved. Numbers in my notebook tumbled around and mixed in a whirling dance, sometimes running over the lines. My head became heavy from that pandemonium and I almost dropped it into the chain of numbers. My eyelids felt like there were tiny weights tied to them, the type used in grocery stores. At the right moment, I surrendered and closed my notebook. The memories of my day started flashing before my eyes. I was in the middle of the stuffy school corridor. I could see the literature classroom from here, the faces of dead classical writers on their portraits, the prim and regal pose of our homeroom teacher Lilia Pav Pavlovna, Pavlovna. And around the corner was her daughter Katya, a snitch and a gossip eagerly waiting for me. Hey, novinki. Hey transfer student, transfer student. What do you want Katya? She got on her tiptoes and started swaying while her hands behind her back, then she asked me with a smick Fixed smile on her face. 
Скажи, пожалуйста, а чего это тебя к нам перевели? А? Can I ask you something? Why did you get transferred here? I might have told the truth about this to Polina. But Katya will sell it on the market for three kopekas. It would just be the same as printing out all my thoughts and hanging them near Vova's picture for everyone to see. Brr. So I've reverted to an answer I knew by heart. It's all because of my parents. Dad has a new job here and my mom... My mom... Katya didn't even listen to me. Just rushed towards the perky. The perked up ears of her friends whispered something while stealing glances at me, giggling. Yeah, right. He takes all of us for fools. I heard it's all because of his father. He crossed the road of some big shot and now their family is hiding in our remote little village. Hmm. That's not true, you're lying. And did you hear? Did you hear how Baburin beat him up? Oh my lord, this is like a horror movie. All he could do was look all pathetic and take it. Stop it, you know he wasn't alone. And if that wasn't enough... Что это чудик повсюду таскает с собой зайчью маску. There are rumors that this weirdo carries a bunny mask with him wherever he goes. Ой, девочки, ну кто же в своем уме будет такое делать? Who in their right minds would do something like that, huh, girls? Ясно, понятно. Со странностями наша Антошка. Ah, I see. Our Tashka must be truly special. Может, слаба умный, а может... Maybe he's an artist, but what if he's a serial killer? Oh, children. Y'all, oh, uh, bruh. Y'all, uh, don't y'all got better things to do like Maple Story? <laughs> Uno? Maybe Monopoly? I don't know. K pop? <laughs> if you're in K pop fandoms, you ain't got time to gossip about your classmates, okay? You're like, oh my god, BTS on par. You know, my Jamin looking so hot yesterday, like, eh. You won't have time, you won't have time to be bullying other people in school, okay? I'm just saying. Like, oh my god, the anime looks so good yesterday. You know, like, he looked like, what's his name? Naruto looks so hot, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be like, ain't nobody got time for this. I'm sure you'll be able to find an axe in his backpack if you look hard enough or something even worse. Da, da, da. Yes, yes, yes. Small cheese, Zatknis! Yeah, small cheese, shut up, small cheese. Ha, look at him scream as if something bit him. His pupils, look at how wide they are. I hope he won't go insane and resort to violence again. How does she know? I mean, there must be a reason his mom always feeds him those peels, right? I just stood there in confusion, trying to vain how, understand how she found out about my medicine. And what scared me even more was the possibility that her nonsense had some truth mixed in. Yes, that's right. <gasps> you don't talk about my sister. He's as insane as his little sister. Oh, she got some good sources. Where's she hearing these from? Did my mom snitch on us? Maybe our mom exposed us. Can you imagine that she says a human-sized owl visited, visited her every night? But not a single healthy person has seen it. And this simpleton believes her. Girl, I hope you die to it. Can you imagine that? Girl, just wait. It will come and swoop, swoop, swoop down into your window and you're gonna be dead. I'm telling you. Don't laugh at it, okay? It's like it's like going into a haunted house and saying ghosts don't exist. Bro, I'm telling you. That's that's horrible. Okay. Probably the mom snitch on Katya's mom since she's a teacher, bro. 
Mom, you don't gotta talk so damn much. And I caught a single kind look from the smirking crowd. <sighs> Girl, you so fake, bro. Girl, you so fake, bro. How can it be, Antoine? Are you really? Are you unwell? So what? Polina, Polina please listen to me. Yeah, right. Don't listen to this liar, Polinochka. He's probably never even been to Moscow. This loser can't even stand up for himself. And he won't even be able to defend you, even if it comes down to it. He'll run away to protect his own skin. This is all in his dream, right? Because clearly she was there when it happened and we were trying to stand up for ourselves. Weakling. <gasps> Okay, goodbye, heathen. Okay, leave. <laughs> Polina, that's right. You know what? It's all true. Now walk away. We never speak ever again. <laughs> Polina, I don't need you no more. Okay. Polina slouched as if someone kicked her in the stomach and then burst out in tears and fell to the dirty floor wailing and screaming. Oh my gosh, she's so dramatic. Oh, bro. <laughs> no, no. Oh my gosh, she's so dramatic. I just... I. You don't even know me, girl. This is our first time meeting. <laughs> she acted like she's marrying someone and then finding out he's another person. What? Why, Antoine? Why? I couldn't understand her reaction, but I still rushed to Polina's side before getting sh shoved violently by Katya. She's so dramatic. <laughs> That's too much. It's like those... You know what this reminds me of? Like a... Like if you watch football and people dive, is that what it's called? Diving? People dive? Like they pretend to be hit by the ball and they do some extra rolls? It, it reminds me of this. Like, come on. Come on, girl. <laughs> really? Just because he has to take pills? I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't understand the reaction. Oh, okay, breath. Get your paws off her, you monster. Oh, 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 this is the meme. This is the meme. You better clutch your hand. Rage was building up under the veil of my fear. Oh, let's go! <laughs> it slowly rose from the cloudy mist. I felt my upper lip lift creep up, showing my teeth. What? What? My fists became hammers, and I couldn't unclench them. Nobody can speak about my family like that. I came to my senses when I already lunged at the angry Katya. Uh-huh, he went nuts, nuts. Bro, these kids need to go see somebody. They need to take pills. When you're this young and you're showing sociopathic tendencies, Especially one of them gets excited when she sees a dog get kicked. That is like, that is like serial killer 101. When they're kids and they enjoy seeing animals get tortured, serial killer 101. I'm, I'm calling it out right now for sure. Okay, hands down. That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. Oh my lord. At the same time, the crowd around her became louder. It started whistling and roaring and growing. Oh my god. The subtle silhouettes of my schoolmates become larger, wider. They shot upwards towards the ceiling, turning into giant black forces, chock full of toothy faces. I shrank to a tiny ball of fur and started shaking in fear before the might of ulcer-ridden trunks that belonged to trees or humans. It was impossible to tell. So you finally shown your animal nature. Truth. Coward, oh my lord. Art? Katja's face was twisted with jubilation and ecstasy. And Antoine, get, get out of here, girl. Why no? What 
did you do this to me? You act like we've been dating for like two years, girl. <laughs> Polina screamed while choking on her tears. He is just an animal, an outsider. A scary flapping of wings came from the forest. A pair of giant white ears descended somewhere from above and I dug myself into them. Anton! Anton, Anton, please, wake up! I jumped up, almost falling out of bed. Apparently I was thrashing around for hours on the sweat-soaked sheets. Not again. Olia, not again. Olia's scream pulled me out, set me free from the tentacles of fear. That is not her. You will not get me. Not again. Please, oh come on. This is sus. This is sus. This is sus. She already did this once. It can't be her. This this gotta be somebody else. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my lord. Wake up, wake up. Uh uh. <clears throat> Took my eyes a while to focus on the silhouette near the window. Olya's voice was distant, my head still ringing after the fight. Sounds got distorted, as if my ears were stuffed with cotton. <laughs> my sister, as distressed as ever, just kept on repeating the same phrase. The owl, the owl, please. I'm scared. Well then stop going behind the, the window. Stop going behind the curtains. Her tears poured on my heart like boiling water, but I was almost thankful for the owl's appearance. Otherwise, this scared Olia wouldn't have woken me up. Wait a second, Olia? Want me to read Morzilka for you? Morzilka, a Soviet and Russian monthly illustrated magazine for kids. It's been published since 1924. The magazine uses an unidentified yellow creature wearing a scarf and a red beret as its mascot. Writers like Samuel Marshak and Agnia Barto contributed to the magazine early in their careers. Oh. Give me. I placed my bare heels on the cold floor, felt around for my glasses. Remember Semyon, his underhand... Un his underhanded act and sigh. Anton! Please, please! Look! She couldn't tear her eyes off the window. It was as if it was a staring contest. I found the light switch with my hand. The lamp poured bright, uh, bright light all over me. I got up. My vision fooled me, moving the window closer only to push it farther the next moment. My sister wasn't just a blurry spot. I took a hesitant step forward. Olia? What's there? What happened? Do you want me to open a curtain? She's behind the curtains for some weird reason in the middle of the night. Oh, her voice came from the left side. No, please don't. The owl is there. Her, the voice was coming from behind. Oh. I turned around and froze from terror. <gasps> guys, 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 guys. <laughs> Macam potong. It looks like a potong, brr. Teary eyed Olia stood in the hallway. Who. Who were you talking to right now? She stared at me with eyes that were red from crying. With her, heart, with her hands wrapped around her shoulders, her voice was nervous as if she was afraid to hear my answer. I was talking to you, to someone who pretended to be you. The ledge outside my windows creaked ominously as if something huge was sitting on top of it. And the thing that pretended to be Olia started spreading, changing shapes, grow to scary heights under the light of a carnivorous moon. Anton, please, come closer, come here. The voice didn't belong to my sister anymore. The thing that was hiding behind my curtains got tired of pretending, making me look like a fool. 
I pinched myself as hard as I could, hoping that the silhouette near the window was just a continuation of my nightmare, a hallucination brought upon by the cursed house. And those don't bite, do they? The silhouette was towering before me under the veil of mist. I heard only a shrill scream when someone had knocked on the window. <laughs> It came to get us. Another knock. I stepped back into the middle of the room, as if there existed as if, as if existed nooks where I could hide from this horror. The sound was sharp, metallic. The lamp started shimmering. Then it suddenly lightened the hole and went out, like a candle under a strong wind. The filament inside it snapped with a ringing sound. <coughs> guys, it today is the day we die, guys. <laughs> guys, the darkness that was waiting for that exact moment poured from all the angles and enveloped me. There was only this window left in the whole universe. Moonlight poured through it, painting everything of the color of the color of bones that were exhumed from a crypt. <laughs> Olia started squealing and pressed herself into my back, seeking protection. <gasps> and then an eye, burning with carnivorous fire, stared at us from the window. Are you you telling me that it can't break through glass? Never mind. No, it wasn't trying to break the window. Ah, okay. It was toying with us. So if we open a curtain just to stare at it, what would it do? Because we're not opening the window, right? It just kept on knocking, driving us mad. As if a giant clock was measuring the time left for us, its, pendem its pendulum swinging above the abyss. She was screaming in desperation, her hands clutching my arm like a pair of pincers. Come closer. I could barely make out a pair of wings that spread out above the black spot. Tell her, Antoine. Tell her that I won't be a bad girl anymore. Never ever. I just wanted to leave. Please. The moonlight suddenly disappeared, and the room descended into darkness. We couldn't see the burning eye anymore. I swallowed out the stingy lump that was stuck in my throat. I stepped towards the curtain, and tranced by the call of this disfigured guest. Only I was standing behind me, mumbling, "I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be good." The bleak window was creeping closer. Curtains rustled. I reached out to move them aside, so I could look my fear in the eye. At that moment, I hear noises coming from our parents' bedroom. Without thinking, I pulled the curtain to the side in one swing. Nothing, though there was something shining on the ledge, among the scaffed feathers. My glasses. Oh, thank you. The ones that Samian took for me. Okay, maybe they're friends. How did they get here? Was that a gift from the gurgling knight, or did that owl really bring them here? I looked at the front yard, at the foreboding clearing, at the toothy forest. Not a soul, not a single trace of our late night guest. <gasps> Only the old lamppost, dreaming like like a lone watchman among the snowy desert. The dry window frame creaked. I tore away the insulation tape and the stipes of glued newspapers. Window insulation. Before plastic windows became widely accessible in Russia, the cracks in frames of wooden windows were filled with cotton or pieces of cloth, and sealed with self-adhesive tapes or strips of newspapers soaked in soapy water to conserve heat in winter. Makes sense. I have a theory. Hoku Delivery Service. I have a theory. Olya said, "Tell her I won't be a bad girl anymore. Tell her I'm sorry. I won't be a bad girl anymore." And she was trying to like, yoohoo, special delivery. Here are your glasses, cause I'm not gonna pay for them. Is this mom? Could this be mom? It's kind of sus. You know what I mean? It's kind of sus. No spoilers if you know it, but I'm just coming up with a theory. Could this be mama? You know what I mean? She's like, I want to look for your glasses. You know what I mean? Hmm. Anyways, moving on. <clears throat> Opened the window with big trouble. Frost pinned me with its little needles. 
The painting on my walls moved from the draft. It, I touched my glasses. Sure, they would melt in my hands, but they were real. My brain was scrambling for an explanation. Semyon and his gang just pulled a prank on me. That was it. That's it. A smooth white blanket was glittering under the street lamp just outside our, guard, our yard. If anybody wished to get close to the house to climb the pipe to the ledge of my window, they would surely leave footprints. But they were not. I cautiously took my glasses. My wrist was still intact. Nobody pulled me into the darkness, full of restless writhing. Why aren't you in bed? I swayed from surprise and almost fell out of the window. Are you out of your mind? Did it feel hot in here? Do you want to catch a cold? The owl was here. Tosha chased it away. Go to your room immediately and get in your bed. Imagine if your mother was the reason of your sanity. Hmm. <laughs> but then she's telling you like, it doesn't exist, child. But then you're like, bro, it was you, bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think she would go all the way because he heard noises coming from his parents' room. You know what I mean? I don't know. The timing was a bit sus. Hasta boy. And you... <sighs> Mom paused, directing her seething eyes at me. She was thinking of a punishment equivalent to my crime. In the end, she just waved her hand and took Alia by the shoulder and left, throwing gloomy words on my way. We'll talk tomorrow. See, she was intentionally trying to give it to me, right? But then she's like, I can't blame him for picking his glasses up because I tried to knock on his window. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Anyways, theory, theory, conspiracy theory. I managed to get the frame back in place with a couple of hits, pressed in the latch latches with all the strength my fingers could muster. The cold left the room, but the fear was still present. Oh, let's go. I placed my glasses on my nose and started studying my reflection in the window. It didn't look like a face, more like a death mask. Just like the one worn by the boy on the, from the notice board. That night, I was on the ledge of joining him there. A black and white face was staring at me through the clearing between student heads. Eh? And it wasn't Volva. His face was right beside it. I recognized the fat cheeks, the damaged skin. <gasps> Guys. Samuel Baburin, 13 years old. They're only 12 years old, huh? Grade 6. He left for school in the morning, January 16, never returned. 155 to 160 cm. <gasps> He's like my height. For sixth grade? He's like my height. Bruh. Bruh. What are children eating? <laughs> Bruh. What? What? What milk y'all be drinking up in Russia? <laughs> Anyways, he's wearing a dark brown shippy's coat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alaska boots. Please call this number. Samyon. He's missing. We don't know if he's dead, but he's missing. Karma, bitch! Baburin's photo was printed out and placed under the glass like an exhibition piece. But I still feel bad, you know what I mean? <gasps> Episode 3, on end, the wolf's grey fur will stand. He's still... My right ear just had ASMR. Can I redo this? Oh no, that's auto. He's the one who hated Paparin. You think he did it? I've heard he's a weirdo. I hurriedly rubbed my glasses. The glasses! Samian was clutching them in his fist while I was getting beaten up. And in just a couple of hours, this lost item was lying on the edge of the ledge of my window, bruh. It was hard to imagine that Shoma suddenly got guilty conscious and returned my glasses in such a strange way. I was shocked but kept walking towards the classroom accompanied by nasty whispers all around me. That photo still stood before my eyes. Samyon had gone missing. Samyon is gone. His fat fingers will never get to my throat. His signet ring won't smash into my chin. He'll never humiliate me again. Wasn't that what I wished for? On the other hand, did I really wish Samian to become a murky stain on the notice board? 
he was still someone's son or a grandson. And he went through the same struggles as me. Mm -hmm. Did I really wish for my unseen companion to dispatch him in such a brutal fashion? Samyon Nara, let's go! Samyon Nara, the Valley Girls next. I didn't know the answer, or I was just scared of it. Nonetheless, school still had something nice about it. Polina, the girl with violin, was like a mountain spring. Well, like well water that you gulp down, pressing your lips against the zinc outer ring of a bucket. Can't ever get enough. Enough with Polina. Leave her. Anybody who has no sympathy against animals, leave them. You know what I mean? That was a small ass puppy that got kicked and she smiled. I'm like, that's if that's not a red flag, that's that's like, I don't know, that's like sirens just screaming in your face and you're not taking it. <laughs> bro, Izu, bro. Send me off now. Oh my god. <laughs> Send me on? No, send me off, yes. Remember our walk yesterday cooled my head. Oh, remember our... Okay. Her hatred towards dogs, while understandable, was still alarming. Indeed! Would a charming girl like her really be nestling something so repulsive inside her heart? Well, she smiled. I immediately remember my dad's shady past that recently resurfaced. A person I idolized was the reason for us moving to this bleak countryside. At least it was according to mom's scream that were coming from the other side of the wall. Still... Polina tried to defend me from a delu delinquent gang, even if she failed at it. What if she's dating the dude, though? What if she's dating the dude, you still think she's gorgeous? No, I'll just walk away, dude. She's pleading for Romka to leave me alone and gather my belongings that were strewn around the forest while fighting tears. And when those bastards tried to drag her away, she resisted with all her might that she had in her fragile body. Maybe it's not her first time doing it, you dumbass. In the end, she was the one to find my house, lost among the taiga, and told my dad that I lied there alone in the dark, abandoned in the middle of the forest after the beating. I don't think it was her. Maybe I'm being too harsh on her. I don't think it's what it was her. I don't think it was her at all. Maybe it was Alicia. Is that her name? Alicia? Alina? What's her name? Elisha? She not breaking down now? She was really dramatic in his dream. But yeah, I think that's how he saw her. Like a drama queen, like a weak, just, oh my god, how did you, kind of girl. <laughs> what if I make her one of the characters in the story I draw? The protagonist will save her from those terrifying monsters. Elisa, okay, sorry. <laughs> Maybe it was Elisa. Oh no, look, they're, they're here. As soon as I thought of monsters, a bunch of my classmates slipped down the rail, smirking like the xenomorphs from the alien. I immediately felt larvae of fear writhe in my stomach. I didn't want to cross paths with Ramka and Byasha after what happened yesterday, especially since Samyon suddenly went missing. Mm. Polina seemed eager to talk to me, but her expression soured after noticing the aforementioned duo, and she walked past, leaving me a single sorry look. Apology not accepted. <laughs> Warehouse rat is so determined. He said, ask Polina how the bully tasted when she ate him. <laughs> Probably disgusting. I entered the classroom and went with towards the last row. All the chatter suddenly died down, so I walked there in complete silence. I felt like my classmate pushed and poked me with their stares. They carefully observed my every move. They looked at me with mortifying mix of pity, ridicule, and derision. Like a scientist looks at an ugly representative of a newfound species of worm, bro. I stared at the desk with a huge pile of library textbooks on top of my fists, clenched. It felt like I was the one who disappeared in the snowy forest and my desk was finally used for something worthwhile. Samyon's empty chair stood in front of my in front of me. The chair that once belonged to Vova was gathering dust somewhere in another classroom. Ooh, what can we do? We could sit down, and that's the only thing. Right? 
We can look at stuff. I looked at portraits of classical writers. My eyes stopped on Essenin's photo. Last year, I was tasked with learning any poem, and Dad suggested I learn one of one about the dog Jim, written by Essenin. I don't remember all the stanzas by now, but the last one was somehow deeply ingrained in my memory. I'm sure she'll come here in my absence. Please catch her eye. Go kiss her hand for me, for all my real or fancied errors. Asking forgiveness of her and humility. That sounds like a dude who couldn't get a girl and is sending somebody else to go get a girl. What? An old cheap slide projector. I called this model a tank because it looked like one. There was a time when I had a lot of cool fairy tales that we used to watch with Dad in complete darkness. I remember Little Raccoon and One Who Sits in a Pond, Kipling's Mowgli, and many others. I was immediately swept away by the moon, by the memory of projector's hum of his hot cat casing and his bright rays hitting the wall, turning it into a screen. I think a lot of you kids don't know what the heck this thing is. It's a pity that the school slides were mostly about minerals and PSAs. There's one more here. Every boy my age knew I had something like this in this arsenal. Powder, powder firecrackers that blow up with a very loud sound, especially inside an arch archway. It is said that they are produced in China and that a single one of them can blow your fingers off if you light it up and clutch it in your hand. Oh yeah, that happens, huh? Especially the black corsair type. They won't be enough to blow up plastic soldiers, but when it comes to stuff made of plaster, they should work. Bro. Yeah, that's all. We have to sit down. Not accepting. Sorry, girl. Uh-huh. After a moment of hesitation, I sat down at Baburin's desk. The place where I was supposed to be assigned by Lilia Povlana at first. The chatter resumed as if someone un had just unpaused the movie. A girl, would you ever shut up? Baburin's grandma made such a fuss when she, when he didn't return home. First she ran to the school, then called the cops. Yes, yes, yes. She sometimes looked too old for her age, but she is pretty. Katja snuck a cunning glance at me and then leaned into her neighbor and whispered something. Girls from the second row also leaned in. She shared something with them too, whispers, nods. I kept catching her stare on myself. Her neighbor stared too. The whole class was watching me. It felt as if it felt like they need they felt the need to watch me because they were searching for traces of blood on my on my fingers. Brr. Pretty annoying that is. Bootleg Elsa. She was like she was like if Elsa was like a, a bitchy girl and went to the countryside and gave birth to a heathen. This is what she'd be like. <clears throat> I wanted to defend myself and shout, Guys, listen, I'm innocent. I hate his hair, bro. The delinquents turned around and stared at me in silence. Their looks were dripping with menace. But why? Where's the violent girl, by the way? What did I do to them? Their friend went missing and they're still focused on me. Suddenly I noticed Biasha drilling a hole in my nose with his eyes. It felt like he was about to point his finger at me and shout to the top of his lungs. Everyone look, Baburin snatched his glasses yesterday and now he has them back. Murderer. But he remained silent as if there's nothing special about my glasses. <gasps> Guys, what if they moved not because of dad, was because of me. Maybe I was a serial killer, you know what I mean? But then we moved because, you know, to run away. Question mark? Right? Right? Maybe I subconsciously, without knowing, hurt people. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. I may be going mad, but I think Biasha knows something. He knows something, but he won't tell me what. Roma gave me a meaningful glance, as if reminding me of his promise. My aching temple reminded me of it. I need to stay away from Polina. As if looking for pr protection, I clutched the ruler until my hand hurt. <laughs> You don't have to be Colombo to solve this. Colombo, an American crime drama TV television series starring Peter Falk as Colombo, a homicide detective with the Los Angeles Police Department. Who held a grudge against Baburi? 
поиздевался, а после... Girl, first of all, did you just say pussy? That's a bad word. Do not say it. Bad on you. You get time out. Detention. Okay, and you sweep in the floor after this. Second of all, I thought he bullied a lot of people. We're not the only one, right? Hooked him yesterday, bullied him, and then... The metal ruler fell out of my weak fingers. It hit the floor with a jingle that made the other kids shudder. Catch a bitter tongue and squirm nervously. Chair scraped against the floor. My classmates moved away from me, closer to the exit, towards the teacher's desk. I was not the only one to catch wind of the change. Ramka and Biasha looked around and winced in contact. Too bad that they weren't afraid of me like everyone else. Shut it. Bro, I bet Baburin just got a whipping from his old hag and ran off. Finally, huh? They'll find him soon. They'll find him a rag. Oh my lord. In a ravine with his stomach cut open. She's saying such gruesome things? Naturally. <laughs> Allegedly, bro. Fancy. <laughs> oh my god. Imagine so Shoma on a blank, snowy blanket, his face white like fish belly, split down the middle by the crevice of his mouth. Snowflakes falling on his glassy eyes, filling up to his throat. See, I could almost hear his condescending tone. It's all your fault. <clears throat> but why was Samian the only one gets just des desserts for bullying me? Gets his just dessert. What? Weren't all of them supposed to disappear? Romka, Biasha, Katya, along with every laughing onlooker? Bro. Of course, Samian did me a favor by disappearing. Thanks to him, my classmates now stare at me in awe. But that was only one side of the coin. What if I have to repay that favor soon? Oh. The door creaked. Polina entered the classroom. Oh, there she is. I straightened up in a hurry so she wouldn't see me looking like a scared critter. Polina found me with her eyes, giving me a short nod and went to her seat. Katya rushed to her neighbor again like a lab rat that saw a treat and started whispering, switching her gaze between me and Polina. Bro, what? Messages on pieces of paper started jumping around the classroom. The ringer's trill announced the start of the class. Alright class, stop messing around and stand up. You too, Petrov. Lilia Pavlovna went to her desk, followed by a policeman in uniform. It was the man that visited us recently, tall and his stare so sharp you can get cut on it. Ahem, <clears throat> hello there kids, how to ho. <laughs> you can sit down kids. A sweet lord this name. This is senior lieutenant Constant Konstantin Vladimirovich Tikhodnov. <laughs> He's gonna ask you a couple of questions and give you a small PSA. <laughs> Children, the class livened up. Talking to a policeman was way better than studying, bruh. I, on the other hand, was ready to sit through hundreds of hours of Russian literature just to escape the lieutenant's oppressive stare. His brown eyes felt around the classroom, looking for me. Hair stood on the back of my neck, and an icicle had lodged in my gut. Is it true that Baburin got killed by a serial killer? Yekaterina, no katsits. Vaprosy zdes vzroslay zadayut. Shush, Ekaterina. Let the adults ask questions here. We're all scared. Maybe the killer is somewhere close. Girl, if you turn around one more time, I will snap your neck. Okay, do not test me. Maybe they're even sitting on Bogus? Her sly stare was directed at me. Tikhonov stepped in between the rows of desks and started walking at an excruciatingly slow pace, brushing his fingers against the chairs as he passed by. Some of the students almost broke their necks following his movements, bruh. That's how a crowd of commoners would gleefully anticipate a public execution in the Middle Ages. Oh my lord. And he just walked, getting closer and closer to me. 
I gritted my teeth to stop myself from screaming. <sighs> Calm down, breathe. You didn't kill or kidnap anyone. He already knew the answer to his question, but the police still asked in a stern Petrov, voice. Anton. Antoine yeah. Petrov? Yes. Stand, Petrov. Stand up, Petrov. My muscles turned to stone. I got up, unglued myself from the chair. Felt like I could hear all my joints creak in the process. That is me every time I move. Every time I stand up. I could literally hear my bones going tick, tick, tick. <laughs> Okay, it's nothing special. He's what 12 years old? He feels it too. Yeah I only wish that Paulina wouldn't turn around to see the grimace horror of my face If only I could be somewhere far away in the forest digging myself into a snowplow rolling up into a ball there <laughs> hey, 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 hey. The officer stared at me as if he was about to lock a pair of handcuffs on my wrists I wonder how could these bracelets, eh, how cold these braces, bracelets are to the touch. I, am, I imagine myself getting jailed to put into a juvenile detention center where tens of Simeon Samyons will constantly harass me. Oh lord. I don't know anything and I have nothing to do with this. Nobody's accusing you of anything. For now. Oh. Only then I noticed a file that says case number in his hand and it had a grey cover made from a rough carton. It flopped onto the desk like a guillotine blade that slid down on someone's neck. <gasps> with measured motion, Tikhonov opened the file, still studying me with his glaze. I caught a glimpse of dope documents and photos. They showed prints on the snow, they looked like animal prints. Have you talked to Semyon Baburin before? I only knew him for a day. Everyone knows that Petrov hated him. I turned red. You ugly bitch. Let's go! Listen here, you Elsa wanna be. I wanted to sink my teeth into Katya's face and chew out her cheek. Oh my god, sir. Instead, I replied with the calmest voice I could muster. We had a fight yesterday. But he started it. So I hit him. How hard did you hit him? Not that hard, I mean. I waved my hand indecisively. Tikhonov looked at my fist as if he was surprised that I managed to hit the big kid from the photo. Surprisingly, Lilia Pavanov came to my rescue. Pavlovna. Baburin is a troubled teen, a true pain in the rear. Always picking fights with other kids. Oh. The officer replied with a meaningful nod and fished out a notebook out of the file. Algebra. Is this yours? Oh wow, was he copying homework from me? I averted my gaze. It was a math notebook with my name on it. My classmates devoured me greedily with their eyes. It felt like even the writers on the portrait squinted at me in suspicion. My, my... Uh, yes. We found it in the forest. In the area where the tractor driver who was plowing snow there last saw Baburin. I blinked. I started blinking in bewilderment. Romka ransacked my school bag. This notebook of probably just got lost somewhere in the bushes. The lieutenant knew about the school brawl, but was he aware of the fight in the floor's clearing? I had witnesses that could testify to Semyon and I walking in different directions after that. I looked towards the boys, hopeful. Romka, who sat behind Tikhonov, put a finger to his lips. And then when the officer quickly turned around, he pretended to pick his nose, bro. I deciphered his signal. Boys like Ronka would probably say something like snitches get stitches in a situation like this. I frantically fixed my glasses. Wait, Semyon took them away yesterday, but now they're... So what were you doing in the forest yesterday, Anton? I go to school through the forest. It could have easily fallen out of my bag. Easily, just like me producing this half-truth. Be careful out there. Before I could realize whether it was a genuine piece of advice or a veiled threat, the teacher said, Class, Class the officer will now tell you about some rules you should follow. Huh. Girl, nobody asked you. Sit your ass down. 
So the killer just exists. Пока мы ничего вам сказать не можем. We can't make any of this public for now. Но есть преступник или нет, вы должны четко помнить о собственной безопасности. Whether the criminal really exists or not, you should be mindful for your safety. Вас бережет милиция. Вас опекают родители и учителя. Но в первую очередь защищать себя должны вы сами. The police, your parents, and your teachers all watch over you, but no one guard you better than you yourself. Yes, but no, they're like 12 years old. Итак, кто right. там что хотел узнать? Any questions? A stockade of arms rose from the desk. The kids shouted over each other, swarming the policemen with questions. In an attempt to calm down the chorus, he moved towards the blackboard. The gray file was left lying in front of me. Oh! I stared at it, my breathing so ragged that I might have looked like someone who just ran a 100-meter sprint. Beads of sweat rolled down my back. Yes, no. I looked around the classroom. My classmates were catching the officers every word. Only Ramka was saying something to Biasha. <coughs> Lilia Polovna was staring into the window, fighting back yawns. <sighs> Guys. There's a timer. Do I skip or do I open? Skip or open? Shoots. 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 Skip or open. You have 20 seconds. He turned around, he turned around, he turned around. Open, 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 everybody choosing open. Open, 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 I open. Alright, let's open it. My head instinctively moved away as if that stare actually hurt. The officer just kept staring at me without saying a word, making me squirm under the weight of his uncomfortable silence and the sneering looks of my classmates. The officer finished his lecture and started searching around with his eyes. Finally, he noticed the folder he left on my desk, put it silently under his arm and went to the blackboard without looking back. <gasps> Let me say this again. If you notice in the village someone Неважно, возле школы или на лесной тропинке, сразу сообщайте в милицию. If you see anyone suspicious in the village, be it near the school or on the forest trail, contact the police immediately. Телефон-то знаете? You know our police, or you know our number, right? Zero two. Спасибо, ребята. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Спасибо, Лилия Павловна. Thank you, Lilia Pavlovna. И это. <coughs> Одноклассника вашего мы найдем. And ahem, we'll find your classmate. That's not very convincing. Damn, that was close. I know, right? Yeah, right. A thought flashed through my mind. Dig through enough ditches and maybe you'll be able to find peace. You may, Oh my god, maybe you'll be able to piece him together. Oh lord. Like Legos. Oh my god. My thoughts turned evil for some reason and I couldn't control them. I tried to switch to the lieutenant's speech about suspicious individuals. What if I saw the killer before? What if it was a hair's breadth away from them? What if I was a breath, a hair's breadth away from them? Suspicious people, hmm. How suspicious was a fox girl that wandered in the darkness? A weirdo that always appears out of nowhere and then dissolves into thin air with her riddles and rhymes? Could she really harm the hulking Samyon? Should I tell the office about her? officer about her? Wait, what if I get mocked for speaking out? What if they'll start whispering behind my back, or what's even worse, think that I'm insane? <gasps> Ramka gave me a stern look over the shoulder. I doubt someone like him would approve of cooperating with the police. Katya's braid dangled nervously behind the delinquent sitting in front of me. My hands were glued to the desk. Tikhanov was saying goodbye to Lilia Pavlovna. He was about to leave. A bit too, it's, it'll be too late soon. <gasps> Guys, what do I do? There's no time limit, right? Okay, thank God. Choose. Tell him or stay silent. Right, you have two minutes to choose. In the meantime, I will snack on my... Mm. We are four hours in, guys.
Mm. Now these are not potato chips. These are like the toasted bread biscuits with sugar sprinkled sprinkled on them. Mess up their day. The hard bread with sugar. No, not the roti kok. Let me show you. Hang on. Google. Hmm. Mm. Crispy butter bread. Okay, I can't find a good photo of it, but it looks something like this. Oh crap. Hang on. Photo big. Like this. But it's like cr crunchy, like biscuits. Mmm. Maybe it's like dehydrated bread. I don't know. Yummy. Yes. Hello. Hello. I don't know. I'm really snacky. I get snacky after a while. All right. Let's see what you guys chose. Tell him 59%. Okay. You get a butter bread. You get a butter bread. Mmm. Okay, 59% is quite a lot. Alright, we'll we'll tell. We Antoine the snitch. That's right. Sometimes you gotta tell, otherwise, you know the tables are against you. Okay, tell him. I unglued my palm from the tabletop. I needed to warn him, at the very least for Olya's sake, to assure her safety in the house nearby the squeaky pines. I raised my hand, heavy as a dumbbell. Excuse me. Almost two dozen heads turned my way. My teacher, the officer, Paulina. Katya showed an el elbow into, into her friend's side. I thought the friend beside her was a girl. Hello? What? <clears throat> Sleepy Byasha stretched out his neck. Ronka frowned inquiringly. Yes, Lusha. I'm listening. I felt like I was being studied under a microscope. Yesterday when I was walking to school in the morning, uh -huh, I saw an unfamiliar person. My classmates started whispering. Tikhonov frowned, a deep wrinkle adorning the space between his eyebrows. There's no way he'd be able to tell if he was an outsider or a local. He just moved into our village. The other kids smirked. Katya flashed an evil smile. Calm down. Can you describe them in more detail, Anton? Then it dawned on me. I can do more than describe them. What I can do... I can draw them. I know how to draw, kind of. Let's go! After spitting out this confession, I expected everybody to laugh, but it didn't happen. Even Katya stayed silent. Polina tilted her head <clears throat> and then studied me with an intrigued look on her face. I don't give a shit about you, Polina. I was pleased by this wave of attention. It made me feel bolder, so I asked, Do you want me to? Tikhonov slowly nodded. <coughs> Lilia Pavlovna, we'll conduct a bit of an experiment here, all right? Of course, of course. Why do they call each other by her full name? I don't understand. Like, 
What? I took out a pen, flattened out a sheet of paper. My classmates stared at me in anticipation. Polina smiled as and it was the best reward I could get for my boldness. Oh, no, my Van Gogh. Rizoy. Well, go on, Van Gogh, draw. Uh, oh my god, guys. What should I draw? If I draw the fox face, then they're gonna laugh at me. Okay. How do I do this? One, two, three, four. Okay? Five, six. Oh, wait, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One being the fox ear. Which one should I draw? The guy with a bandage on the nose? Should I draw the smoking dude? I don't remember what he looks like. This is one, two. You guys choose. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four. We got two fours and one threes. Absolutely four. Three, four. This guy? Four. 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 We got a lot of fours. Okay. <clears throat> now for his jaw. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, you know what? Whichever the wolf is, uh, the fox is, is one. This is one. One. Ariel, good morning! One. This is one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. One. <coughs> two. Three, four, five, six. Definitely five for a jaw. Six. This one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got thick lips for six. <clears throat> you want to create a monster? Two. Three, four, five, six. I think the guy kind of looked like a, like a, three, four, five, like a five. Five, five? We need more boatings, guys. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Five? <clears throat> Three, I think I forgot. Five, five, five. Okay, well, let's go with five. All right, what about the eyes? Where's the fox? Okay, this is the fox. This is one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. One. Two. Three, four, four got unibrows. One, one obviously? One? You guys are choosing one? Eyes five. Yes, one, five, one, five. One, two, three, four, five. He's got wrinkles. Five got wrinkles. Would like to see the end result. Okay. Well, if not one, then we go with five, right? Looking like um, Asu Senpai. <laughs> it's one, yeah, bad. We'll go to five after this. But yeah, okay, fine. 
Okay, this is one. This is one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Oh man, he got big ears. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, 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 three. Three got like sharp ears. All right. Well, this is what the end would look like, but I guess we go with five. Is this what the dude looks like? You guys sure? Hmm. <laughs> feel like I will regret we will regret this later. I mean, we've seen this guy at the school gate. So it's either we draw the fox girl or we draw this. That's the guy FBI. Okay. All right then. There it is, the massive cold chiseled face. Squint in his eyes, sharp like a blade. Do you think we got it down to the T? I hesitated before handling handling my drawing to the officer. Вот примерно так. He looks something like this. Примерно. Achievement unlocked, Van Gogh. Something like this. Да ведь он один в один тот тип. No, he looks exactly like our person of interest. Вы его тоже видели? So you saw him too. Зайчу губу. Видел недавно возле поселка. The hair lip man. Yes, I saw him near the Думал, village. Проездом. Давно подался дальше гастролировать. I thought he was just driving through and continued his journey a long time ago. Он здесь, отирается. Apparently he's still snooping around here. Oh, bro. Tikhonov looked at me as if he saw me for the first time. Ну, пацан. Ну, молодец. Уже хоть какая-то зацепка. What a lad. We have a lead thanks to you now. Yay! You got it exactly right. This dude said it was exactly right. Yay! Good job. Pat yourself on the back. Oh, he slapped my shoulder and went toward the door. Ooh. Let's go. We Van Gogh confirmed. And then he stopped and called out to me. You're a talented boy. They're cute to have someone like you at the Academy of Arts. He laughed. The bell rang. Lilia Pavlovna marched past, giving me a curious look. My classmates went silent as if somebody lowered their volume using a remote. They followed me with their eyes the whole time I was passing between the rows, but something had changed about their gazes. Even Katya was different now. I remember vividly how my dad once stood up for a war vet during a bus ride, subduing a bunch of drunkards. The other passengers back then had the same looks. The looks of respect. <gasps> we have earned respect. Why do Belle have two balls? I don't know. Maybe two is better than one. <laughs> After going to the restroom and watching my face in cold water, I returned to the classroom. But as soon as I stepped through the hallway, somebody called my name in a cheerful voice. It was the girl sitting next to Katya. Yes, we're uh yes, we are a womanizer now. That's what she said. <laughs> Mission pass. Respect gained. She smiled and offered me offered me a Skittles candy. Oh shush! Спасибо. I mumbled words of gratitude in reply and accidentally swallowed the small candy as if it was one of mom's pills. A happy shout came from the other side. Can you draw me, Anton? Oh, listen here, okay? Let the man catch a breath. Hello? <clears throat> we are the popular guy now. We're getting the ladies. Me too, draw me, draw me like one of your French girls. The shouts were coming from all directions now, so I pushed my back to the Atlas hanging on the wall, embarrassed. Did you learn to draw by yourself? Can you draw Van Damme? I'll hang it in my room as a poster. Hey, I was the first to ask him. Katja slithered up to me like a venomous snake, oh my lord, inserting herself between me and my classmates. 
по дружбе. The gaslight. The gaslight. The audacity. Antoine has already promised to draw me as a sign of friendship. A bitch, who said that? You dreamt of it. It did not happen. A delusional little shit. Who invited her? Ain't nobody invited her. She can't sit with us. <laughs> Tell them, Antoine. Yeah, right. A thought flashed through my mind. As soon as I showed some promise, Katya immediately decided to befriend me. Прости, но я уже обещал другой. Sorry, but I already promised someone else. <gasps> she kind of cute, not gonna lie, but you know, that doesn't make up for anything. I saw Katya's face contort slightly, but she didn't say anything back. Hmm. I rushed to squeeze myself through the laughing classmates looking for Polina. But I stumbled into my new buddies instead. Oh, Ramka swaggered up to me. Решил сдать нас ментам. Decided to rat us out to the cops. Но я ничего не сказал. I didn't say anything. Да то подумал на. But sure as fuck thought about it, eh? But I did not, you bitch. Ramka towered over me, breathing out a faint smell of tobacco. Ты сильно ошибаешься, думая, что без Сёма у тебя настанут веселые деньки. You're very wrong if you think that without Сёма you'll have a better time in here. Можешь не притворяться дурачком, пытаясь удивить Полину своей мазнёй или корчить из себя психа. Dude, if you can't tie your own woman down, don't blame other people, okay? Maybe she's just not a loyal girl. Maybe you should move on, son. You only 12, okay? <laughs> Your life hasn't even started, okay? <laughs> Your puberty didn't even kick in. Move on. <laughs> you can stop your word act trying to impress Polina with doodles or by acting like a loony, bro. We'll make this place hell for you, got it? Ever, children. See you four eyes. My hell tilted forward from his slap. What the luck now? What a loser, eh? I was surprised to find a note stuck to my back during the break. It said, kick me. My nightmare clearly wasn't about to end. <laughs> dun dun dun. It's been seven days since the lieutenant visited our class. At first glance, everything was still the same. The forest still held out its gnarly claws towards the village, and the wind whipped out its white flags away from powdery snow every night. When my parents argued in the other room, I would turn up the TV's volume to silence their muffled voices and sit close to Olia. Oh, damn. Vova and Samian's photos were still two black spots on the notice board. But something did change. I could see how different the looks of my classmates were. They met me with a new portion of pokes and insults, contempt, mockery, and loneliness became my faithful companion. But most importantly, a shadow slid across my desk, leaving behind a mysterious note. I glanced into the space between the rows, but the messenger was already nowhere to be found. Who sent me this note? Who could this carefully ripped out? What could be? What could this carefully ripped out and neatly folded piece of paper be hiding from me? More threaten, more threats or humiliations or I took the piece of paper and carefully inhaled the wafting aroma. Blackberry, oh my god. I'll be waiting at a wait what? At a cul-de-sac near the dressing room. Come alone, hearts. Child. Child. No. Inside was a, was a message in beautiful handwriting. I'm waiting at the dead end. Oh, a cul-de-sac is a dead end. Near the dressing room. Come alone. <sighs> Drunk on that sudden call, I immediately started walking, looking over my shoulder from time to time, making sure nobody's following me. A sip. Even though I suspected it could be another trap set up by Ronka and Biasha at first, this buzzing thought soon left my mind. The two of them didn't have enough combined brain power to fake Polina's note so carefully. I didn't even notice how I almost broke into a run and jumped around a corner. As soon as I did that, I rammed into somebody inside a dark nook. Ow! Like a magic bird, a green notebook glided to my feet. 
Polina puffed her cheeks in exa exaggerated anger. Petrov, have you lost your sight completely? I fixed my glasses. My near sightedness wasn't that embarrassing anymore. I bent down and picked up the notebook. Sorry, I was in a rush. Were you waiting for me? Did something happen? Yes, simp. Oh my god, she's so sauce. Polina's attitude changed from fake anger to softness. She stood there silent, probably picked out the right words, picking out the right words. She had a worried and sad look in her eyes as if she hoped I'd continue this conversation and stop us from drowning in this awkward silence. But I didn't say a word, I was just staring at her trembling lips. Finally, Polina heaped a deep, deep sigh and started talking meekly. Anton, Anton, tell me, are you mad at me? I don't know, am I, girl? You about to start telling me who you are and who? what's your relation with that guy? I couldn't reply before she continued. Of course you are. What's this stupid question? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for that to happen. Honest. Get what ass fancy. When Pityanov, when that abuser kicked a dog. Ugh. It felt like I wasn't myself, you know? Shut the <laughs> she sniffled, even though it was dark, quite dark outside. I noticed her ocean-colored eyes sparkle. I know that is wrong. It's wrong laughing at animal abuse. After seven days, you come and tell me this. I don't even want to think what your opinion of me must be. But I just can't help it, Anton. I don't know how... If you already feel that way, there's no way to change you. <laughs> I would just not associate myself with you, girl. Stop using that as an excuse. Also, was that even true? As soon as I remember Grandpa and the horrors he had to endure the night when he got attacked by this pack of stray dogs. Polina's notebook in my hand was still waiting for me to return it to its rightful owner, but I couldn't find the right moment to do that. You probably think I'm crazy, right? Uh-huh. She looked at me with hopeless eyes, while I was absentmindedly going through all the crazy stuff that my subconscious was producing lately. I clearly wasn't qualified to judge someone's sanity. Sometimes I just can't control myself. Ugh. But I'll never harm anyone. You hear? Okay, cool story. Anything else? No? Okay, goodbye. I'll never see you or talk to you ever again. Not like the sadist Ronka. I noticed she would always put someone down. When she talks about herself, she would always put someone down. She did this in the forest too. She was like, see, we are like this, unlike that guy. We are like this, unlike this guy. It's just like... Sus. It's so sus. I don't know. A weird behavior. Anton, Please stay away from him, Anton. I I know no, we don't associate, no. Something clicked in my head. I stared at Polina with suspicion. Let's go, boy! Not even a lick of sympathy. I've met a lot of shady girls and I was bullied as a kid, so I don't trust children. <laughs> If they're sus, they're sus. It doesn't matter what age they are, okay? Babies can be sus too, I'm telling you. They can be like, ah, oh, look, there's candy right there. And then they steal the banana out of your hand. And you're just like, what the hell, girl? You know, it, it do be like that. I'm telling you, man. Children can be sussy, you know? <laughs> you call them differently a week ago when we were fighting. Let's go. Romochka. Romochka. <gasps> Say, are you two dating? Oh my god, you guys are 12 years old. You are 12 years old, boy. <gasps> Polina jolted as if struck by lightning. No way, that asshole stuck to me like a leech. People like him are not even deterred by direct insults. 
But you still, it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that you were all lovey-dovey with him, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It doesn't change the fact as repulsive as he is, you were still like, oh my god, you know? I don't trust her. <laughs> her voice became calmer when she noticed the bruises and cuts on my face. Ugh. Again, I'm very sorry that happened. Apology accepted. Never talk to me ever again. Well, I really thought I would be able to help you. It was my mistake to think that bastards like them can have any sort of moral code. Вот. У меня есть для тебя подарок. Here, I have a present for you. <gasps> she is 12 years old. Okay, first of all. She has no moral code, first of all. <laughs> Girl, where, okay, enough about their moral code. Where's your moral code, child? <laughs> okay, anyways, it's probably something else. She unbuttoned the top of her jacket and instantly got embarrassed after noticing my stunned look. Okay. She took an amulet on a thick leather thread with a big animal claw off her neck and held it out to me. Grandpa gifted me this charm. He said that it helps against crazy and possessed. <clears throat> he got it from a certain shaman. Можешь не верить, но когда дедушка забыл его надеть, с ним и случилось то несчастье. You don't have to believe me, but the tragedy that befell him happened on a day, on the only day he forgot to wear it. I snuck another glance at the intensely scratched claw of an unknown beast. Girl, if you wear that, won't it scratch your body? А чьи он? Ну, в смысле коготь? And who did it belong to? The claw, I mean. Даже не знаю. I don't know. Может быть медведя, а может и тигра. A bear or a tiger maybe? Кого только не встретишь в нашем лесу. You can find all sorts of animals in our forest. В любом случае, пожалуйста, прими вместе с моими извинениями. Anyway, please accept it along with my sincere apology. Won't your grandpa be sad? Okay, guys. Do we take it and let her die, which I'm fine with? Or do we like say, nah, girl, I don't want nothing from you. I don't want to owe you nothing. All right, let's see. Take or refuse. All right, while y'all vote, I'm going to chomp on my butter, butter biscuits. Refuse or she die. I personally would not want to take anything from her. Like, I am so done with her. I don't want to associate with her. You know what I mean? I'm like, you said what you wanted to say. And I've heard enough. Thank you for telling me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Keep voting, guys. Mm. If I gave something to my grandchildren and I was like, never take this off, this is to protect your life. And they give it to someone else, I'm gonna be really pissed. <laughs> First of all, it's supposed to protect your life. Now, what's gonna happen with your life? Second of all, that's expensive. <laughs> I don't know. As his grand as her grandpa, I'd be pissed. Usually we have about like 20 votes. So now we have like 19. <laughs> mm. Yummy. How could you just give away a family heirloom? Hmm. Hmm.
A lot of you guys vote take though. That's so much more than I expected. Looks cool to have. Mmm. Mmm. No, actually a lot of people vote take. I'll give you guys one more minute. I have a plate with me so it doesn't fly everywhere. <laughs> I simp the fox girl anyway, so see ya girl. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen her at all. She's just gone. Alright, time's up. 57% says to refuse. We want Fox Girl. We want Fox Girl. Bring back Fox Girl. <laughs> Fox Girl probably found someone else already. Yeah, maybe she found. What's his face? Shamanov? Shamanov? Samiyan? What's his name? Shimmy Shimmy Hey, Shimmy Ha, Shimmy Ha. I don't remember his name. Pimple Boy. Alright, let's refuse. Mm. Okay. I'll let you keep it. This is your family relic after all. And I'll feel calmer knowing you're under protection. You're still slim to the very end. Всегда думаешь о других. Achievement unlocked. Skeptic. You're always thinking about others. Знаешь, мне казалось, что благородство бывает лишь в книжках. You know, I thought chivalry was exclusive to books until I met you. <coughs> until I met you, stay away from me. I felt a bit embarrassed, so I started shuffling my feet. Girl, that's a big overstatement. Я серьезно. I'm serious. What about my apology? Will you accept it? <laughs> Polina flashed me a charming smile, looking me straight in the eye. I turned even redder. I wasn't even that mad at you from the beginning. Young girl, you ain't even that important. Get over yourself. Why would I? Polina studied me with her eyes and clicked her tongue. Do you know what you look like, Antosha? Like blues improv. I blinked in bewilderment. What do you mean? <coughs> I always associate people I know with something. I do that too, but why music? It can't be anything other than music. Бывают люди гитарные соло, или барабанный бой, или военный марш, как наша Лилия Павловна. Some people are like guitar solos, some are drums. People like our Lilia Pavlovna are war marches. А ты такой задумчивый, таинственный, иногда немного печальный. And you're so thoughtful, so mysterious, sometimes a bit sad, even a bit sad. Ты точно блюз. You're definitely blues. What about the improv part? It's when a listener has no idea where the melody will go, what tempo it will adopt. Of course, some of the things Polina said were complete went completely over my head, child. But I couldn't stop looking at her smile. A light <sighs> light like a breeze in May. Her eyes deep and blue. Чтобы распознать в тебе музыку, нужен опыт и вкус. The amount of times I have to roll my eyes every time she shows up. One needs to have experience and taste to recognize the music in you. She's just... She's... She's praising herself. <laughs> Это не какая-то там эстрада. You're not some pop music. What's wrong with pop music? Я, наверное, вообще не знаю, что такое этот блюз. I don't even think I know what blues is. 
Полина gasped and frowned, which made her look even more beautiful. Не произноси при мне такие слова. Я тебе обязательно дам кассету. Don't say something like that to my face. I'll make sure to give you a cassette. Brr. Раньше мне дедушка из города столько музыки привозил. И джаз, и свинг, и классику. Grandpa used to bring me so much music from the city, jazz, swing, and classical too. Grandpa got good taste. Это он подметил, что у меня склад ума, как у музыканта. He was the one who noticed my musical mindset. Я еще совсем маленькой пыталась на бумаге записать звуки природы. Пение дождя. When I was still very little, I tried to record the sound of nature on paper, the songs of the rain and the forest. Nobody asked. <laughs> I have like zero patience with her. I wish I had ears like yours. А мне бы твои глаза. And I'd love to have your eyes. Dun dun dun. I tensed up, worrying that she was making fun of me, but Polina shook her head. Да, да, я серьезно. У тебя глаза художник. No, no, I'm serious. You have the eyes of an artist. Смотришь на вещи и фиксируешь их. Я так не умею. You're so good at picturing things. I can't do that. I don't think that's done by the eyes. I think that's done by the brain. <laughs> Question mark? Hello, welcome. Uh oh. Katya walked past us with her trademark frosty glare. We dove into the shadows, trying to escape it. Теперь понимаешь, почему мы тут прячемся? Вот из-за таких, как она. You understand why we're hiding here, right? Because of people like her. А Катька какая мелодия. <coughs> What kind of melody is Katya? <laughs> Polina flashed me a sly smile. Скрип несмазанных дверных петель. <laughs> the sound, the squeaking sound of unoiled door hinges. Brrr. Знаешь, такой мерзкий дискант. You know this nasty discant, 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 discant. Oh, that sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Elsa from hell. Hello. I giggle, covering my mouth. Katya didn't hear a whisper, but she suddenly glanced over her shoulder, clearly annoyed. A moment later, she sighed <clears throat> and went away. I'm sure she's sus. I'm sure she didn't fully go away. Friends only. Oh wow, really? Remember about the notebook I was still clutching in my hand? I turned it in my hands. Instead of subject name, the front had the name of the owner and two words. Friends only. Curiosity killed the cat, you know. I'm sorry, is this a questionnaire? Have you ever filled, fi filed one? Mm. A light that I had. In reality, girl classmates from my previous school had never asked me to fill their questionnaires. It was quite upsetting. <laughs> I mean, it was a girl hobby. You just answer a set of standard questions about your favorite actors and colors. But entrusting someone with such a notebook was a sign of friendship. And they're called surveys back in my day. And we didn't give a dang. Yeah. We just let people, guys and girls, fill out surveys. It was fun. Yeah. And maybe something even more, something I only had a vague idea about. You can fill in mine if you want. <laughs> My heartbeat quickened. I do, thank you. Alright, move <laughs> along. Polina giggled. Там же столько секретов. Actually, there's so many secrets there. Ugh. Наверное, лучше тебе не знать, о чем мы девочки думаем. You better off not knowing what we girls think. She reached for the notebook, playing with me. I tossed my findings into my free hand. Polina tried to intercept my move. Her hair briefly touching my face, tickling my nose with its silky locks. I sensed an aroma that immediately filled the whole world, fragrant, alluring, lively. Yes, lamp. If only I could picture it, steal it for myself. I felt dizzy, but I gathered myself and spoke in a voice reminiscent of Lieutenant Tikhonov. Ваша анкета является важнейшей уликой, и я вынужден временно изъять ее для изучения. Your questionnaire is an important piece of evidence, so I'm afraid I have to confiscate it for further examination. Squeaker acts both the cries every time you kill them in a Call of Duty game. Guys draw stickman wars in their notebooks to battle their friends with instead. Hey, I used to do that too. This guy is Halu, he's Halu, bruh. 
Polina covered her mouth with that rounded in fake horror. What are the implications of concealing evidence? We'll decide that in the course of our every uh, investigation. I surrender, Mr. Policeman. <laughs> <laughs> Just promise you won't read anything. Oh my god. It's full of sensitive information. Girl, you were fishing for me to read it, okay? Боюсь, что мне все-таки придется выяснить, не влюблен ли кто в гражданина Петрова. I'm afraid I have to investigate whether someone is in love with Mr. Petrov, aka me. This is making me cringe, I know, right? <laughs> Oh my god, she burst out laughing and pressed herself against my chest, showering me with the aroma of her hair and her milky skin that almost looked transparent with tiny threads of veins running under it. <sighs> She's a vixen. Her whisper was hot, like a piece of buzz butter sizzling on a pan. Then swear that you will keep this information private. Girl, you are too young to learn the art of seduction. Back off. Back off, social distance. Oh my god. I swear on my police badge. And now we need to hurry, Antosha. Children these days concern me. I took out the notebook during class. Did you know what this feels like? It feels like some weird, cringy ass fan fiction. <laughs> It's like some fan fiction that you read that you're just like, oh. Skim through it, reading into other people's ref preferences. Aww. Oh my god, I was quite surprised to discover Romska's jerky handwriting inside. Number one, Roma. 6B, Shafutinsky, February, ha ha how hauging out, okay. Buying a BMW, good luck. Oh, stall one, crossed out Schwarzenegger. Don't trust, don't fret, don't ask. He was born in 87? March 15th, 87. What is a March horoscope? I've heard worse in middle school. DuckTales. That's like... That's a Looney Tune cartoons, no? Oh no, that's Disney. BMW Brussels. I know, right? Biasha, that's probably his best friend. So, name, class. The heck is this? I don't know. Favorite month? Favorite things to do? Your biggest dream in the future? Your favorite actor or whatever? Uh, favorite quote? Birthday? Favorite cartoon? Best friend. March is Pisces. I don't know. I don't know. His letters bulge out of cell as if embarrassed by their shapelessness. Fearsome Ronka found time for something so silly. His car a favorite cartoon is not even Dark Winged Duck, but DuckTales. DuckTales is cute though. Somewhere in the distance, the teacher is reciting pieces of Andrew Snapper. I paid them no mind. Polina's page was decorated with flower drawings and clippings from the Cool Girl magazine. Aha. Uh -huh. Polina, okay. Class. Uh, my birthday. Favorite day. Favorite day was her birthday. She, she likes listening. She wants to see the world. Robert Schumann, favorite actor. Losing the people I love. Aha. Uh -huh. She was born in ninety two. Why is the age difference so huge? Wait, her age difference is huge. Grandpa. Yoda. Friend is best friend. Oh, her best friend is her grandpa. That is so good. DuckTales so so. I thought it was cute. It just looked cute. Her hobby is not violin, but like I expected much more mysterious uh, listening. Such a mundane process really be someone's hobby. I look at Polina over the heads of other shows that she was focused on taking notes. Ah, Zuka. 
Flip the pages until I found a black one, blank one and arm myself with a pen. Okay, Anton Petrov, class 6B. Took a long time to decide what my favorite musician is until a, band, a trendy pop car man came to mind with the cool dancers in their music videos. Let's see. Carmen, Soviet Russian techno pop band, most popular from the late 80s, early 90s, found, founded by Bogdan Titomir and Sergei Lemok. It is mostly remembered for unique dancing performances and for writing a music theme for Captain Pronin cartoon. Ah. Favorite holiday, New Year's. Favorite hobby, okay, drawing, okay. What's your dream going to Disneyland? Brr. Your hero. Dad, come on. Da Vinci. It's not stupid, I don't know. Decided not everything should be disclosed on paper. I turned out dad to, to Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Oh my god. You know, you can erase. The, you can cross it out. Just, just scribble. <sighs> Spider-Man, guys. <clears throat> Biggest fear. Losing a person who's dear to me. Your phone number. Oh, that was the phone number? I thought that was like your birth... What? Your phone Nuber. I thought like it was born in 95 or something. Spoder, man. Favorite cartoon? Transformers. You know what? Yeah. Best friend. Come on, come on, come on. You. She just got friend zone, ladies and gentlemen. You, I repeat it while running out of the school. Refreshing frosty air made my cheeks turn beet red. It was bright outside and the sun looked like a whole egg yolk. The road looked as if it was silvered. The snow sparkled under the sunlight. I smiled, squinting from the blinding whiteness. There was also something magical in my chest that beckoned me. Because friendship can grow into something bigger. <sighs> Hey, what's up with a stupid grin? My lips, my numb lips immediately shrank. Biasha was shuffling his feet in the middle of the yard, his boots restless on the ice. It's not a grin. Whoa, hashtag the north, the north fake. It's not the north face, it's the north fake. The north face is expensive AF. I will say, I will tell you, but the quality is good. From what I heard. Hashtag not sponsored. Try to go around him to no avail. Lady Fortune waved me goodbye, disappearing in the early twilight. In a hurry, eh? Oh my god, this boy. A little bit. Dad is waiting for me. I shoot him a pager message that you're not coming, eh? Oh, I know what a pager is. Wireless telecommunication device that receives a display... Display... Alphanumeric or voice messages. To send a message to the other person's pager, you have to call... A special line. Provide the recipient's number or name and read your message aloud. My eye flinched unwittingly. My skin dampened. Let's go away. We have small business to discuss. Bro, what? I felt chills run all over my body. I didn't like the sounds of that small business. Those words accompanied by spitting normally hit very dark deeds underneath them. Strangers that used to call our apartment used to say, Get your old man, we have small business to discuss. <laughs> Biasha turned around, he looked like an astronaut in his tight hood. A mogus? If I were to imagine him as a sound, he'd be a deafening whistle. A signal given by someone who stands watch. To my demise, there is nobody at the backyard. Oh. Apart from the grim-faced Ramka. Oh no, it's because of that girl. He stood there, his feet wide apart, with his right hand behind his back. Romka's dry lips tightly pursed. He kept shooting glances at me as he looked around. From the bottom of my heart, I hope that Romka hasn't seen me together with Paulina. What do you feel, nah. <clears throat> there he is, eh? Ah, oh, that's the hangman. Vision. I could see that. Ну здорово. Oh, hello there, Antosha. Что тебе нужно? What do you want? Ugh, again. 
He slowly took out a thin, car carnivorously shiny blade from behind his back. A knife, the steel butterfly of death that flies towards the victim's heartbeat. I stepped back instinctively and rammed my back into Biasha. Romka's minion pushed me back. We wanted to know. Do you have any hard feelings for me or Biasha? Do you want the truth? Or do you want me to answer something just because you have a knife out? Romka started picking on his yellow nail, looking at me with an evil smirk on his face. No, там, well, there, in the forest, we kind of roughed you up. It's just our poor upbringing, you know. Yeah, not as cultured as you city folk. So we get feisty sometimes. I nodded my eyes glued to the knife. Say, Antosha. Did I by any chance go too hard on you last time? Oh my god, guys, find a hobby, goddamn. Not really. Ну и славно. Wonderful. А то я затревожился, что память тебе отбил. И ты запамятовал, о чём мы втолковывали. I almost got worried that I damaged your brain and you forgot the lesson I taught you. Я помню. I remember. The blade glowed under the setting sun and Romka's eyes had the same evil glow. He stepped toward me. His knife traveled inches away from my coat. One movement and steel would cut into the cloth. Нам одна птичка напела. Ты опять возле Полины отирался. А, а, чек, чек, чек. Can you hear me now? I swear the mixer keep disconnecting. Okay. A little bird told us that you were snooping about Polina again. I was so scared that it took me a while to remember who Paulina was, bruh. My brain was malfunctioning, my knees were shaking. Ugh. Suddenly, our class rep slowly walked up to Romka from behind. I see you boys are getting along quite well. I owe you one, Katya. Oh my gosh. Oh, no need to thank me, Romoshka. I'm always fighting for true love. Oh my lord. I'll kill you, I swear. I can hear you. Were you near Polina or not? Well, we didn't hang out or anything. The only thing hanging out here will be your guts when I cut open your stomach. Do you want to disappear like the other dude? Don't forget. He's still not found. Just saying. The blade slid across my sleeve with its dull side and reached my collar. The wind made my face cold, but the bead of sweat still triggered from my temple. I guess I need to explain in a way you'll understand. <laughs> The slip-up handle and the blade spun in a dangerous dance, just like the helicopter blades that sweep away everything in their way. Imagine if you dropped it. I tried to dodge, but the sharp edge of the blade grazed my shoulder. I watched in shock as the blade sunk into my skin, tearing it, filling it, filling the gash with blood. You know, if you tell the police this, he's gonna get thrown in jail. Juvie, let's go. The rush brought by adrenaline faded away and the piercing pain escaped my mouth in the form of a pitiful scream. <coughs> Ronka pulled the knife out with a rough motion and I ran away without looking back, trying to cover the bleeding wound. Don't you dare forget again. Run straight to the police station! Antosha! Antosha! Yeah, after a taste of horrible water, I drank my meds. I drank down my meds with lingering in my mouth. A cut that was covered with iodine nagged under the wraps with fluffy ants. I didn't tell my parents the truth about how I got it. Ugh, saying that I just stumbled upon a sharp branch in the forest. I waited for a chance to get attention from my parents, who were always so busy. 
My thoughts were focused on Polina. She not then. I wandered around the house feeling intoxicated and nodding, nodded to everything my sister said without trying to discern her words. Alia was talking non-stop at times, lifting up her arms and laughing, only then to suddenly go quiet and give me mom's signature gnarly look. I was yanked back out of the prison of my own mind, where seething thoughts pecked at my brain like harpies, stopping me from coming back to reality. I stared back. Alia looked like a mini. Alia looked like a mini version of my mom right now. Well, to be precise, she looked like the person mom turned into when we moved here, with her intimidating posture and her eyebrows directed towards the ceiling. You weren't listening to me, were you? She strides, spitting out those words at me, copying facial expressions of the person she spent almost all of her free time with. For a moment, I felt like the light Alia ex exuded all these years waned and wavered in the wind of prolonged changes. Very soon, my beautiful princess will turn into the dragon that was once guarding her prison tower. That thought was much scarier to me than any other horror sneaking up to me from the future. Olya, прости. Sorry, Olya. <coughs> I didn't want to make you mad. I just got lost in thought. I looked around the room, my gaze jumping from one object to another like an angry beast, trying to find anything that could distract Olya. Let's play the console. Olya pouted, but there was a dark spark of interest. Uh, there was a spark of interest in her small emerald eyes. The Snow Queen's eye shard inside them started thawing. What about the second controller? It's not working. And that has no time to fix it. Hmm, we can play with the light gun. What do you want to play? Cowboys? Ducks? You're better than me at both. Hiya, Anton, give chance. Hiya. Even if you're good, you have to pretend you're not. Let your sister win, bro. Oh, come on. You must have been practicing the whole time I was away from home. <laughs> Olya burst out laughing. Her heart was warm once again. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> yeah, give chance to Olya, hiya. But I'm a good shooter now, you've already lost. <gasps> you've picked the wrong fight here, come on, turn it on. <laughs> Little Olya jumped towards the TV and after flickering the power switch, Started blind, blindly feeling around the back of the photon, trying to plug the console's cable into the antenna input. Ooh, bits of TV show started flashing on the CRT screen. That's when I armed myself with the remote to look for the channel with the sought after dandy signal. Did anything interesting happen at home? It was a mundane question for me. I didn't put any actual meaning behind it. But Olya's expression suddenly changed. She lost all childish nonchalance she worked so hard to acquire before. What happened, Olya? She's looking at the window. My sister managed to put cables in his place and started brushing off her dust-covered hand. She was clearly looking for the courage to continue the conversation. Mom, she... Olya went silent for a moment. I thought I saw tears welling up in her eyes. Mom had this scary thing happen to her again. My sister looked at me with wet eyes. She had a fit, huh? This has happened before, but it was a rare occasion. But now that we've moved to this godforsaken place, Mom's fit rose in frequency. Dad brought home a big fish. It was wrapped in newspaper and had a foul smell. Mom got angry again and she took a knife. 
All that screamed, looking fearfully out the window. They started screaming at each other. I froze, imagining my little sister so small and so and unnoticeable, standing in the kitchen doorway. She wasn't even trying to hide. Our parents just pay her no mind at all. And then mom struck it. Like this. Olea slightly moved her fist downwards, imitating a strike. She hit the fish. It was still alive, Torsha. It must have been in pain. And mom, mom. It was easy to imagine what happened next. The writhing fish with the blade between its fins squirted some foul-smelling musk into mom's face. Whenever death got this close to my mom, be it when a person was hit by a bus in front of us and their blood was smeared all over the windshield, or when grandma chopped off a chicken's head, mom would always get in a weird, dreadful fit. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Her eyes would roll over, she would fall on her face like freshly cut tree and start a writhing just like that agonizing fish. Turn over chairs and blurting out bits of scary sentences. What about dad? Did he help her? Olya shrouded as if remembering it pained her. Yes, but at first... He started laughing, Tosha. <laughs> he let out an evil laugh when he saw that mom was in trouble. But then he cried. All their story made me raise an eyebrow. It seemed like the forest's oozing madness had not only completely consumed our mom, but also infected our strong and courageous dad. I quickly stepped forward toward Alia and locked her into a tight embrace. What? Why he looks super giga chat? I know, right? <laughs> also, welcome! I dug her face into my chest and I could feel my shirt becoming wet. Why are they bullying each other, Tosha? Are they crazy? Girl, what? don't look at me like that. It's kind of scary. <laughs> I started unable to justify the actions of our parents. Mm. I had ran out of words and all I could do was hug Olia even tighter. Oh my god. <sighs> that was so uncalled for. That was so uncalled for, dude. That would apasi. <laughs> that was so uncalled for, dude. <laughs> All this scream that hit behind me, bro. What? Turn it off quick, bro. What? <laughs> no matter how many times she saw this interest, she would always react the same, just like when she saw that owl. <laughs> I mean, I also got goosebumps every time this ghastly face appeared on the screen, so I immediately compiled with my sister's request. VID, a TV company logo depicting a ceramic head of the Chinese philosopher Guo Xiang with three-legged to toad on top of his head. It instilled horror in the whole generation of 90s kids in Russia, bro. We can only play. Hey, yo, do y'all remember these things? Finally, the game selection screen showed up for the cartridge that was bundled with the console. Am I supposed to play a game? Y'all gonna see that I suck. Too bad most of the names here were just different levels of the same game. <clears throat> I picked up the gray rectangular controller and started looking around the pixel letters to find a familiar English word for duck. Background music from the menu soothed Olea's mind when she asked in a calm voice. How are things at school? I became friends with a girl. <gasps> Is she pretty? I got embarrassed. Well, I don't know. Haha, <laughs> you're red. She must be very pretty. Stop it, Olya. You got a crush on her. Let's hope this song doesn't give me like copyright issues. Olya, keep acting like this and I won't play with you. I was joking. Will you introduce us? Uh, maybe. And what's her name? Paulina. 
А ты покраснел. You turned red again, bro. А где вы будете жить, когда поженитесь? Where will you live when you get married? Uh uh, I'm not letting my boy marry her. I don't know. Are we playing or not? I plug the light gun into the second controller port, listening to my sister's laugh. I go first. What? Am I supposed to play? No way. What? No right. No right. Wait, we not shooting dog? Are we? Wait, what? Oh, oh. Am I supposed to do anything? What? Player two, get ready. What? Oh, oh, Soka! Soka, 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 Soka! <laughs> oh no, look! I uh, could only have time to, to shoot one. Oh no, Olia, oh no. Метка, ничего не скажешь. Not bad. <laughs> oh no. Hello? My stream died? Am I ma what ah what ah eh? You're still here, Kurumi. Eh, what happened? They didn't like it when I played the game, bruh. Hmm. We back now? Okay. Nice shot, thank you. Oh, do I get to shoot again? I I don't. I'm not touching my mouse. One or one point five seconds. Oh 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 no oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no <laughs> oh no oh no oh no fly away now oh no <laughs> Okay I give chance I give chance she gets one one bird off leeway <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I think she wins. Ha! <laughs> Who wants some more? Oh, okay. Final round. Okay, okay, okay. Oh shit! She's a good shooter. Is there gonna be a jump scare here? I have a feeling. Only have three shots? Oh yeah, I used up all my shots. Okay. okay. I suck. <laughs> okay, I will shoot one more. All right. Pew, 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 pew. Okay. Wow! Achievement unlocked, big bro. Yay! Bang, bang, and they're dead. You've lost Tasha. Okay. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. My mom only managed to get through on me, yeah, get through through me on her third attempt. <gasps> Anton, there's a call for you. It's a girl, oh my lord. Girl, leave me alone. I sobered up in an instant and rushed to the hallway. Watch your step. I grabbed the phone, pressed it into my chest, looking at my mom. She shrugged and went to the other room, gathering the toys thrown around by Alia as she went. Hello? Hello? Your mom has such a nice young voice. Girl, leave me alone. Ah, ну да, она сама молодая. Yeah, well, I mean, she's young. Are you busy right now? Yes, I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Нет, что ты? No, of course not. Hey, we lose, but we win. If only she knew how costly this conversation could be for me. What risks I took on just answering this call. There were a pen and a shabby notepad lying on a nightstand. I picked them up and started moving the tip of the pen across the paper, producing a cha chaotic doodles that always ended up turning into hearts. <gasps> I've read your answers. Do you really like Carmen? I like Russian rock more, to be honest. But I was too embarrassed to put it there for some reason. Oh lord. Do you want me to be honest with you too, Antosha? Ugh. Of course. My pen drew an outline of a girl's face, her eyes, and her long lashes. 
Polina spoke in a hushed voice, probably to keep her grandpa from hearing. I'm bored to death here. No girl, no girl, no girl. At home? In the village. There's nothing going on here, and if there is, there's always something nasty. And it's not even about the missing kids. There's almost no music here. Don't you have your cassettes? I'm not talking about audio re records. I mean, this place is voice. Girl, just... You think anything is better over in this house? We are the only house in this side of the city and this side of the town, girl. Hi, Vidion. So much lore, I know. It's not melodic at all. It's rustling like a record player needle. It just squeaks and moans from time to time. Girl, you don't... It's the same here. It's even worse. We don't have neighbors. It feels uncomfortable, suffocating. She the kind of girl that would run away from home. Like, as soon as she got a little bit of money, she would run away from home. I don't know how else to explain this, but will you come with me? My pants... My pants tip drafted a house surrounded by tall trees. I think I know what you mean. My little sister says that she feels like a prisoner here. Oh no, she's gonna kill him. Me too, I love grandpa, but I don't want to abandon him. What did I say? Sometimes I just want to escape so badly, somewhere far away. Hi, he did again. Thank you. Into the forest, I thought half-heartedly. To run under the falling snowflakes that make your fur white and the branches that hide you from prying eyes. <laughs> when I draw, I feel like I'm transported to another place. It's the same for me and the violin. Oh no. I ran the bow straight up to the sky. I realized I was drawing a butter knife, so I crossed it over. Think of Romka ruined my mood. Before I could reply, Olya descended the stairs. She's holding some book in a pink cover. Encyclopedia of a young lady. Will you take long? Oh my gosh, the photo looks terrifying as hell. The it looks like an evil baby. I don't know if you can see it. That's terrifying. I covered the handset with my hand. I'm in the middle of a conversation. What happened? Read me a bedtime story, please. Mama уснула. Mom fell asleep. Иди к себе, я сейчас. Go to your room. I'll be there in a minute. Только быстрее, ладно? Just be quick, okay? Ладно. Fine. My last reply sounded excessively annoyed. I sighed, watching my sister run up the stairs. Прости, надо бежать. Sorry, I need to run. Мне тоже. Me too. Thank you for lending an ear. I don't care about you, girl. Stop calling me. My ear vibrated from the buzzing sounds. I dragged my feet to the second floor, thinking for of the girl I shouldn't talk to if I don't want to die from a knife wound. She has not confirmed nor denied that she's someone else's girl. Okay, so stay away until you have an answer. Child. I wish I could tell dad ask for his manly advice, but he doesn't show up home till late at night because of his new job. My parents don't have time for me to put it lightly. Brr. Ну, где твоя книжка? Well, where's your book? I started. The kid's room was empty. Оль. Оля? <gasps> she probably snuck into my room. I started walking down the corridor. Hmm? The room was infested with shadows. The blinds were wavering like there was somebody behind them. Not again. Oh no, not again. I sneak, I smiled, sneaked towards the window and threw open a curtain. Eh! Papalis! Gotcha! There was nobody behind a cloth. The window has a TV screen showing winter scenery. The lamppost, the field, and a couple of walking figures in the middle of it. Oh! Why do you, f what do you feel like you're having, why do I feel like, what? Why do you feel like you're having pain playing this game? Why do I feel like you're having pain playing this game? It's like this, children, I guess if you're a child, you would think some things are important. 
But then as you grow up, you realize it's not. And this is me trying to tell the kid, like screaming into my monitor, like, child, that's not important. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I don't like the Paulina girl. She's sus. Alyssa? Alyssa? <sighs> I guess and pressed my fist to my mouth, <clears throat> sinking my teeth into it. <clears throat> Alyssa was leading Olya into the thicket. Wear your coat! In less than a minute, hurriedly dressed and rushed out to the house. My heart was beating like a firing machine gun. The wind carried the cold, resinous smell of carniferous trees from the forest. Freezing air crickled, crackled somewhere in the field. <gasps> no! The two shadows loomed in front of the gate. I could only recognize them as my sister and the fox girl because of their height. I ran towards the fence, listening to the howling wind and the squeaking snow. One of the figures moved and slowly guided towards the thicket like an ice skater. I slowed down and touched my glasses, trying to vain, trying in vain to adjust my vision to the surrounding darkness. Worry landed on my shoulders like a weightless snowflake. A snake woke up in my belly and started writhing. I felt nauseous. I thought about my home, the flimsy fortress that I left behind. I finally caught up to my sister, dressed only in coat. Olya! Olya! Have you seen the foxy? Olya, зачем ты вышла на улицу? Olya, why did you go outside? Если мама узнает, if mom finds out, my sister froze in place, facing the taiga. Ah, uh, she was in hands reach. I put my numb wrist on her shoulder for some reason, probably to make sure it wasn't a dream. <gasps> Is this not Olya? This might not be Olya, bro. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my! I hate this. A pointy beak was directed at me, strolled with feathers and form an owl face. I will punch you in the face if you scare me like this, I swear to god. Something wearing a bird mask was staring at me. Still not too late to sock it. Do it. Oh. Hoku, Hoku, Hoku. Oh my god. Hoot ho, she won't. The voice sounded exactly like Olya's, but there was something else hiding behind the feathers and the carton. I sprinted as if I got whipped. The masked creature only pretended to be Olya, just to lure me out. I was running like crazy, drowning in snow. The house in front of me was rapidly growing. The yellow lights in his, in his windows granted me hope. My mom, my sister are there, my salvation. I couldn't hear anything from behind me, as if nobody was chasing me. Maybe it's because the owls can't fly? I was already climbing the porch when I noticed another figure. From the suit black shadow of my house, a scruffy wolf cur crawled up and stood in my way. His movements were jerky, chaotic, as if he was performing some sort of terrifying dance or convulsing during a stroke. And even though I could clearly see that the wolf's face was a mask, something in this werewolf's convulsions made me freeze in place. The boy in a wolf's costume rubbed his side against the porch post and fell, fell to his knees. <laughs> He bent his back so hard that I expected his spine to crack. The beast's eyes shone, but he didn't attack. He kept crawling around and running on all fours. I shifted my feet, my mouth agape, trying to keep him in the line of my sight. Something was trickling from the slit in the mask. Viscous drops fell to the wooden planks. Ew! Saliva! Ew! Some unknown force pushed me in the back, whispering me to save myself. The fence was flashing by at the edge of my vision. <laughs> I was running in other, another direction this time, towards the toothy edge of the forest that smelled of pine. My heartbeat measured time. The wolf boy growled behind my back as if he forgot his human nature. My right leg got stuck in a snow, lit, snow laden cavity. I yanked it out, cursing under my breath, and fell to the ground. Plastering snow prevented me from standing up, from plopping myself against anything. But my unbound thirst for help helped me to get out of that trap. Darkness was creeping closer like the toxic fumes of burial pyres. I ran again, grasping for air to stung my throat. My hair swayed in the wind. I lost my hat when I fell down, and my ears were now hot from the freezing cold while most of my body was still sweaty. The field finally ended. After realizing that running into the forest wasn't the smartest decision I could make, I dove into the line of trees. I ran without stopping, my face covered with one of my paws. I didn't want to lose an eye to some random branch. Branches whipped my clothes, prickled my skin like butchers that were herding a pig in the grinder. A skin of roots sprouting from the, gore, from the ground grabbed at my foot. I rammed into the scratchy trunk, slid down to its base, and looked around in panic. 
Phil, you're so fast. My first desire was to dash towards her and hug her. I rested it and squeezed myself. I resisted it and squeezed myself even tighter into the pine. Ты... You, what are you doing here? This and that girl, you sus! She was holding the hat I lost. Working part time in Lost and Found, girl! Put this on or your ears will freeze and maybe even fall off soon. Bruh. She giggled. I squinted in suspicion and shifted my gaze back and forth between her and the hat, scared that Alyssa might be holding a severed head or something, or something even more sinister. But in the end, my head turned out just to be my head. We can only do... We can only take it. I took it and pulled it over my forehead. Feeling warmer? I didn't reply. There were some children in the yard. And did they bite you or something? Welcome back, smarty mouth. No. Then why did you run away? The answer was obvious, but after rolling the thought on my tongue, I mumble. I don't know. <laughs> Why did I promise to never call you dunce again? <laughs> oh, well, I keep my promises. Ooh, selfie time? She walked up to me and grabbed me by the elbow. I sensed the familiar aroma of mint oranges and burnt sparklers. I wanted to lean into Alice to savor the minute details of her smell. Alice? 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 Сколько можно повторять? How many times do I need to tell you you're safe as long as you're with me? Why do I'm your friend. And they are too. I quickly turned around towards the place the fox girl was pointing to. Oh! Kids in masks appeared at the clearing. And it looked like kids since they were all pretty short. Eh! Look. A wolf boy, an owl girl, and a bear boy. First of all, why? Okay, then why are you pretending to be like my sister? They all huffed and gasped for air, clearly tired from running around. Oh my lord. I thought you fell through the snow. Started digging around but couldn't find you. And I didn't, didn't care enough. You see, if you're dumb, you run around and dig. And if you're smart, you wait until the others get tired of running around and digging. Then you start talking. You are a rat. The general rat. Huh? Don't mind him, he's a weirdo. That's coming from you, girl. I stood there stupefied, my mouth agape and my, ma my hands dangling helplessly. I had no idea how to react to the words of these late night guests, but I managed to squeeze out something resembling a smile. You just scared me, that's all, brr. They st started looking at each other and somebody even snorted, as if I said something funny. Da, da. Lisa, yes, yes, the fox is right. The one. He's the one. No, this, no, this is our... Wait, hold on. Is this Vivo or whatever? He only has one glove. No, this is our... <laughs> Have we finally found him? Our bunny. Yes, he looks the part. The, the wolf boy started wagging a part of his costume like it was his tail in excitement. First. Of course you were first. What? Wolfie here was the first to send the bunny in you. He told us about you. Is that why he freaking jumped at me when you were dancing and freaking snuck into my house? 
Hello. С нашей совушкой ты знаком не по наслышке. Oh. Не такая уж она и страшная, правда? You've already met our hoodie before. She isn't that scary, is she? Да, наверное. I guess. А этот улыбчивый бугай недвижимка. And this big smiley guy is Teddy. Ты лучше с ним поласкавее, а то голову откусит. Be mindful with him or he'll chew off your head. Зачем это? What? Да, смотрю, ты чувство юмора где-то обронил. I see you've also dropped your sense of humor somewhere on the way here. I was still unsure if this per peculiar little animals had the best intentions in mind, so I hid my hands behind my back, trying to look away from the gaping holes of the carnival carnival masks. <laughs> Alyssa put her hands to her sides in a theatrical, ma theatrical manner and somehow managed to wink with her fox face. <laughs> Next time we come, we'll ring bells for you. That way you'll be less scared of our visit. Or just do not visit me. Do we even have any bells? I won't be ringing. My paw hurts. My smile was no longer fake. Oh, you showed us your teeth. That's a good sign. I didn't expect you to find us fun. <laughs> I thought it was an emotion reserved strictly to Disneyland. How do you know that? I read about it somewhere, huh? You read about me? Aren't you funny? No, about Disneyland, darling. She's sus. You can read human? Do you think I've been going to school every day for nothing? You go to school? And then she sang in a co coquettish voice. I'm just gonna be lower. Okay. You wanna hit kids every week? Where to pray them? Where to pray on all the mink at your local school, of course, in your classroom? What? <laughs> I let out a cautious <laughs> laugh. My new acquaintances didn't seem scary anymore. On the contrary, they look friendly and welcoming. You tell that to your sister that's been freaking out. There was something about them that attracted me. Just like this clearing, this moon, and the snowflakes that fell backwards from the ground to the sky. As if someone was rewinding a tape. The masked kids got close and I felt their touch. They gave me friendly taps, felt my clothes, as if checking whether I was real. There was no animalistic malice in their touch, only pure childish curiosity. The wolf boy must smell disgusting, because he was dripping saliva all over. For some reason, I thought to myself, I can trust him. Oh boy. Snowflakes just kept on floating upwards. Nobody will hurt you anymore. For... For girlfriend. Did you just call me a girlfriend? Yeah, if somebody even tries to. <laughs> the fox gave me a slight tug and burst out laughing. Well then, Tosha, will you run away screaming or come with us? Where to? Ahaha, to the amusement park. See, she's smiling. There ain't nothing in her mouth. Do you know what I mean? At the moment, Taiga's deceptive silence was broken by the sound of a distant flute. Mesmerizing and alluring, it brought about the ring of circle, or crystal glass and the whispers of fresh winter spring. If I had any doubts before, the flute song shattered the last of him. I started following my new friends before I could make my decision. <gasps> my legs carried me on their own will, and the tunnels made of pines stepped apart. Bushes bowed in front of our procession. Everything looked dreamlike. 
because even the clearing we ended up on, I only saw in my dream. <laughs> the flute soared up in the treetops like some fantastical bird. Snowflakes floated up in spiral. What? The moon painted tree branches with silver. <gasps> Alyssa gazed, gasped in amazement. I was also in awe. I tilted my head backwards as far as I could. Oh my gosh, his voice. Hoot, what a sight. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Okay, chill. You're the most in-character dude, okay? First of all, you got saliva dripping all over your costume. That is nothing. I can show you much more. If you want. I did want. I wanted to see what the fox girl saw with her eyes, hidden in the semi-dark of her cape. Now I didn't feel weird about this masks, masked kids. I felt weird for being the only one without a mask. I felt like I was naked in the January wind. Why do you wear these masks? I was trembling, but I wasn't scared. My trembling wasn't cold, caused by the cold. It originated from the peculiar anx anxiousness, the anticipation of something amazing. And why do you ask? I touched my cold cheek. I'm not wearing one. Ah ha ha, I love human tails. Human nails? Oh my lord. Human fails. I've already told you. All the villagers wear masks. It's just you won't find anything human underneath them. Even me? Ha ha ha, you're so clumsy, Anton. We've already found your glasses once already. And your hat. And your real face. Why y'all got so nice masks and I got this old raggedy one? I looked at the mask the fox was holding out to me. The bunny mask that looks like a silver ingot under the moonlight. I was curious to see the world through its slits. I can only take it. Did you wipe the did you wipe the the spit? Suddenly fighting his way through the flute's melody, a thought came to me. The glasses they found were in Semyon's possession. My new acquaintances must have known what happened to him. Or even worse. Where did Simeon disappear to? What happened to him? And the other children. The owl and the bear looked at each other. Should we take a toilet break here? Let's take a toilet break here. We'll be back to see the, the scary part. Uh, if there even is. Uh, we might have to run after this. I have a feeling. Uh. All right, let's go take a quick toilet break. Three to five minutes. We are almost six hours in, guys. All right, I'll be right back.
Alia go cry boo 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 why why you guys bully Alia I'm back oh sorry oh sorry I'm so sorry Attends. Mm. Kudu back <sighs> Ooh, I think we're close to the end mm. No bully <laughs> Because you saw Wang Hei her Ooh. Ask her to become a machine What? What? I'm not being a good boy. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let's continue. I think we're near the end. <clears throat> so the we asked them, in case you forgot moments ago, what happened to the kids, the missing kids. So now we're about to see. 10 minutes of gameplay left. Oh! Okay, the bear and the owl looked at each other. The wolf boy curled into a ball, and the fox lowered the pointy nose of her mask. The one who was kept in a cage. The one who cuts into little pieces roar. What? The one who wears a skin face took them. What? If I knew how to cross myself, I'd do it. Wait. What? So you're saying it was a human? Were you even listening to us? How could you call someone like him human? Could it be the policeman or is it Papa? There's just one word for him, an adult. It's so easy to get lost in the adult world. Killers, cruel animal trainers, and cold parents. Policeman? Smoking guy? Papa? If you don't want to get sad, better not think about them. I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to be sad. Eh? Somehow, I'm also not sad today. Anton, what about you, Antoine? Huh? Hmm? I was so lost in thought staring at the pines trying to pinpoint the location of the flute. I was sure that the person who played it, it was standing right behind a piney stockade. Someone tall, going over the holes in the flute with their long fingers. What now? Are we gonna sit and be sad or have some fun? Alisa wanted to show me something. Let's start with the sweet stuff. <coughs> Fox girl took out a handful of candy from her pocket and handed them to each one of the kids. Cover shuffled the smell of pineapple, cocoa, and melon wafted through the air. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. The last treat, a chocolate covered waffle candy, Elisa put right into my mouth. My tongue was engulfed in spiciness. What? Felt like my body was covered in fur and small sparks were running along it. I chewed on the waffle and the chocolate, gulped them down, enjoying the vivid taste. Thanks. Eh? What? Hey, yo? My gratitude was barely audible because my lips were already touching the inside of the mask. I didn't notice how. I didn't even notice how I put it against my face. The paper mache was warm. The mask stuck to my skin, giving it a nice prickle. The kind where you dive into a hot bath after being outside in winter, where you lie there and purr from the soapy water. <laughs> See, I told you, this is yours. Mine. What are we waiting for? The fun won't have itself. You're right. The melody kept swirling in the field like a hurricane. 
I couldn't wait to release the energy, the heat that this enchanting music was filling me with. Oh! The owl jumped and disappeared into the sky. What the hell? How about his glasses? I know, right? But I heard her laughter from somewhere above and then she landed back huffing and sighing. You can do it too, give it a try. What? I followed suit. Oh! My feet tore, tore from the ground. Finally, there's colors. I flew towards the sky. The stars like a rocket and screamed from happiness after seeing my friends down below. For the first time, the game has color. Wait, did she just feed us like edibles? Did we just eat edibles? We might have just eaten edibles, guys. The wind helped me fly. It felt like I was jumping on a huge trampoline. Trampoline. The stars looked like vivid sparkles that I could reach and lick up. The moon also got closer and then I plunged. I got scared that I'd break my legs for a moment, but my soles landed softly on the ground and I re regained my balance. You're safe with us. And all of our dreams will come true. I'm so happy that I finally found you. Bunny. In a fit of merry laughter, I realized this is the most important thing. These four are not a threat. My real enemies, and I felt with every single hair on my mask, were those who knew nothing about magic. Humans from the village. Whoa. I also realized how alive my surroundings have become. I heard the dry grass under the snow moan. I saw faces of the trees and the stars. The trees were smirking and the stars were grimac grimacingly in fear. Ah! That's right, be scared. I'll jump to you and... I snapped my teeth and then let out a jubilant laugh, jumping up along with the fox. We flew higher than the tallest pines and stayed in the air. I swirled. Alyssa followed my rhythm. I knew that she was smiling, so I smiled too. And the flute just kept on playing, carrying us higher and higher. Hey, did someone pull the smell spell on you, eh? That someone is standing next to me. I thought trying to unglue my chin from the desk. My muscles felt slightly sore, but that feeling was pleasant. The whole class was wandering about for some reason, whispering and passing notes to each other. Their faces looked discolored masks to look like discolored masks to me, bleak and boring. I yawned, remembering the times I was soaring high above the forest with Alyssa by my side, laughing and squeezing my hand. Perhaps no, probably, it was just all a dream. Because I didn't walk back from the forest, just woke up on my bed on a normal morning with tea and medicine. Huh? Still, I was hardly worried about trying to find a rational explanation for my night dance. That feeling of flight was much more important. What? There's a missing photo here. And I wonder who it is. The knowledge of how it feels to be hanging in the air above treetops of majestic majestic pines and baring my teeth at the moon. Sorry, I got lost in thought. Oh, hello, welcome. Have you heard about Katya? Oh! Huh? Huh? I glanced at the empty seat in, fr seat in front of me. Propala. Oh, see, 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 Katja went missing. My sleepiness was gone in an instant. I frowned in suspicion. What do you mean? It can't be. Twelve years old. A bro. Katja! True Detective 3, achievement unlocked. Ah, I see. Thank you for completing episode 3. We were deeply grateful for everyone who purchased the game in early access. Oh, this was early access. All the profits will go towards further development of the game. Ooh. Okay. That was the end. What is this? That's Twitter for sure. Ah, uh, the story is not done yet. This is such a well done story, but I don't know if it's old or new. Let me see. When was this... 
came out. April 16, 2021. Yes, uh, we might see some more in the future. Finally, we reached the end of the current contest. It's fine if you can't mod go to sleep. I appreciate you guys coming even for a short while. It's okay. I can usually handle my chat. <laughs> There's no need to drag or feel dreadful. I haven't streamed this long in a while anyway. It's fine. But yeah, I mean, this was a super fun game. This, it's definitely eerie and, hmm, I wish the voiceover would be in English, but it is all in Russian, which means I have to read it once more. I mean, I could not read it, but then if you're not seeing the words on your screen, like if you're on the phone, then it's going to be hard for you to read. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe when there's next episodes, we can do like a little series, but um, I don't I have to look into when the more more of the game will be out. Probably not. Even if Anton is a little bit of a simp, to be honest, we're all simps. But Antoine, man, you gotta stop simping on the wrong people. Come on. Damn. That girl, you don't even know she really single. <laughs> The VA is good as well. They're all so cute. The art. I want to know who like drew the art. Who illustrated it. Because the art is so pretty. I'm really invested in this now. Yeah, me too. I want to know what happens. God damn it. And who are the children behind the mask? Oh, mystery. Ah, uh, okay. See, now you see all of them in the loading screen. Because before... If you have only met one of them, you would only see one of them on the loading screen. Much like last time, there was only the owl. <laughs> Felt a bit tired, but it's worth six hours of watching you go through the story. You don't have to stay. Okay, Moz, you don't have to stay the whole way. It's okay, but thank you. Mm. So yeah. Woo! That was that was a trip for sure. And the times where it felt really urgent really made really put you into that mood. I don't know. I felt really like scared at the same time. Luciello! Mmm. Hello, Huan Ying! Mmm. Dio the Xiao Mian Bao. I really want to know about the who's wearing the human skin. Me too. Honestly, me too. Also, why was dad so weird? You know what I mean? Why? Mom, mom would go into like a epilepsy or a stroke or something. I don't know. She would have one of those fits. And then dad laughed. He laughed. And then stopped laughing. And was sad. What the heck was that? Papa sus. Like something was wrong with Papa. Huh. I want to know. The mystery is still there for me. So. I may not keep up with the news. Uh, so if you guys see any news of this. More of this coming out. Let me know. <laughs> I, I know I, I'm not following games. And when they come out. So. The furry gank is still a mystery as well. I know, right? Are they actually kids? Or are they like wolves? I don't know. It's so weird. He's a sadist, maybe. Maybe. Annyeonghaseyo! Also, Zayo. But yeah. I love this game. I have no regrets playing this. This, Ever since the prologue, it was already so juicy. Since you already bought it, they will appear on your Steam News. Steam News. What is the Steam News? Where do I find my Steam News? <laughs> oh, do I have to manually tap it? Because I will not. Let me see. Your upcoming events. Ah, look Herm. You know what? I'll look into this later. 
What's new at the library section? What's new at the library section? What's new at the library section? I don't. I can't see it. Ah, oh, okay. I see. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Ah, oh, it keeps showing me little nightmares, and I miss little nightmares. I know I raged a lot, but now I'm better at games, and I kind of want to play the DLCs. But oh well. This is so much fun. We we ended what episode three, episode four. <laughs> we will come back for more, more in the future. And I love the jump scares, bruh. Thank you! Okay... Let me just get out of the game real quick. Yeah, oh, I, I, I'm not really a visual novel person, but this... This one really captured... My attention. Usually I have no patience. I read quickly, that's the thing. Usually I read very quickly, like... Reading out takes a while, but when I'm not reading out loud, I read things really quickly. <laughs> so, uh, usually in visual novels, I'm just like, okay, cool, 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 okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay. Uh, also for today's game, Ayasa. Uh, so busy this week, every day is busy day. But we have finished our tiny bunny and I'm gonna put up the waiting room for Glitch in the Matrix later today. And it is very interesting. Uh, if you have any of these experiences, do let us know. If you don't know what they are, come and listen because it's trippy for sure. And it's kind of like a conspiracy thing. Zephy, hello! Otsu, thank you for dropping by! Mm. Yes, we've been streaming for 6 hours and 11 minutes. It's been so long. When was my last longest stream? Uh, my last longest stream was... Mobile Legends, over 4 hours. Minecraft over four hours. I don't think anything can beat Resident Evil with eight hours. But I miss the game, brr. I want to play first person shooting PvE. PvE, first person shooting and looting. I miss these games. I heard about Call of Duty and people were like, why don't you play Call of Duty? And I was just like, well, it looks kind of fun. So yeah. <laughs> RE Village. Yeah, that was probably my longest. Eight hours. Man, we were young back then. I'm so young. I don't know what you. <laughs> I'm so young. I don't know what you. <laughs> but yes, next Sunday is my first anniversary stream. So, in case you haven't. At all. I have a social media post up for... Okay, I need to clear this confusion. On Sunday is the anniversary stream. Where I'm gonna be reviewing my debut stuff. My, my debut video and have a little chit chat. And then the day after that. So this stream might not be too long. And just we chill and have a little bit of fun. May or may not play games, right? And the day after that, which is Monday, okay, so the 9th of May, we're going to do a review stream for the anniversary Google form for your greetings, in case you want to send any. May or may not be a long stream depending on how many things I receive, but that one is more for like bonding between fans. Hmm. And I may or may not cry on that day. I'm, I don't think I'll cry on Sunday, but bruh, when Monday comes, bruh. Y'all know I'm a softy. <laughs> it's not on the same day. It's not on the same day. Yeah. 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Cause I don't want to rush. I don't want to. The worst thing I could do is like rush your guys's responses. I don't want to skim through it. Like I want to dedicate enough time for each message. I don't want to just you know rush through it and stuff. And so that one is on next Monday. It's not up yet. I'll post the schedule. <laughs> I'll post the schedule maybe on the day of the anniversary or the next day. We'll see. Mm. Let me just read memberships real quick. I'm so sleepy. Kurumi cry head pad. I would try not to cry, but you know. I don't know. I'm a softie. <laughs> I might cry. I love you. I love you. Do. Mm. I think I will. I will definitely cry. But we'll see. <laughs> Anyways, here's a list of my members. Thank you for being my member and flying with me, my dear jazz setters. Thank you. Mm. Oh yeah. Let's take a quick attendance. If you're still here, say... Sassy baka! Just because Thursday stream do be a bit sassy. Oh, sorry. Friday stream. Alright, thank you. Thank you, Arachama Yurina. Thank you, Ami. Thank you, Wanyi. Thank you, Majai. Thank you, Fancy. Thank you, Jun. Thank you, Chef Sam. Thank you, Sotong K. Thank you, Shmal. Thank you, Fice Norden. Thank you, Fuel Station Portable. Thank you, Akun. Thank you, To Edgar. Thank you, 5C. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you, Peace88. Thank you, Niha. Thank you, Jung Chao. Thank you, Alia. Thank you, Izu. Thank you, Kazuki. Thank you, Birth of a Star. Thank you, Teddy Kambosa. Thank you, Kiru. Thank you, Zero. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Kazami Ray. Thank you, Lord of Grax. Thank you, Huzi. Thank you, Madan. Thank you, Cloud. Thank you, Shrimp. Thank you, Jusagi chan. Thank you, Raksasa Kirby. Thank you, Purpy. Thank you, Tata Barney. Thank you, Caramel Choco Mint. Thank you, Project Kavai. Thank you, Adam Bandit. Thank you, Dini. Thank you, Urkus. Thank you, Sakuta. Thank you, Dr. Hans. Thank you, Bachi Nasi Lamat. Thank you, Akuji. Thank you, KWJ. Thank you, PB081135. Thank you, Oja. Thank you, General Nick. Thank you, Gojo Satoru. Thank you, Alma. Thank you, Yungbuki. Thank you, Velocity. Thank you, Isaiah's Hub. Thank you, Demong. Thank you, Sungi. Thank you, Capic Zaino. Thank you, Matsu Akira Uwu. Thank you, Duranimu. Thank you, MIF. Thank you, Kokoa. Thank you, Rayo. Thank you, Minoru Itokun. Thank you, Future Miku95. Thank you, Faris Ritz. Thank you, Cabbage. Thank you, Reynaldi. Thank you, Koato. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, Hoju Haim. Thank you, Manuel Graciani. Thank you, AD. Thank you, Han Austin. Thank you, Saya, Saya Opa. Thank you, Obisa. Thank you, Setsugi Pyu. Thank you, Ricardo Lemon. Thank you, Sunelli. And thank you, Patek, for being my jazz setter. Okay. Let's see who's still here. Bam, 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 bam. We have fans. We have Ami, we have Chao, we have Obito, we have Izu, we have Madan, we have Savior, we have To Agur, we have Zephy, we have Zakal, we have Zheng Chao again, we have Cloud, we have Ali again, we have Anik, we have Fans, we have Zakal again. I keep reading the same names. <clears throat> we have Cerberus 2, we have DH, we have Madan, we have Wanyi, we have Cerberus 2, we have Ami, we have Claudinia Uwu, we have Kurumi Stai, Sus, we have Reynaldi, Future Miku, Utsurumi, Otsurumi, Hashira Cloud, um. Adu, 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 Adu. I'm gonna go and brush my teeth and check mobile legends and then gonna sleep <laughs> i have to check mobile legends because i've been in inactive for so long thank you mods for staying for so long and thank you for sticking especially if you stuck here from the start to the end and if not thank you for watching until the end anyways thank you guys so much everybody and i hope you enjoyed today's stream don't forget to subscribe like and comment after the stream what was your favorite thing that happened? Or what, would, what do you think was the sassiest thing that happened? Or your conspiracy? Mm. 
Yes, let us know. We're interested. <laughs> and I'll see you guys on Friday at our usual 8 p.m. GMT plus 8 or 9 p.m. Korean or Japanese time. Um, it's okay, Alia. It's okay. Um, we'll see when our long stream next is gonna be. Probably not for a while. Because my back hurts. <laughs> but we'll see. Mm. Okay, make sure you slept. No staying up. Stay safe, guys. I do. Bye bye. Good night. I do.